do 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 I swear every time I try to actually get these things started at an earlier time, something pushes it back, but at least earlier than normal tonight. So oh I am listening to this crap in stereo and delay. So let me turn that off and we can get into this party. Wanna demonstrate that uh I'm trying to look at all sides. There was a time a while ago I tried to defend the critical drinker from what I thought was some rather pedantic points brought up by a certain person called actually two people, but one person bounced their idea off of another. And this is how we got into this little cascade effect. Demonstration here. And so we're going to be going over turf. He acknowledged yeah, that fun stuff. His gimmick, which he does, has it going. Was much it's worse a great back gimmick, then. and I will. Not that I'm much agree. better now. Surprise! If you watch my content, that I have a lot to criticize about the critical drinker, and you may think that I harp on him too much. And to be honest, it's really a sign hola, of his hola, success hola. because the issues I see with his content become a lot How's more. How's it going? His size and his influence. So no, just more people are going to target you more when you're at the top. Especially Look at this commentary. Oh, I was so given cute. the sort of content so naive, you tend to focus so inexperienced. On. Skip Turf Nation. Oh well, I'm going to get point Turf here. Nation. Turf Nation and uh, even uh, Pog did a rather poor opinion, assuming that the critical drinker was lying in his videos, or that he had issues given sort of the format that he followed on a particular nature. And I think that's rather bad faith and all those freaking buzzwords right there. Not going to dwell too much on this. This was a uh, pillar of garbage, Turf Nation, that I was doing this with and during my whole uh, Phantom Initiative arc, all that fun stuff. Cringy as it was, it's a good workup to what I'm trying to do now. So, for the funness... Let me just demonstrate what inspired this Saturday night stream. Invited a few people. Uh, they might pop in later. I'm rather casual. I'm rather casual if in, people want to come on that at least I know about in the chat. But we will wait for that in Prime just on, a moment. Let's start with what really tipped me off and what enabled me to really get into the particular subject matter I want to discuss on this screen stream tonight. So we got the woke bros. This sort of caught my attention here. This um, particular so now it no longer happens. We're no longer the woke bros. Here. I'm going to take it as an implicit apology, I think. Okay. Get it in. Give me gold again. Oh, of course, of course. Right when in. So this is going to be the woke bros. I should have tipped it off to the beginning. Because I only want to see the very beginning of this particular matter. Negligible. I haven't um, checked if it's gone down since then, but yes, that was well, that's the number. that's a good point, actually. That would be interesting to have a look. I might even do that. Um, I'll that would be interesting the video me. anyways. Well, no. We'll, we'll come to that. I'll, I'll, I'll do the... Uh, I'll set up the groundwork. So, yeah, yesterday, then we, I was... Some group chat on Twitter. I can't... It might have been Hostman tagged me in a group chat. And Hostman was watching Random's response video to Hello Future Me, which is how I became aware of Hello Future Me, because I'd never actually heard of him before. So then I watched Random's response video, um, and then also that's how I found out that I was in this video as well, briefly. Quite interesting. So I, I was curious about this. I followed the whole Shad versus Jack Saint for a while. I thought they were both in the wrong, okay, for different particular reasons. Yeah, I have actually watched Hello Future Me. He does more book writing. Yeah. So, gonna get into the Jose or Jose's video. I think it's probably very solidly done. I don't know about uh, Hello Future Me, but the book, he does mostly book stuff. That's why he's probably not known as well, and that why he came up on the token discussion. More on the booktube side, but not strictly that particular matter there. But yeah, this tipped me off. It got me curious. They're about to explain how he cut the little woke bro section out, which I'll probably go over from random man here. As it was. 
Um, and then I went and thought, oh, I'll have a look at this. It's apparently, according to this fairly substantial YouTube channel, that we are part of what he terms the woke bros. Um, and this this takes up the final, almost, I think it was almost half, the final half or at least final third of the video he was doing on Rings of Power. Um, where he says, like, all of the things that make Rings of Power disappointing from his point of view. But the final boss, in his own words, was the woke bros. The woke bros consist of people like Drinker, Gary from the Roddick, uh, As, um, Random, myself, Disbrew. Uh, who else was on that list? There's a few others as well. Uh, Despot of Antrim, um, George the Giant Slayer, The Quartering. Oh, yeah. Shad. Um, Shad, yes. Specifically Night's Watch, but he names him as Shad. Um, I think that's it. I might be missing one. Okay, Vess. Uh, the underworld. I was about to pause it there, anyways. The general sentiment is it was it's taken out. So I'm gonna watch a random movie talks video after the good old say video, where I will admit it's the best leftist critique of anyone I've ever seen. I have my issues with it. Gonna just briefly go over it, not in full, because he's pretty damn solid with his points on. Uh, the One Piece, uh, at least in a limited fashion, for the limited fashion that applies to his particular argument. His particular argument? Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm annoying that. I am done off of Star Wars Outlaws. Go away. Do not bug me. I've been fool me once. Uh, shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me three times. No, I'm just an idiot in that case. But some people think I'm an idiot without that particular thing. Some opinions need a shout. The Others particular. Are... Let, let, let me get over his particular beginning. Of course, he has the whole little preamble. I actually went over the first few minutes of someone, EFAP defender who, and critical drinker defender who really uh, is a fan of this. Let me start where he starts getting to the lesser rhetoric and gets more into the points. So about five minutes into the Jose video, if I'm saying that right, I'm infamous for destroying videos. Uh, <laughs> destroying videos more like destroying uh, the pronunciation of names. So Jose here, is what really matters or here. whatever else. Don't make excuses. Put on subtitling. You're my girl. How I did it. You just give up. What has all our training been for? Zoro doesn't want to win because of the circumstances of his birth. He wants to win through his own hard work and effort. So he rejects uh, the idea that Queen... This might not be fair to Critical Drinker to start at this point. Let's just put out this point Those. here. Here's another section from the One Piece review, immediately after he speculates on how the status of men was preserved. That kind of shit just wouldn't fly in Japanese culture, so it doesn't even get attempted here. And by all accounts, we mostly have Ichiro Oda, the original manga's creator, to thank for that. And to hammer home just what he's talking about here, here... That was a little bit of a... A, a little bit of a... Uh, you used the wrong picture, man. <laughs> a little bit of a slight. These uh, descendants of Red Tuber SAS are quite coming along. A lot of them are sort of going behind the nebula paywall, which is interesting. Makes me want to almost subscribe for a bit to see what antics they're up to behind that paywall, but I still don't want to pay for it. Here's them saying it again in the live stream. The girls don't automatically win everything, and they're not better at everything no. like you would expect from a Disney production or whatever. Um, and I, I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that the original manga writer had the rights to this, and he retained creative control. Oda being credited for making the series better than it could have been had he not been involved is perfectly valid and probably true. Though when it comes to the specifics of not letting male characters look silly, Drinker doesn't present any evidence for this. He is likely referring to a news story that came out that revealed that Oda had requested reshoots of certain scenes, but articles about these reshoots don't really go into details about what exactly what I mean, I was impressed with at least the first 10 minutes. It's not really until the 15 minute marker that I start having uh, issues with this particular video. But as it goes, it's pretty damn solid. Well, overall, under for uh, someone from Jose's side of the aisle, it's honest. But a lot of people, uh, the more right wing and even centrist sort of point of view, anti woke people, 
will see it just as bad faith in trying to set a narrative. And I can see that point of view if you carefully listen to the attention, but I try to I try to give the best faith I can. Sometimes I'm not that fair, but that's usually for comedy's sake. I'll try to keep that tamper down here. Was reshot or whether or not gender dynamics were reinforced because of Oda's demands. If Drinker had bothered to take some more time to figure out why these reshoots happened, he might have actually found some information on the influence Oda had on the production. In fact, we can talk about a reshoot that was done for a scene we've already discussed, the flashback with Zoro and Quina in the fourth episode. Here's a comment from the episode's director, Emma Sullivan, from an interview she did with Cinema. Yeah, this is what I particularly like. He uses actual facts and data to back up these points in the beginning. Okay. And his argument isn't that it's going to destroy or anything like that. Just it's shallow conservative, which you can argue with. I would say more of a more traditional storytelling method is what perseveres in the critical drinker. Has an overlap with a lot of uh, conservative ideas, but it's, it's more the mindset. Anyone who believes in uh, particularly biological uh, disposition pretty much your biological disposition. This is just a theory now. Don't credit me for this. Your biological disposition or temperament as you grow up will most likely determine what side of the aisle you're going to vote for, for the most part. But that's an incredibly reductive and simplistic view. And it's just a theory. Not even a game theory this Daily time. US. There's a scene in one of my episodes between Young Zoro and Quina in Shimotsuki Village. They have this fight. Oda-san watched it and he wanted us to redo it because we did it with kendo masks on. So we went back to South Africa and did it again just to make sure he was happy with it. This reveals one example of how Oda wasn't simply overseeing whether or not gender roles were preserved, but rather he wanted to make sure the characters were conveying emotions on their faces. Of course, this is just one scene. An interview with... Yeah, but you can't discount uh, critical theories. Uh, critical theory. Uh, critical drinkers. Sort of a critical theory about... Uh, how that might have been a part of it and it could be true but it could be you know an unconscious uh bias of oda that is a leftist argument that a lot of people make i'm not saying jose here uh is making that argument but some leftists would say uh unconscious bias and other things of that regards that yeah could factor into that particular thing steven maeda for tv line maeda revealed more of oda's directions for the production one of the mandates from manga creator Ichiro Oda was against romance on the crew. That is a hard no, as far as the manga yeah. and the live action show are concerned. Yep, yeah, this is why I like this video. Why you could read he's a bigot and sexist and all that fun stuff from what's being said. He is very careful with his language to not directly say it. And he talks about sort of critical drinker, his anti-feminist and a lot of uh, things that would align with conservative values. And you could read that, oh yeah, because the person I was going up, going over this with the first 10 minutes definitely was like, oh, he's saying he's a big, I'm like, no, he's not. You're just reading in because your particular perspective, he's not directly saying it, but his audience might take that away. I'm like, yes, his audience definitely will probably take that away, but there's no way you can help that if you're talking to a more left-leaning audience talking about. Uh, in a subsequent interview, Maeda also revealed another Oda mandate was to not change any of the origins of how characters got their powers from the various devil fruits. There are other examples of reshoots, including the changing of the Alvita fight from daytime to nighttime and expanding the role of Chef Zeph, though I'm not entirely sure who requested those specific reshoots. Now, the reason I highlight all these reshoots is not to give you some exhaustive list of what Oda was requesting behind the scenes, but rather to demonstrate what it looks like to gather evidence when you're trying to describe what's going on behind the scenes in a production. Just throwing out random assumptions about what's going on because of your stereotypes of what a Japanese artist and an American production might be concerned with, you might assume something is happening, but it doesn't absolve you of having to do the work of actually figuring out if it's happening or not. Yeah, like this. This is why I was worried about actually covering this. I don't have much critique for this. Okay. What he's saying, a lot, it might align with my very fact based, uh, if you can find the evidence, much better than just making wild speculations and theories about stuff. I just hate that shit. I mean, it can work, but it's sort of setting up a narrative. And that bothers me. And you'll, you'll see as I get more into the stream why I have issues with it. But you can have issues with my issues. Otherwise, you're just fueling speculation based on a narrative and not fact. And a narrative without any facts to back it up is a fantasy. 
One problem with Trinker's commentary is that he assumes a degree of knowledge and expertise regarding the production of projects and does none of the work of providing evidence to support those assumptions. See, this is where a minor nitpick, he does not assume expertise on the projects. He assumes e expertise in uh, how real old timey-wimey storytelling was sort of something that he really approved of and really was gung-ho all about. And I can't argue against it. Later on, there's definitely some arguments for this that is supporting. So he's building a case now. So I'm trying to be nice. If Drinker is going to speculate that Oda demanded that women never be shown one-upping men, he should provide at least some kind of evidence to his audience if he wants to make that claim. Here's an example of how he compares cowboy. See, that that border lines onto uh, the straw man uh, Jeremy is talking about, okay? But I also really hate the logical fallacy argument because sometimes, uh, even if it is a straw man, sometimes but you can make a case. It's a real weird particular Boy issue. Boy Bebop reigning in its characters, whereas One Piece supposedly isn't. Compare it to something like Cowboy Bebop. Should I say, I don't like to set that expectation too early. You can say where his arguments are definitely weak. Is he consciously trying to straw man the critical drinker or is his own perspective getting in his way of seeing it in that particular way? I think that's a better way of phrasing the poorly way that I just did. Which made a conscious effort to rein in its characters' personalities for Western audiences, trying to rewrite them as grounded and realistic. I want to quickly contrast two moments from the One Piece anime and the live action series. What you get for a pair of thief to start? We have several rare Mikul vintages in stock, or perhaps you'd like a gloss of a mesh. You know, something sweet for someone sweet. Something wrong with your eye? Just blinded by your beauty. Oh dear ocean, thank you for this treasure you have shared from your depths. Oh, yes, my love. I can't bear this hardship of loving you uh, from But they'll confident enough cleaning that the live actions. I think it's good that he's uh, showing these examples, but I don't want, I want to try to be as fair use friendly as possible. Series wasn't toning down the characters. He didn't know the details of Oda's involvement with the series, but he was confident enough to speculate it would involve keeping left wing ideals out of the series with regards to how men and women are depicted. Maybe it's unfair to expect every reviewer of One Piece to take the time to comb through interviews or watch source material that is truly epic in length, but it's also possible for a reviewer not to speculate about those things without at least attempting to do the research first. And try I mean, I can agree with this point. Uh, it goes into the critical drinker's mindset, okay? And he very well, I think, he might be wrong on this particular matter. At least this... And I'm not actually saying... Jose is right in this instance. It would take way too much effort and time to really suss through this. Trust me, the friend I watched this with tried to fact check and go through all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to do that. The important part of this stream is to see how well the arguments sort of hold off, hold up, at least in my opinion. And if you take the narrative, the sort of general culture out of the picture just look at it for the arguments and the evidence being presented that's how i'm focusing on this i treat youtube videos like a certain piece of media okay true or not i can't tell that completely it's all about the rhetoric the argument and how well it's constructed at least that's my approach to this. trying to back up a claim with some kind of evidence aside from one news article about and i like and reshoots what i'm sure people have also known and I'm liking the sort of methodology. From its emphasis on the men, an implicit rejection of feminism, and a general distaste for a society supposedly consumed by this dynamic. There's also... And I'm liking his methodology here for the most part. At least in this first section. So this weird insistence that the show's Japanese character is what makes it itself. This observation is deeply flawed in several ways. Most notably, we're not actually comparing modern Hollywood and modern Japanese stories. One Piece debuted in 1997. It's over 25 years old at this point. So it feels like a bit of a throwback. That's because... Uh, another thing that really aligns with my own bias and beliefs. So I'm definitely going to be biased towards this particular video. He's hidden a lot of these points is you have to treat the medium for the genre. It is the error. It is another problem I have with leftists, them going back in history and saying things are pragmatic without realizing the particular context of the environment they were living in. Like last uh, stream, someone brought up how, Revenge of the Nerds was pragmatic. I, I went back. 
I fact checked it. I'm like, okay, I can see from a modern day perspective why this is pragmatic. And I would not approve of that. Us as a society have moved past uh, tricking a girl into sex, which was the pragmatic material. What the biggest pragmatic thing uh, the person who brought that up sort of uh, touched on. And I'm like, college culture back then was way different, way more toxic. It's not just that character. It was the entire culture. Okay. You can't say it's the nerd who is toxic when the entire culture would be considered toxic nowadays. It wouldn't be the nerd. It would be the culture back then that from our present enlightened uh, future site perspective that it would be pragmatic. So it's a little rough to go back in time. It's like going back in time, literally in a time machine until people before the civil war be that slavery is bad. Okay. You would be morally and ethically in the right. But they they had a different perspective on it, a different level of comfort. It sounds I want to call it a white savior complex, future savior, future savior complex is what I'm gonna call it. Just off the rolls off the tongue like that. As it is. And the Netflix adaptation is very much trying to stick to the original narrative. And if you think Japan is a kind of haven for storytelling that steers clear of feminist or leftist themes, you clearly have no idea what shows are airing over there. Just sticking to the very narrow confines of anime, and I'm no expert in that myself. I personally recently enjoyed the newest Gundam series, The Witch from Mercury, which is a story about two space lesbians who use a pride Gundam to fight against future capitalism while echoing Sylvia Federici's feminist reading of The Tempest. Like, I have no clue if any of that's true. I, and I don't particularly care. The leftist perspective, I do agree. A lot more of the themes are making it over to Japan. To use a more modern day thing like that in particular seems a little bit faulty to me. And let me change this for, not to that, for, uh, who knows? Don't want to miss anything in Marvelous particular. Mess. For the unfamiliar, Echo is the story of Mayo Lopez, a deaf woman of the Choctaw Nation who loses her mother and part of her leg at a young age. When the kingpin secretly murders Maya's father, Maya is adopted and becomes his eventual assassin, cutting her off from her family. The story picks up from Kingpin's supposed death at Maya's hands and Maya returning to her hometown and reconnecting with her past and her family. I want to highlight this bit of criticism because it reinforces how Drinker is more interested in speaking to his audience's distaste for Marvel movies through a standardized talking point. The tough, self-reliant girl boss protagonist who can beat up men twice her size and inspires fanatical loyalty in everyone around her, despite being a completely unlikable arsehole who gets innocent people killed. Calling Echo a girl boss is to completely miss one of the major plot points of the series. Early on, when Echo believes that Kingpin is dead, she decides she's going to be the queen pin, taking over the Kingpin's territory. Her family is quick to tell her that this is a terrible idea. And as the series progresses, she realizes that that it's true, and she gives up any dreams of becoming a guy will admit the girl boss thing is completely reductive and a little bit small minded. OK, but that's sort of the nature of critical drinkers work, small bite size uh, things. If he goes more into depth, I, I think he probably Jose, not that he had to go more into depth of critical drinker talking about the girl boss and contrast that sort of his definition of girl boss might actually match this i think he could have taken that step he took that step with the one piece thing he could have took that step for a critical drinkers definition of girl boss here he's going off of his sort of leftist girl boss thing and he's going to criticize critical drinker for it and that's fair enough from his perspective he frames it in a way that isn't too insulting he uses it in a way that is more about physical violence when he mentions that Maya beat up a lot of large men. That actually has nothing to do with being a girl boss, which is more about succeeding in business. But since girl boss is a term associated with left-wing social issues, he uses it here anyway. I guess he's unaware that there's a lot of leftist critiques over the term girl boss, and it's actually reflective of a very modest centrist position these days, which really says more about how far right Drinker is on this issue. Like also this, this is the point. I don't know what he's trying to say here. If I was being bad faith, I would say... He's trying to say critical drinkers far right because centrists are pretty right themselves because they're anti-feminist with the girl boss thing. It's really confusing in this particular matter here. Okay. I just wish he would explain is, is some, the girl boss thing is something uh, is more of a centrist position, but that's more. Sh I No, I don't understand. 
maybe he is talking to his audience here where centrists are just moderate right why anyone right of uh centrist are far right that would be my reading it might be a little unfair but it's the best i can get out of this but even just looking at echo's ability to kick ass she isn't as overwhelmingly powerful as drinker seems to imagine not only does she not win the first fight we see when she goes up against daredevil she also gets captured and at the end of a big fighting set piece her family only survives because of the kingpin's mercy and in the final scene she doesn't beat up the much larger kingpin instead she uses her powers to make him confront his own personal trauma echo's story is not about her being a physical powerhouse Quite interesting. Never watched uh, Echo. I'm not going to defend this, but I will say personally, superhero uh, with superpowers uh, the sort of ruling. Like, despite my issues with Captain Marvel, it's still she still is a superhero. Okay, he will bring up Captain Marvel later, or maybe that's another video talking about the chip and why everyone was disappointed. But I think he misses the point. But I think a lot of people who Echo see what I did there. The point about their problems with uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, sort of, sorry, I, I'm, I'm confronting the fact I might be poisoning the well by bringing this up, which is another issue that's going to come up. Uh, pure and utter madness. But the point being, in fighting, when you have superpowers, it sort of uh, evens the level, the playing field. Plus, there's so much more to fighting than uh, really people really taking consideration like south paul's uh closing this its argument in theory it's okay if you don't know what that is better moving on but rather her learning how violence actually isn't the answer to all of her problems she does kick some ass but that's because it's a superhero show and it'd be very weird for the superhero who is the title character to not win at least a couple of fights i don't know how having a loving family counts as fanatical loyalty as Maya's families are the only ones who lift a finger to help her, and often in the most modest of ways. Maya's grandfather repairs her artificial leg, her grandmother explains some visions she's been having, and her cousin Biscuit takes her out on a drive. That last one does get pretty intense, and you might call it fanatical loyalty, as he ends up helping Maya rob a train, but that's not what Biscuit signed up for. Maya tricked him into helping her. He had no idea they were going to be robbing a train. Maya's uncle also tries to cover her when she starts messing with the Kingpin's operation, but I don't think it counts as fanatical loyalty, trying to keep your niece from getting killed. And her uncle isn't step- uh, his arguments are solid here if everything he's saying is correct. I can't be sure of that in any particular way, but it's still something to keep in mind. Been up to a crime boss out of nowhere. He runs part of Kingpin's operation in the area. Maybe Drinker imagines that Maya's family should blame her for working for the Kingpin, but that's not really true. They blame her father for bringing her into that life. Though Maya herself is not excused from her rejection of her cousins, the ones who had no say in whether or not Maya would be welcome back, and Maya basically turned her back on having any sort of relationship with her family on her own. A big part of the series is about moving past these condemnations towards one another to reconcile this family and realize their love for one another is more important than misdeeds of the past. Going back to drink, uh, to just sort of defend uh, the Marvel fanboys who are really hating on all this stuff, I opt out of this. I believe their argument would be like, why the hell is this inserted in the MCU? Does it belong? Is it good storytelling to really dive into it? See, a lot of them consider the MCU to be a collective because that's the way it's sold. And uh, having particular little off branches that sort of go in these weird directions created. I agree with him, at least on face value. Again, didn't watch Echo. The way he's sort of ramping it up make it almost seem like a really good story. But it's also eliminating a lot of the story factors that someone like Critical Drinker, Mahler, or a lot of the people who are considered in this particular camp, you know, who are technically apolitical, but they seem to have, well, at least with Critical Drinker. Mahler's more like a centrist sort of guy and i'm sure given what he said about the centrist view he would put uh that sort of thing there but let me not jump the gun there Drinker's video i don't think a single one of his fans was surprised that he didn't enjoy echo his entire channel is built on hating disney properties which is fine you don't have to like disney no one does but his readings of these shows don't really demonstrate any attempt to understand them rather they're an opportunity to signal that he's anti-disney to his audience you might even call it a message he consistently feels the need to include in each of his videos I like this turn of a phrase. Uh, this might be a little bit reductive. You could say that he would uh, sort of, uh, if he a show followed his sort of uh, biases towards uh, 
storytelling. He would praise a particular Disney property. But he is generally right. The audience generally is much more against the particular matters than the content creators. Can you really blame? It's a matter of a, the parasocial relationship. Audience capturing all sorts of things. You have to play into the audience, but your personal views on it and how you sort of uh, skirt it and sort of get across certain things is something to consider. But from uh, Jose's per personal perspective, I can see how how he would feel this way and the framing he puts the framing he puts on it definitely seems fair from someone from his side of the aisle. This really reflects the problem I have with the reviews of his I watched. While you can get an honest, albeit sometimes worryingly reactionary opinion, anything related to Disney or some other conservative boogeyman will invariably lead back to stock criticisms to appeal to his audience more than trying to understand a work on its own merit. And he's also discounting a uh, personal bias that uh, you, you just put up with so much shit, okay? You get a doomer mindset. And you want higher, like a lot of people praised Andor when it came out. Okay, it was Disney, but they praised the fuck out of it. Some people. There was some people who just hated on it. I don't know where Critical Drinker fell on it, but a lot of like the EFAP guys praise that. But the EFAP guys sort of uh, do their own thing. Uh, they sort of march to their own beat. They don't always have people disagree with them whatever problems I have with EFAP or any of the members in particular, you got to, those are just particular issues here and there. And it definitely shows that they aren't working off of a message. But of course, Chris, critical drinker from at least Jose, sort of like YMS, probably has a flawed understanding of critical drinker. Even though he does have, working off of a flawed model of critical drinker, and at least in this case, he's definitely um, trying to be as fair as he can from his own limited perspective, at least. Friends. Here's an example of something genuinely cool Drinker missed in his review of Echo. Some of the actors use purely sign language to communicate, which works fine, but others talk along with it. But because they have to slow down for their hand gestures to keep up with what they're saying, their dialogue comes across as weirdly jittery and stilted, and it usually clashes horribly with the tone of the scene. Just like in real life, some people are better than others at signing, but this isn't simply an attempt to depict American sign language realistically. What these varying levels of sign language reflect are someone's proximity and closeness to Maya. From her mother being completely fluent, to her cousin Biscuit being decent, the kingpin not bothering to learn it at all. It was pretty clever, and it's another example of how Drinker often misses subtlety, while the performances may not have... Yeah, I agree. Face value, that criticism seems solid. That would be my takeaway from that. Okay, but Drinker, obviously not a big component of realism and storytelling. If, as frankly, as someone who reviewed his book, pretty solid, Pretty on point, uh, at least Dark Harvest. But there's some things that didn't come across as very realistic to me, and that bothered me. But that's my personal bias and personal perspective when it comes to storytelling. From Drinker, it's more about sort of the flu, uh, the fluid of it. And you definitely will miss it, especially if you're not really in the sort of culture that cares about sign language if you care about storytelling over store uh, over sort of <laughs> particular social matters it makes sense there been so in his mind to me i personally thought all the actors carried these things off pretty well and seeing them struggle or not struggle to communicate with maya enhances the scene rather than serve as a distraction looking at these examples i'm trying to establish how the critical drinker views media through a very specific lens one that assumes an insider knowledge he doesn't have or at least he doesn't evidence an affinity towards conservative political messages and a commitment Again, I don't think he, okay, he swaggers off his expertise, but he doesn't legitimately put down any credentials about that. He is an audience surrogate. His character that he plays is rather dumb somewhat, okay? And I think he's fair within his simplistic sort of view here, but I can agree that it would sort of a, uh, capture a certain audience from a certain political side of the aisle over another 
that is fair enough to say. And towards superficial readings to reinforce a general anger towards specific companies and certain types of politics. This becomes especially apparent in his series, Why Modern Movies Suck. The series. I, I think it's more the cart before the horse, okay? He doesn't like Disney. The storytelling does not match with him. He's going to have a general bias, so he's going to miss some of these small, subtle things that I agree are within there because of the culture. Does it excuse his sort of incompetence? Not really. He can be criticized for that. Shouldn't be a reflection of him as a person that he's trying to ignore this. Okay? And not addressing something. Why I think it sucks? Yeah, it's perfectly valid in the culture we're in to not nitpick everything. <laughs> Sorry. is what the title says it is each video highlighting a very specific reason why drinker thinks modern movies suck as seen in many of these videos drinker has a very specific perspective on what makes a movie good shaped by his own personal lens let's look at how drinker discusses women yeah see this is, gets a little shaky here okay but he is right it, his personal lens shapes how he sees it very fair reading uh this i think gets in shaky territory <laughs> in movies and tv in The Strong Female Character, video from this series, it starts with some very clear observations of how these characters are used as marketing tools to present movies as having some kind of moral character to their production. And if this were a video about the shallow and cynical marketing of modern movies, we'd have no problem. But this drifts from that observation to an outright hostility of these characters for reasons that have nothing to do with marketing. Drinker's gripe with these types of female characters is that they supposedly experience no personal growth and are... Yeah, well, that, that is sort of a... I wouldn't call that dishonest honest i would say that's sort of resonating with your audience and if you have those personal feelings yeah okay you're going along with the audience does it make you a good critic to sort of not go into this probably not not be able to sort of reduce your bias and take everything as a whole but he's very explicit with how he puts it so if he gets a flaw here and there criticize him but don't judge him as a character for. Yeah, the critic title gets put on people too easily. Most of these uh, people on YouTube who do these type of videos, they're entertainers first. Critic uh, comes a secondary factor within the YouTube space. And that might be disappointing to a lot of people. Disappointing Therefore, to me in some regards. What strong female characters tend to focus on instead is self-actualization. The idea that she already has everything she needs to succeed and all that's required is to let go of the limitations imposed on her by others. Yeah, here's the point I was brought in out. And at least the critical drinker does have the sort of heroine's journey. And he, uh, he at least has an understanding of the heroine's story. Self-actualization is one of those things that sort of uh, sets the Hero's journey from the heroine's journey. I always sound weird when I say heroine's journey. It's like a drug. The message to the audience is simple. You're perfect the way you are, and it's the rest of the world that has to change. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of these characters. The personal growth experienced by them is related to confidence and learning about how not to feel shame about who they are. That is, becoming bold enough to say that women are not lesser than men. Not that they're perfect the way they are, but that they're not inferior in a way that society tells them that they are. Someone going from timid and afraid. Yeah, my... See, Jose is not understanding the 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 sort of a worldview and framework critical drinkers going from. I think it would be much better if he acknowledged the critical drinkers working off of the heroine's journey for this. Because he did say self-actualization, which is the theoretical heroine story. Okay, he's saying where he's wrong. And this is where it gets a little bit dicey and where his leftist perspective sort of loses the plot. Aid to bold and assertive is a form of personal growth. He follows up. But it's also sort of the, not the fault of the critical drinker, but the limitation of the medium the critical drinker operates in. It's very, um, it's very based off of other work because of how short it is. It's built, he's, Jose's right. He's building a message. He's building up a sort of narrative within all his works as a continuation. This is why I really respect even if I don't agree with him, the critical drinker after hours, which people into critical drinkers should watch more, but a lot of the normies just watch the reviews and not see how he forms his particular perspective. And it's good for getting that. And of course, 
He's not going to be perfect there because he's not a perfect critic. He's an entertainer, actor, writer. Okay, that's the perspective he's coming from as a writer and actor. So I can understand why someone who's more worried about the culture would see the flaws and why it's conservative when it's just what he's calling conservative or right wing or even centrist. It's more just a type of a uh, normie perspective that a lot of people don't think about. And that's why the critical drinker probably resonates with a more broader general audience than a lot of critics out there. Uh, his observation with this bit of commentary on Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel forcefully removing the control chip that keeps her powers contained. It's a symbolic gesture of the strong, empowered woman throwing off the shackles imposed on her by society so that she can realize her true potential. It's a nice idea that probably had the writers patting themselves on the back, but the problem is that when you remove struggle, failure, weakness, and vulnerability, you don't leave the audience with a whole lot to empathize with. It's very strange to say this when this event happens at the end of the movie, which is, you know, when a character arc is typically completed. The empathy. I mean, Jose's got a point. He's talking about structure now. My problem with Captain Marvel is there's nothing really to sort of indicate that she would... Yeah, she gets the self-actualization, but how does that relate to the chip? It's more of a symbolic act, and uh, Critical Drinker is coming from a more direct perspective. It's not about the storytelling... It's not about the actual action. It's how you get to the action, like with The Last of Us Part Two. Now, a lot of people say that they could have killed off Joel and the audience would have been more accepting of that. How many of them actually believe that? And how many of them are just using that? I, I'm sure there's plenty of people who actually believe that. I would like to see that rewrite being done by these critics who make that argument maybe they have and i've just missed it okay but it is about how you lead up to it and i agree with most people the lead up to the destruction of the ship like how did she suddenly get the idea to destroy the ship okay why did she just suddenly pull that out of her ass it seems like ass pull doesn't seem connection to her story arc but if you see it as a symbolic the chip as a symbolic sort of thing as a leftist probably would and this is where we have the sort of impasse between these two particular people i can understand why he's confused here that they were supposed to be feeling with captain marvel is her struggle throughout the movie her removing that ship is her completing her journey if she started off the movie like this smashing that ship and then just kicking ass for an hour and a half he might have a point it makes me think that this reading is motivated by something other than a clear and level-headed analysis of a story on its own merits things get even worse when drinker reduces his criticism to complaining about women beating up men the problem is you're always going to have a tough time yeah you have a little bit of a hint there i can see a little bit of implicit uh sexism but he doesn't directly make it, and he definitely does sort of back it up with what he's saying. Strength. The Critical Drinker largely reviews superhero, science fiction, and fantasy movies. Usually the problems that need to be solved in these movies involve punching something in the face, often in unbelievable fashion. Not all of them do this, of course, but he seems to have a problem when this is done in a movie where a woman is the lead. This is when discussions of realism often come up, and to me at least, they always ring completely hollow. It may be unusual since so much of movie history doesn't include women being... See, he frames it in the way that I can be accepting of. He's not saying he's wrong. He's saying it rings hollow to him. I definitely like the care, mostly careful phrasing that Jose put in the script. Almost makes me think that some of the left people left leaning are realizing they don't have the culture on their side. They're going to have to start making better arguments with better rhetoric if they want to continue to go forward with uh, a criticism of someone like with a much bigger following such as the critical drinker not just throwing it out and just backing it up with sexism and racism claims so i am sort of happy that they're just not using that as a defense and i can understand his perspective here with the superpower women under the framing he's putting in he's mostly correct about critical drinker sort of funny uh he's going to address the sort of some of the Ripley stuff beating up men, but it's not really any more unrealistic than pretty much any action sequence where we see a man doing things that are humanly impossible.
This is an example of two guys who are absolutely wrecking a bar full of other men. There's some back and forth, sure, but in the grand scheme of things, this is completely unrealistic. A bar fight would never go down like this. Here's something to ask yourself. When was the last time you saw one person beat up two people in real life? I know most of us don't see many fights in real life, but the fact is, it's incredibly difficult to do that. I'm not saying... Okay, this is the particular problem where I'm having here. I mean, it might seem logical in a argumentative style, but I have a little bit more knowledge on this. I, ha I take issue with both critical drinker and a lot of people's perspective on the technical fight side of things. I wonder what Shad would think about this. I'm sure he would tear it apart. I'm not going to be able to do that good of a job, but also Shad tends to be overly insane with some of his uh, sort of uh, methodology. But I'll do my own thing after he gets to the really flawed idea behind us. Because this is, is where I have an issue. Saying it's never happened, but it's very unlikely. And if we look at your standard action movie, we see heroes take on way more than two. Often dozens of people are fought at once. Or when we see various action stunts of our hero doing stuff that has no basis in reality, physical feats that no human could do, we simply take it as a given that this is the world of movies and sometimes the action is exaggerated or a complete fantasy. It seems strange that someone is all of a sudden breaking open the science books and trying to use science to differentiate between men and women as if it would somehow be more believable if a man could beat up 20 people at once than a woman beating up 20 people at once. It doesn't really matter to me that a man would last a tenth of a second longer than a woman if he was fighting all those people at once. I don't think it's simply your brain. Okay, can't take it anymore. I've been trying to listen to him and hear it all out, trying to address it in good faith, but it's just wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, there are some people who are just going to accept this fantasy. It's a movie, action, blah, blah, blah. The genre will temper it. But technically, training matters, okay? Technical training matters. The best demonstration of this that I've seen actually done was in an anime called Veroni Kenshin, okay? So the thing about Veroni Kenshin, I would pull it up, but uh, the trickiness of YouTube. Let me just take this off screen so I can talk about Veroni Kinchin for a moment. The real teachable moment. So, this one character. Uh, oh, fuck. My names. Of the, I suck with names. Okay, the little boy, Veroni Kinchin. He wants to be a samurai. He gets saved by Kinchin. So, he sort of goes to the school that uh, Kinchin's staying at. He has a lot of fighting with the female instructor. There's a little bit of feminist messaging in there. She is definitely weaker, but there are techniques to overcome. There's anime really takes advantage of that. Berserk also, Casca. And her fighting style is completely different than Guts. She goes for the weak point in the armor. The great example of how a woman has to uh, change their, in a more realistic setting, how they need to change their tactics to be a good fighter. But they can be a good to even competent fighter. In that, but they still have weaknesses given Casca had her time of the month and didn't tell anyone and went into the battlefield when she wasn't feeling so fresh, and that caused problems within Berserk. But back to Veroni Kinchin, this uh young boy, I think it's Yasuke or something. It's been a while since I watched it. But the boy who's been training wants to be a really tough samurai, is trying to get advice, and she he comes across uh a girl being bullied by a whole bunch of uh, samurai wannabes. So he gets some advice from Kenshin. So he gives him some practical advice. If you're up against a whole bunch of people, the way you take it on is you run into a alley. If you're not experienced, you run into the alley and they have to come at you one at a time. And if people aren't used to fighting in a group, they tend to not coordinate. So the bar example... Uh, that's a little bit weird. Okay. It's hard to sort of break down. I can see his perspective on that. Jose's perspective on that, but there are tactics. It's all about training. It's more about training and knowing something about fighting. The example of Sasuke from Veroni Kenshin, whether or not the kid from Veroni Kenshin, learning that particular method, using it and actually succeeding at it against a group of people shows is the most clear cut example of how tactics matters a lot over a lot of other qualities. Sasuke, Berserk, Kaska, 
is an example of how a woman can be completely badass in a completely realistic manner. And I think the critical drinker would agree with all these broadly if brought up to him. But just wanted to take that aside real quick to sort of highlight where I think Jose is completely and utterly out of his depth with this. I mean, he does sort of have a point. A lot of people will suspend their belief to a certain extent under certain genre. That much is true. But he's also undercutting the sort of physical and combat prowess train people, especially men who definitely have a physical advantage, would have under these certain circumstances. And why it seems much less realistic, especially when it's not in a superpower setting, when a female is all badass. Take it into superhero, Matrix, much more believable. The suspension of disbelief is definitely uh, lessened under those circumstances. Brain not being able to understand things in a logical, scientific way, but rather because you're more willing to believe one fantasy over another. And why someone believes one fantasy over another isn't really being considered. The only reason men doing this stuff seems normal and regular is because movies and TV shows have been doing this for decades, and it reflects the political reality of how this media was made in the past. It was large. Mm, see, again, disagree. So, I mean, he, he might be right about Critical Drinker and a lot of people, but for me, like even the example of Rocky, okay, a boxer would definitely have a disadvantage training-wise fighting a group of people unless they have a like street fighting experience. Like you get in a lot of street fights, you get your ass kicked, you you have to learn how to take on multiple people. Okay, someone who does arena fighting could beat the shit out of a lot of people in real life. But if they were up against two or three competent people, not quite at his level, but could coordinate well enough with tactics, he would get his ass beat. But if he did have training and knew how to position himself right, see... Let me not get into the complexity of tactics within street fighting or because maybe because I learned karate and am very uh, focused on this. There's different tactics for taking fighting one opponent versus fighting multiple opponents versus fighting an opponent with a weapon. This is why I say Shad might have a would be able to tear this a new asshole largely made by men, and it was targeting an audience that was largely men, so it was playing up to a male fantasy on the screen. And just for anyone who does not know who Shad is, I need to clarify, he's the person who runs Shadiversity, uh, who focuses on um, combat, especially in media. He was even uh, contracted by Brandon Sanderson, a fantasy writer, to sort of do that. He might be a little bit weak in uh, physical uh, fisticuff style stuff, but when it comes to weapons... Like with uh, some things, I, I think he could be considered an expert, at least in that particular field. Might have his own biases that make, make him fall, but that's a different issue altogether. Thought I'd give that context. That we're now seeing female versions of this in the modern day isn't any better or worse. It's simply a variation on the same type of wish fulfillment and fantasy that people like to put into movies. If this fantasy is less appealing to you personally, that's fine. But it says nothing about these movies and rather the mindset you have going into these movies. And I think this undercurrent explains a lot of Drinker's criticism. He has uncritically accepted the movies and TV shows of his youth as normal and internalized their often conservative messaging, at least by today's standards. He sees deviations not a reflection of changing tastes and times, but some kind of top-down imposition as some kind of abnormal intrusion. Here's an example of how Drinker talks about the personality of these strong female characters. And how Okay, I think that's a little bit flawed, a little bit simplistic. But from his worldview, I can understand why Jose would think this. And it seems... Fair enough, at least on the surface. But there's definitely some uh, indicators that it's not completely correct. But let's hear them out. Okay, let's be fair. How they embody more masculine traits. Instead of being altruistic or compassionate or protective or vulnerable or quirky, they're almost always written as stoic, emotionally closed off, blunt, dismissive, prickly, domineering or aggressive. The very same masculine traits that the writers seem to find so toxic and unacceptable in men. He goes on to say that these traits aren't enough to make a character and that these women would be more interesting if they were more robust, including more traditionally feminine traits. The irony of this is that in another series, They Hate Men Part 1, he takes the opposite approach to male characters. Yeah, this goes back to this sort of point about bio biology that I think Jose and his sort of lefty view doesn't understand. I'm not saying he's... I don't think he's lying when he's laying down this criticism, but... The fact that he puts out 
that the critical drinker brings up the biological differences as one point and doesn't translate it to this particular point sort of shows his limitation. Maybe his dishonesty, okay? I'm not going to say I know Jose's attempt. I try to avoid attempt, try to say uh, what I think given the sort of language being used. And his language being used makes me believe he's coming at this trying to understand it and show the appropriate evidence he thinks will prove it and will prove it to some people. And some people will completely dismiss him for this because he's not given a baseline understanding of the sort of biological thing the critical drinker brought up and then going on to this point. But that's that's a blank slate uh, leftist view. A stoic character is one that's generally reserved and emotionally distant, the kind of person who bears their troubles and discomforts without too much complaining. It's a character type most commonly associated with traditional ideas of masculine behavior. Why? Because that's how men generally act around each other. There's a big disconnect here. Whereas men being stoic is okay, women characters can only be stoic if they also include a number of other traits. That is, it's a positive for men and at best neutral for women. It's a pretty clear example of the double standard in much of Drinker's commentary. And I think the point that the critical drinker, even within the context of this video, is trying to make is leftists who make these critiques of toxic men sort of encourage the same sort of uh, characteristics within women. And I actually, that's one of the points I will agree with critical drinker on. It does seem hypocritical to actually do that. And he doesn't, the double standards, yeah, it, there is a double standard that uh, critical drinkers point out. And Jose's reading this as a double standard in the critical drinkers commentary. One of these points where I will definitely say Jose is not understanding critical drinker. And a lot of people are going to tune out of this because of this. Okay. They'll be like, yeah, he, he's being bad faith or when I just think he, he legitimately doesn't understand how this connects. This one is similarly guided by some very rigid ideology, where media of the past is simply seen as normal, and media of the present is seen being shaped by ideology. And sort of to contrast this, he's not using any real evidence. Like he criticized fairly earlier about a critical drinker's understanding of One Piece, he's sort of doing here, not understanding how the evidence as loose as it was, and as weird as it was to Jose here, how it's just ideology. And he is correct. It's more of a traditional mindset, but critical drinker even sort of state. The, he has a very traditional view of it. But how does he frame it? I think he frames it as fair as uh, someone from his ideology can. The truth is all media is shaped in some way by the ideologies of the people creating it. Then Drinker notices yeah. one and not the other really just reveals how he looks at these various productions. And yeah, well, this is I think this is where he gets back onto the fair train. It might not seem fair earlier, given the sort of double standards that he pointed out, which is definitely a cognitive dissonance. OK, a lot of people are just talking past each other, in my opinion. OK, it is very limited ability to step outside of his own experience. The result is a kind of frustrating, neutered, childlike interpretation of male behavior that doesn't really line up with what real, normal people experience day to day. Personally, I find that I can't relate to more and more male characters in movies today because they simply don't talk, act, or look like any of the men I've actually known in my life, and they're definitely not something I'd want to aspire to. This is an incredible confession. This should make him realize that perhaps his perspective is a limited one, that he might want to consider viewpoints of others who are identifying with these characters, or maybe simply accept that there are experiences outside of his own that he might not be able to understand understand and that these movies perhaps often an entry point to understanding these different perspectives to reject them for being fair enough fair enough but i think jose why he's trying to mitigate and be careful is suffering from the same thing but because he's on the sort of razor he's uh in control of the narrative of this because everything's a narrative i try to go narrative free i'd rather not go with the narrative i would like to just call things as they are okay I'm not for team sports or tribalism. I'm sure I have my own bias and perspective that definitely would come across as that to people. I try to be just a straight shooter, okay? And sometimes I don't clearly explain things. Not that I'm trying to be bad faith, 
just sometimes I don't understand the people who are going to watch it, what their particular perspective or bias coming in. So I can't cover all those bases. So I just have to do the best job I can. And I think this video is doing the best job it can, even if it's not completely fair. Different or unfamiliar or simply not being normal only reveals how close-minded he is towards experiences that are unlike his own. And instead of trying to understand these unfamiliar experiences, he's created a video for the internet to complain that these characters are destroying movies. To agree with Trinker means to agree with an inherently conservative worldview, where male-led fantasies are more associated with quality and normalcy than female-led fantasies. It's not that women aren't allowed to be action heroes, but rather... Yeah, it's the whole fantasy thing. Some people want more realism. They want to be able to connect with characters, okay? And uh, why um, the critical drinker is not completely consistent within that and a lot of things. Uh, that definitely is his bias. He definitely... There is an element of realism that was a susceptible threshold to him. And he might... This is... What Jose is doing is just as reductive as critical thinker in a certain way, okay? Media is just all fantasies, and the suspension of belief is uh, dependent on your worldview when some people, the worldview is really shaky. Is mine, everyone. Other must operate under a double standard and have a limit to what they can be seen doing. It's about preserving a space where women can excel, but never equal the status of men, and certainly never excel at the expense of a beloved male character. Hey, you know, this time of year, we all keep getting pinged with political fundraising. Ads. Oh, God. Why? Why? To see this is one of my favorite yeah. examples. Or Jean-Luc Picard, the cultured, yeah. intelligent, clear-headed diplomat, yeah. capable leader and brave explorer from Star Trek The Next Generation. Once the epitome of the thinking man's hero, now reduced to a confused, frail old man who needs to be put firmly in his place by someone more diverse. Sheer hubris. Yeah, that'll teach you to get ideas above your station, Jean-Luc. Let's get the most controversial thing I'll say in this video out of the way. I love the first season of Star Trek Picard. Anyone who's watched the series is probably having a very normal reaction right now. <laughs> I hated it, okay? It seemed like a really bad start. Maybe it got better. Maybe it got better, okay? that The original beginning just seemed like a really weird knockoff of Firefly. Okay, I'm like, okay, this chick. But I'm willing to abandon things much more quickly. And I didn't review it, okay? I would want to actually go through it to fairly review it. But that's me. <laughs> and it's funny that uh, Picard sort of won audiences back, or was that Strange New World? Not quite sure. But I want you all to take a break from that so we can go back to the scene uh, where the Admiral supposedly puts Captain Picard in his place. Here's a little more context. It was a choice between allowing the Federation to implode or letting the Romulans go. The Federation does not get to decide if a species lives or dies. Yes, we do. We absolutely do. Thousands mm. of other species depend upon us for unity. I was standing up for the Federation, for what it represents, for what it should still represent. How dare you lecture me? Ignore me uh. again at your cost. This is no longer your house, Jean-Luc. So do what you're good at. Go home. This scene isn't anything new. The Star Trek The Next Generation TV series, where we first met Picard, has countless examples of him being dressed down by male and female admirals, sometimes justified, sometimes not. In this scene in Picard, we see his plan being utterly rejected by the admiral, but we're meant to sympathize with Picard. One of the themes of the first season of Picard is how Starfleet as an institution has abandoned its principles, and is put in its own desire to maintain its power and survival. Again, I haven't, uh, as I just admit it, I only watched like the first episode and was like, annoyed by it so i just dropped it okay i did that disappointing there's some personal bias you see in that particular decision but yeah desire to maintain its power and survival it's just i can understand where he's coming from and i do ultimately think this argument holds some water but I can't help but think it, it's missing some sort of point here. Ahead of the ideals it claims to represent. It's an example of how an institution becomes more concerned with perpetuating itself rather than serving the function it claims to have in the first place. What the audience is supposed to get here is that Picard is now an outsider to that institution, but not because he has become weak, but rather it's the institution he once represented that has become weak. That's why this scene is sad. Or you can reduce it to a woman yelling at a man and see it as a symbol of emasculation. But to me, that's a very reductive reading, not attempting to understand any of the subtlety or nuance that's happening in this scene. Therefore, this reading of Picard is not really engaging with the series at all. It's just using it as a tool to reinforce a narrative that media is telling society that men should be subservient to women.
Although if it sounds like I'm stretching a bit there and you don't believe that the drinker is trying to imply that movies and TV are offering moral lessons, I want to look at another video from the series on the subject titled, They Teach Us Awful Lessons. This video is very explicitly critiquing the morality of modern movies and hypothesizing how this will have a negative impact on society. But the problem with modern movies is that I've begun to notice the moral scale tipping in the wrong direction, trying to frame negative actions, decisions, and messages in a positive light. Basically what this means is they're teaching people really shit lessons now, and if this sort of thing continues for too long, it's going to produce an entire generation of shitty people. Trigger doesn't just see movies as a form of light entertainment. He believes they have an impact on the moral development of society. I'm not trying to suggest that he's saying movies yeah here's the thing here and i that does seem to be a sort of argument he has that's an argument leftists has been making for years and the right always sort of jumping on board with it this is the sort of issue that i am still trying to come with i mean i i think jose's sort of perspective here is something that it just works into my particular bias so i'm not i'm probably not seeing the flaws with this it might actually be correct in a more broad general way because i really dislike it because there's really no evidence to really back up this idea but to be fair critical drinker isn't even really making this directly it's sort of really implied which is sucky stuff these are shaping how we understand the world entirely just that they have an influence the bulk of the they teach us awful lessons video uses the example of mulan contrasting the animated and live action versions of the movie i want to first highlight his reading of the animated version the struggles and eventual successes of the main character demonstrate the value of determination and perseverance even when the odds are against you. That a person's worth isn't defined by the size of their muscles, and even if you're not as big and strong as other people, it doesn't mean that you can't go on to achieve great things. It's all about playing the hand that you're dealt, even if that hand doesn't seem as strong as other people's. First off, that line at the very end about the hand you're dealt makes it sound like Mulan was living with some kind of disability. But she wasn't. She was limited. See, the, that, that's a very minor point. No. Okay, I'm sure it's really more the limit of the medium that uh, Critical Drinker is going for. Another reason why I'm really uh, sort of annoyed that he's not given us more of the sort of after hours stuff. When it proves it's his sort of point, he won't, he'll look for the clip. But when it comes to uh, points against him, and lack of understanding, he won't search out those particular crit, uh, those particular uh, insider baseball, or in this case, critical drinkers thought process on that. Just a minor point, okay? Maybe it doesn't exist out there, but I, you, he gone. Jose here went through two particular points, and don't even know. It, it just seems a little bit off balance when it came in his favor. And he had the evidence on his side, he used it. But now that when he's starting to use sort of the, it definitely was a great way to start the video to bolster some credibility, but he's starting to get away from that sort of uh, mindset that I enjoyed before. In society, because she was a woman. And last I checked, being a woman is not a disability. And that fact should tell you something about what the movie is trying to say about society and how it treats women. Drinker's reading is instead fixated on Mulan's supposed physical limitations and doesn't really remark on the social pressure put on her to conform to a gender role. There are parts of the movie that Drinker just gets... Because maybe he's not very considerate of that in ancient Chinese, okay? He cares about the character and the effects. Does the actual movie ever shows the sort of social pressures or do you have to have... Is it explained to you within the story or do you have to have external knowledge to really pick up on that? OK, not everyone who watches the medium is going to have the leftist viewpoint of how. Yeah, it hints at it within the series. Jose here has sort of have a point, but he also undercuts sort of a, a lot of people's storytelling mythology. OK, and he's even admitted he doesn't think that critical drinker or really any critic really needs to have all the facts but he brought that up again when the facts were on his side rather uh, rather competently in the beginning and almost seems like he's using that to bolster further points which is something i'm not liking about this flat wrong 
Like the other recruits, she gets put through some rigorous training to teach her how to be a soldier, and because she's smaller and weaker than the others, naturally, she struggles to keep up with them. Mulan struggles during boot camp, but it's very clearly shown in the montage it's not strictly because she's a woman. Everyone struggles and everyone is failing at it. And if anything, the bullying by the other recruits makes things even tougher on her. As the montage progresses, the turning point is Mulan being the only person to figure out how to get the arrow off the top of the tree trunk. It not only gives her the resolve to continue her training, but it inspires everyone else and they stop bullying her. We then see everyone else start to do better in the training, and Mulan not only keeps up, we see her excelling. She's faster than all the men and strong enough to take out her teacher. She doesn't appear... I find this a little funny because uh, I don't know if Jose is going to bring it up. I, I pre-watched it, but this sort of would actually go against Critical Drinker that when she excels, she does become better than all the men. It's sort of funny to me. Okay. I don't think he even brings this up, but it's sort of funny that this should be the sort of thing. But they do set it up properly. Everything Jose said works. It just works. Here to have any sort of physical limitation here. But this falls into the trap drinker is in when discussing these movies. His understanding is limited to Milan's personal agency as a character. He doesn't have much to say about the world she finds herself in and what it means to limit a capable woman. Yes, but the uh, world were, was the world building the focus. This is where we're getting outside of, uh, this is where we're getting more into leftist uh, historical accuracy or historical understanding in this particular case. When an uh, average moviegoer, it depends on what the storyteller introduces as evidence. Does she really, because uh, it's been a while since I've seen Mulan, do they, uh, do they sort of go into, as a woman, how she faces all these social pressures within the confines of just the story, which I can have a particular issue with, is any of that particular stuff explained at all to the audience? Because you're getting out... You, a problem that might be my particular bias you need to think about the audience okay what the elements within the story really is telling the audience and what they're trying to do doesn't undercut some of the other points Jose is trying to make here but i think it's a rather missing the mark of understanding of the purpose of stories and the methodology of how a reviewer should do it. showing his own bias okay that people should take in these factors, even if the story doesn't explicitly say it. Just assumption, maybe? A lot of assumptions going around. Like her. He frames Mulan's journey as wanting some kind of adventure, when it's more accurate to say she wants to live more as her true self, something I thought was made clear in one of the movie's opening songs. Mulan didn't join the army as part of some desire for adventure. She was trying to protect her father from being conscripted, and her training didn't teach her to be smart and resourceful. She had those qualities from the opening of the movie. Hard work and perseverance are nice qualities to have, but the movie is so much more than that. It's a movie about a woman pretending to be a man in a society that only sees women as... See, everything up until this particular point, I can agree with. Is the movie... Re uh, yeah, I guess it is, from his perspective, about this. But from the story perspective, I can totally see where Critical Drinker is coming from. And this is also a contrast between the live action and the animated thing. I, this is a little interesting of a little trick that I didn't notice before. Not going to criticize it too heavily, but it's worth criticism that you're sort of getting into the weeds when this is used as a comparison brides and mothers it's making a very strong feminist statement here but here's drinker's take on the modern mulan which makes many of the same points she's just as fast just as strong just as good at fighting as the others in fact if anything she's probably better than them because she was born with high levels of chi or something which allows her to perform feats of agility and skill that border on the sea yes is she does she do that from the very start comparison to where she had to work her way up uh get over adversity it, Criticize critical drinkers analytical abilities he has a really he does have a really simple rigid view that places a lot of media in the same box but for this particular comparison i think these examples and the comparison works within his worldview and of his basis of criticism here he's trying to highlight the flaws that he sees in it but I really think this is a bad example to sort of highlight the flaws that he's using here. Supernatural. So basically all the challenges and problems that made life so difficult for the original Mulan are pretty much non-existent here. And well, it kind of undermines what used to be a pretty inspiring message. The main challenge Mulan faced in the animated version was living in a society that trapped her in a restrictive gender role. The exact same. But the critical drinker does not see that. He sees that as sort of 
window dressing, okay? He has a different perspective on that particular matter. I'm not saying Jose is wrong. He's trying to reframe it and try to make critical drinker wrong within this. And he's even admitted himself that critical drinker has a particular worldview that is rather rigid. This almost seems to Jose has such a broad thing. He's missing the forest for the trees. I believe that's how the saying's going. Same challenge that live action Mulan faces. By reducing the story to Mulan's physical abilities, Drinker misses a huge portion of the movie and the obvious message of fighting against a system that won't let her taste the freedom to be who she wants to be. Getting away from Mulan, I do want to briefly mention the weird... <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay. He's not addressing the... He's like, like, uh, getting away from the physical and the story development qualities. This is where this video starts taking a weakness, but you gotta love this sort of... uh. And I think I'm going to agree with him on the Wanda thing, but that was the first time sometimes a review give you a different perspective. Reading of WandaVision, where a drinker seems to think it's trying to glorify Scarlet Witch's imprisonment of a whole town because of her grief. The idea that your own personal happiness is literally more important than other people's freedom, well-being, and personal integrity. This is the worldview of a villain, not a f***ing hero. I'm genuinely shocked to hear that reading, because he clearly gets what the whole series was about. It was Scarlet Witch's villain origin story. The fact that you feel sympathy for her doesn't excuse her actions. If anything, they're trying to create a more complicated understanding of a villain, one where they aren't simply reviled, but empathize with while rejecting how they operate in the world based on that state yep we'll agree with both of them on that particular matter okay and yeah i think i don't understand this worldview of some of these critics with the superhero genre they they think there's some purity like automatically the show is approving of wanda's actions it's just i didn't finish out the series completely okay it disappointed me once it's the brought back vision Maybe I could be more competent. Maybe the reading um, is that. But from the framing and understanding, I think they just jump on this. And there is a certain quote. Uh, there's cer a certain biases against humanizing uh, villainy. But there is also uh, from a rightoid, a right perspective, leftists don't like to humanize vi uh, rightoids, okay? And that sort of affects their view. I think a lot of uh, it comes down to a lot of people have this assumption about the other side that may be incorrect and might even seem hypocritical because they're not seeing the same particular issues. And if that sounded like a mess, because it is, it's definitely mental gymnastics on a completely insane level. But I, in short, if someone in the comments wants to explain, why they're, they feel that Wanda was being uh, glorified for her descent in villainy, please let me know. Okay. But he's framing it as if Scarlet Witch was meant to be the hero of the series. When we see townsfolk suffering under Wanda's spell, we are meant to empathize with them and see how Wanda's coping is victimizing other people. The next time we see her, she's a villain in the Doctor Strange movie. That wouldn't be a surprise to anyone who was paying the least bit of attention. But Drinker's reading is so uncharitable that he's inferring the show was trying to do something it wasn't, or that it's trying and is there again does he go into the sort of critical drinker talking about this on after hours or more individually does it exist or does it not exist okay see this is why pulling outside material for the first point i liked okay but him not including this makes him seems like he's like jeremy said earlier trying to straw man critical drinker is there a piece of evidence out there that in his particular video it's more just a quick rhetorical trick does or is this something he would explain or has explained in more detail in some other place see that was actually i what i liked earlier actually is actually turning into a flaw now. Trying to impart some kind of lesson for your own grief superseding the suffering of others. We're instead teaching people to be arrogant, complacent, entitled, narcissistic, and selfish. These are shitty lessons designed to produce shitty people that are destined to crash and burn once they get out into the real world. Or even worse, invade it in large enough numbers that they actually start to dilute the culture and make it just as shitty as them. These Yeah, before he even starts, I hate this, okay? They're trying to... Hype these people up as great people here. I understand the perspective. These people are being portrayed as heroes and they have all these flaws, but I really hate the fact, which I even think 
I would agree with Jose on, but leftists have made this arguments about sexism affecting the real world. And now that uh, more traditional people are making the same argument that media is sort of something to look for, sort of aspire to, leftists are freaking out. So it seems just hypocritical for leftists if you're looking at it from a tribal mindset. It definitely seems hypocritical. I don't like that. I want everyone to move away from that. Media is media. Some young, the younger, something's made. I would say for cartoons made for children, that's a little bit more of a concern, but I think parents should actually take control of what their children watch. I, I hate that shit. Okay. Yeah. Well, he doesn't say conservatives are bad. He just hints at it, okay? This is the best leftist critique I've seen. Doesn't make it great. It's just trending towards a better video for leftist essays. Final thoughts are probably drinkers' videos at their silliest, <laughs> but to then use that reading as yeah. a way of describing movies. You want to come on? I can send you a link. Echoes the most ridiculous Might as well, just so I don't fuck up the flow, I do but... believe art can have a powerful transformative effect on people, but we should. Feel free to decline it. I'll send it in a moment in case you want to jump on and deal with the stupidity that I am dealing with tonight. Even, but might not be in the cards you can just sit in chat and annoy me from there should be careful not to assign the ability to completely change society to a handful of disney movies there is a grander narrative at play in these videos and this is the part that gets very close to making a good point trigger spends a lot of time talking about the conflicts between movie studios and the fans of a particular character or franchise the term fans here should be understood not as everyone in the audience or even the most enthusiastic but rather a subset of the audience that is assumed the mantle of the most devoted this is it i think he's talking about the point here it's extremely weird yeah, of course. Uh, Critical Drinker's channel has a narrative that he follows through. Is that narrative somewhat correct, close to reality? You have your own narrative you're trying to spin here also. It'll come across as hypocritical to a lot of people that you're not acknowledging it. Okay, but I'm just nitpicking now, of course. Again, I keep trying to say, I'm trying to avoid a narrative, but I even probably have a narrative. Fucking hell, you can't get away from all this bullshit. That necessarily true. Fandom comes in many forms. But to this particular group, there is a firm belief that they not only love a piece of media the most, but they love the purest and most accurate version of that media. This is structured in a very deliberate way in... See, the, the, this seems a little weird. I, I, I want to agree with this, okay? Because it does definitely on the surface seem this way. I think it's a very, uh, what is it? A shallow interpretation of it. Someone not getting into the nitty gritty and, and it sort of uh, goes back to the sort of Mahler versus H bomber stuff, which if you're not knowing about it, it's really hard to tell about it. But that's besides the point. The point is that everyone has their own particular narrative that they're wanting to push when they're in a tribal mechanism and everyone tries to sound as authoritative as possible. And people go with the explicit thing like, this is just my opinion, dude. This is my perspective. And do you have to clarify that all the way down or you're dishonest? It's a little fucked, okay? The, they hate their own fans video. It explains the plot being used by studios to engineer outrage with the term fan baiting. They're practically falling over themselves to antagonize their own fans these days mm. and form the resulting controversy for everything. Be aware of case you the come idea in. being presented here is that studios this are taking the most extreme cringe. examples of outrage over creative decisions but and I think using those cringe. to deflect from criticism. Drinker does at least try to differentiate his critiques from those whose anger lead them to harass and threaten actors, using the example of Leslie Jones from the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. There were plenty of legit reasons to criticize both the character and the actor, none of which had anything to do with the color of her skin, but naturally, the media chose to focus in on the small minority of racist assholes who did exactly that. While it's nice to hear Drinker call these people racist assholes, it rings a bit hollow when later in the video he suggests the studio is making these casting decisions on purpose. Specifically- Yeah. Okay, fundamental misunderstanding, okay, rings hollow. There is a bit of language that I can definitely hurt my soul and head, actually more my head, okay, the sort of a weird sort of snide, oh, that's nice, he actually admitted that, but it rings a bit hollow when you counterpoint it with this thing, which is a completely different point. So uh, negative points for this particular issue here, but I'm taking everything 
not as a whole, not as a narrative, point by point. Quickly to eventually generate this kind of outrage. Or how about Moses Ingram from Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was apparently briefed in advance by Lucasfilm that she'd be getting racist hate from toxic fans, almost like they were counting on it happening. This plot is also used to explain why critics praise certain movies, predicated on the idea that since the critic and audience scores don't match or aren't very close on Rotten Tomatoes, there must be some form of nefarious foul play coming from studios threatening critics. Ever wondered why critic and audience scores look like... Yeah, but is there? Okay. There is speculation, I know. But with uh, how untransparent all these studios are, sometimes transparency doesn't... You, we don't know. We can only speculate. Insider knowledge is extremely uh, laughed at. Speculation is laughed at by people. Okay, we can only do what we can. I think the more the issue is that they used Kenobi, a classic nostalgia-filled series, to sort of push this character and they wanted to make her the face. That was the theory. I think it's a good theory. Didn't she get like stabbed twice? Once as a child and once again, okay. Really setting her up with that plot armor and Mary Sue vibe that a lot of the a lot of people dislike. Not just traditional, not just centrist, even some uh left-leaning people find that sort of Mary Sue crap intolerable. The reviewing completely different movies these days it's because it's easier to take the safe option and praise the things you're expected to praise rather than risk voicing your true opinions what's notable about this critique is drinker seems to think that this is coming all the way from the top that the studios have so little confidence in making a good movie that people will want to see on its merits that they introduce diversity and therefore weaker performances yep no uh, no i don't think that's exactly they just um are willing to do dei sort of things put a black actor in a role when she's a, a female, when it's not necessarily good. And the director sort of hypes her up, gives her better qualities than she can. They don't follow a good character trajectory when you're making a Mary Sue type character. Okay. And they have that built in uh, racist uh, proof thing to try to defend against criticism and just call people racist. It's a flawed strategy. It worked for years. Now it's sort of uh, faltering, which I'm yay. Okay. Even if I think some of the people go a little bit too far with some of their crap, it's there. Okay. You don't want to admit it. It's, yeah, it's speculation. You you sort of used, yeah. sorry, you're using up the charitability from earlier to uh, bolster your own claims here, in my opinion in order to create controversy and transform watching that movie into a political statement. They chose to turn their show into some kind of cultural flashpoint in the hopes that it would deflect attention and criticism away from what they'd actually produced. Without a doubt. I, I think he's selling, overselling a little bit his theory. I think if he would just said, it, it's really likely, given all this evidence, circumstantial evidence, that they're trying to do it in this particular case, and how many times they pulled that card in the past. But eh, maybe I'm, I'm beating him to the punch. Marketing for some of these movies leans into the controversies that are generated online. Yeah. But Drinker is imagining something far more grand than trying to game social media. Much of his theory is predicated on the idea that these movies are reaching some sort of objective standard of bad quality, something that studios and critics are all aware of, but not willing to say. It's the subtle suggestion that Drinker is unwilling. Okay, objective, objective, objective. Okay, we got a new uh, Pokemon in. Uh, welcome, uh, Lucifer the Doverman. I call you. How's it going? I'm okay. okay. Tired. I almost had a nap right after coming back from kayaking, but the weather was so beautiful <laughs> today that I had to go out onto the ocean. It was so nice. Shit, I'm like an hour away from any sort of ocean, and I have a broken bridge to deal with. Oh, yeah, Lovely. that's right. I know. Aiden and I were talking about that a little while ago, and it's like she used to go across that bridge vir virtually every day to go to school. So uh, I can imagine every that must be having a, a that must be a serious issue for the traffic. It must and be you don't, serious. Uh, luckily, that's I the do. I, Chesapeake Bay, right? And there's only two yeah. big. There's only two bridge. Well, there there used to be only two major bridges that used to go across it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, in the you do not want to go in the bay. Oh God! But let's not too much. Let's not talk too much about my location. Okay. 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 But yeah, I am envious of you. You can just go kayak and whenever. Yeah, uh, I live two minutes other... away from the ocean. 
Okay, but you you pre-watch this. Uh, you probably yes. will disagree with some of my commentary. I think this is the fairest leftist critique I've seen. It's not saying much, but I, I do want to praise some element, the beginning section, why the rest of this is sort of a chapping at mine. Oh, oh, there's uh, there's a uh, there's a bunch of things during this video that I I completely agreed with. I just thought that he went into it a little bit more, like. I just don't like drinkers, so I want to use this. I want to make this video as a kind of teardown from them, and I'll use anything that I I have in my my tool belt to try to go after them. Not as a a specific critique on something that he said, more just drinkers general, like his idea and also his fan base. Yeah, I, I always hate people using their fan base as sort of a a point against them okay yeah like uh what's your name with uh tim pool do you know don't you do, what do you think about all the neo-nazis that like you is it do, do you think that you know your your content makes people more neo-nazi it's like oh shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah okay i'm just trying to give commentary if yeah audience capture is a weird thing he's i mean tim pool there's a good case audience capture like with eliza blue and that stuff how he was an asshole about that uh, but still, can you let, name let, somebody who was who was nice to Eliza Blue that didn't wasn't like a guy trying to bang her? Um, uh, <laughs> no, it's been a while. Okay, I just know Tim Pool got in hot water with that. I think it was more uh, one of his. Uh, I think it was one of his friends or coworkers or employees. Who Ian. sort of was simping for her and probably Ian. hyping her up to him. I think yeah, that it was, was more of it. Yeah, that was uh and same with Elon because uh Ian yeah. was like totally simping for Elon at that time, all the time, every single post that Elon made. And then Eliza was like every time Eliza posted something, Elon would be like reposting it, and then Ian would say something about it. <laughs> uh sim culture. There's definitely something yeah. to say about it. People over oh, but, over hype it sometimes, but uh, it's there. But you can also see from the other side, like uh, all the all the women like streamers. As soon as Eliza started coming out of the woodwork, they were like, "She's got to be terrible. There's got to be something in the. She's got to be hiding something." <laughs> and of course, there was. But Brittany Venti and uh, oh, and of course, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, the girl who just uh, gave birth uh, yesterday. Oh, uh, ba, 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 ba. the the one that goes on Friday Night Tights all the time. Melanie Mack or uh, Christina Mayer? No, the Chrissy Chrissy Mayer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Chrissy Chrissy Mayer and Brittany Venti did like many videos on breaking down what the fuck Eliza Blue was into. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you know, hey, in. everybody, you know, everybody's, you know, hey, if you're a girl and you don't have a lot of shit going on and guys want to have sex with you, you get your bag. You do your thing. Yeah. Get your OnlyFans yeah. going on. Whatever. You do you. Yeah. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Hate okay. The, exactly. But she was also uh, striking people. But we're getting off topic. Yes. Okay. Back, off topic. Back to the drinker video. Yeah. Well, I believe that someone might like a movie or a TV show that he believes is bad because he's to do some kind of objective metric for determining whether something is of good or bad quality. Drinker's whole why modern movies are bad series reflect this rules-based approach to making movies, positioning himself as the referee as to whether or not these rules are being followed. Only the rules are subjective, and so are their application. As he does, he really. <sighs> I, I I can see a little bit of the rules. He goes with the hero's method. I brought up. Uh, Mr. Jose here didn't even bring up that critical drinker for what was it? Captain Marvel definitely acknowledged that they were going with the heroine's journey by bringing up the self actualization, which is something within that cycle. But a s dead solid rules, I don't think he, he has them as a framework. I do agree with that, but he plays loose with them, fast and loose with them because that's how yep. the drinker goes. That is correct. Okay. And it's fair enough to say that he plays fast and loose and sometimes <laughs> melts off when he shouldn't, but nah, you're hey. holding someone up to the standard just because they have a lot of subs. He was yeah, the actor that's, who, that is correct. He's an actor who got popular, and I think for as simplistic as his reviews are, and even if I might disagree with him, under certain circumstances, with a lot of things, 
he, he's passable given his sort of quality of work. Yeah, and he was a writer, not an actor. No, he definitely did have some train with acting. That's why. No, he did. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, back in the day, he. I don't know if he was professional, but he played a character. His origin story is he played a character. He decided to do a YouTube video playing this critical drinker character. I, I think why he gave up on acting is because he's not very good at it. Yeah, Writing yeah, is right. where he's strong at. Okay. But, yeah, it's, yeah. It, there is like a at the you know the the bridge crossover of lots of actors believe that they can write, and lots of writers do believe that they can act. And really, the, you just stay in your lane, and you'll do you'll do a lot better that way. Yeah, and it's, it's right like, in... when, like when Madonna wanted to be an actress. It's like, oh <laughs> please, please, just stay in the uh, stay in stay in the booth, and and go up on stage. Me. That's fine. The new Madonna. Oh, I consider the new Madonna, Lady Gaga. I'm hoping she's better. Uh, she's tolerable in the last time I saw her. I'm have you seen she's Stars Born? A... No, I haven't. Oh, it's she, too... she's actually excellent in it. I'm, I was very oh, okay. surprised on her, on her ability. But in American Gothic, she was trash. Total yeah. trash in American Gothic. I, oh, God. I think I saw her in American Horror Story and American Horror okay. Story. Sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, she was okay, passable, but it was pretty bad, in my opinion. But that might have been because there were so many good actors there. Okay, but yeah, okay, she's approved since that. Sorry, Star is Born, not really something I'm interested in. Maybe I should give it a go, but yeah, no. If you're not gonna, if if that's not something you'd be interested in, you wouldn't you wouldn't like it. But I will get. I, I watched it. It wasn't a great movie, but she does. She does exactly what she needs to do. She actually comes across as very emotive. She doesn't seem wooden or anything like that. Like she's she doesn't pull a Brie Larson like in in Captain Marvel where she's just a plank of wood. She actually well, seems sometimes, like a real person in it. Well, sometimes I'm not sure who to blame, uh, whether the actor, or the director, or someone else. But in Captain Marvel, I mean, for Brie Larson, she's always wooden, okay? That's something that's a little bit easier to tell. That, But that that I blame on the casting director. I'm like, she was miscast for that. Captain miscast, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, she's usually wooden. I like her in Scott Pilgrim uh, as the uh, the girlfriend, but she played a bitch. She played that role really well. Almost like that's like kind of her thing or something. <laughs> Mm, maybe uh, okay. that's not going to Brie Larson hate train himself will often admit to in his videos when he points out several exceptions ultimately all this really reflects is his own personal taste in movies and like I've said several times in this video it's fine to not like some movies there is no problem with that but not catering to your taste personally doesn't mean it's the downfall of cinema or this will lead to some kind of disastrous consequences for society it also doesn't mean that your tastes are emblematic of fandom either what really undercuts the narrative here though is that he seems yeah, what undercuts the narrative? You're spinning a narrative, dude. Okay, just admit it. Okay, yeah. he, you're exactly. overhyping what he's saying. Yes, I he, literally paused the video at this point saying the exact same thing. I mean, the, yeah, Critical Drinker has an underlying message, but is it partially true? Okay, why is it only the leftists who are just denying this? Okay, I mean, there's some people who varying degrees like, yeah, they're pushing this. What effect is it going to have to his society? Yeah, some people think it's going to affect society extremely. And some people are like, yeah, it's really cringe and it really uh, fucks with the story. But I don't really think people are going to actually be affected by it. That's subjective also. So, dude, it, it was such a strong start. I just the rest of the video just he still brings up some good points here and there, but he sort of uh, overplays his hand, in my opinion, here. Yes, agreed, 100%. I think if he would have made his video only, like, 40 minutes, instead of, like, trying to pad out a little too much of his own, like, underlying uh, uh, little, I, w I wouldn't say hate towards Drinker, just annoyance that the fact that he's so popular and, you know, people really like him. He's like the popular mm. girl at school. That's that's kind of cute. And you're like, why the fuck does everyone like this bitch? She's so mean. Mm. <laughs> she and she never talks to me, and she never returns my calls. And every time we're out at recess, she always is always playing with other people. Yeah, well, 
At least he's not part of. Actually, is he part of? He probably is part of Nebula. Forget he's he's not directly. Uh, Mister, uh, the next video I'm going to check out. Uh, well, not his video directly, but a response to uh, response to uh, Mister Future. Uh, me is future. Whatever the fuck, it's there. I know, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, future is me or whatever that crappy name is. I always forget the names when it comes to these streams. It makes me look like a complete idiot. More of an idiot, should I say. But besides the point, I don't care about looking like an idiot. You, too many people want to look good. I just want to give my opinion and have some fun. Try to think outside the box. Sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes I'm right. Got to be a... You got to be willing to think outside the box sometimes. That's my personal opinion. But boxes are fun. Haven't you ever seen a cat play in a box? They look like they're having the best time of their lives. Good point. Good point. Boxes <laughs> can't be fun. Yes. I, I was, I was be... going to make another joke, but I will keep that to myself. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's move on before you. Just think it. All of this is a new phenomenon. That it's only recently that movies have started pushing diversity or relying on old franchises or are trying to contradict what he considers traditional values. He says it all started in 2016. It all began in the year of our Lord, 2016, with the release of the rebooted Ghostbusters movie. Uh, before continuing, I want the oh, greatest the movie that's ever been made. Greatest movie ever. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, it is. Uh, it is. It reminds me of why people got into filmmaking in the first place. Everything, every part of it is 10 out of 10. Ghostbusters, uh, 2016. Yep, you're a big simp for that. Which oh, one of the yeah. girls have conver- was? Which one of the girls converted you to it? Okay, oh, don't, uh, don't tell the... me Leslie Jones. Yes, it is. <laughs> Damn, she was one small. I'm so. In... She is the most attractive the woman video. I've ever seen. So, I mean, I do agree with people that uh, people harp on that, but it's base is him one bringing part. up this point. No one knows this, okay? It's not a flashpoint enough to, for people to know this. I mean, it's interesting history. Again, this seems like a point I can just summarize real quickly. Uh, basically, the dude who got replaced in the remake was sort of a, a little sexist. That That's the takeaway from this. So it happened before 2016. So, therefore, critical drinkers wrong. Non-point. No, it's just a... It's just the obvious point, just like everyone uses The Last Jedi, because it's just so damn obvious. It's something, it's just something so obvious you want people to attach to. How many people watched even the remake of Battlestar Galactica? Oh, I know my brother was big into it. I watched it. It was a great show. But uh, nobody I know, like outside of like nerd culture, even had a clue it was happening or what was going on, like the show even existed beforehand. Yeah. Okay. You need, uh, when you're at a certain level and you working at a certain level, you want examples that everyone knows about. This is why they pick from this. And everyone's like, Oh, it happened. It happened plenty of times before, but did anyone care? Was that really even known? Even has a built in argument. The internet wasn't around. Even if the internet wasn't around, it was more of a cult, uh, sort of success. Battlestar Galactica. Correct. Okay, it's not a good example to run with. So I can skip most of this section because even though he's he's technically right to bring this up, he's sort of uh, inserting a bad example into his narrative here. Okay, let's get to a more relevant thing like this uh, abortion. God. Sorry, I did not like the remakes of the Star Trek. The first uh, one was Castle. I enjoyed it. But after that, it's just like, god bad 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 like uh just a side note uh back in 2004 i was at sky bar in vancouver and i made out with zachary quinto (laughs) that's when that's when he was uh it was like like when heroes was going on but he was doing side work at the same time in vancouver doing some movie and uh jason statham was also at the bar at the same time oh yeah I forget you have ties in with the these old boys here. I'm an old man. Uh, you probably groomed him, okay? No. Why did you groom he him? Was, he, he was hitting on me, like. And he, okay. I, yeah, and I'm tall, 
and he was and one of the first things he did was you're really tall and he put his hand on my chest uh, uh you, you fun facts with uh lucifer the doberman <laughs> he's cute I'm gonna, all i'm gonna say is he's cute okay Sorry, I don't swing that hard that way. Okay, I can acknowledge that women hard. are cute, but they have to be, <laughs> they have to be uh, ultra cute. Like you have to acknowledge some guys, even fully straight guys should acknowledge it. But strong name recognition and hope that it will somehow translate into financial success. You, your instincts, your judgments are wrong. McDonald's is the best hamburger on the planet. Coca Cola the best drink. Stardo is the best Viper pilot in the galaxy. And Battlestar. Oh God, sorry, he's still on this. Sorry, he tricked me. <laughs> he tricked me i wanted to skip past this crap as you you can see this yes yeah, I mean, I mean, is it relevant yes lots of people have skipped past this shit. <laughs> it is not relevant it's a uh, it's one of these uh moot points okay exception to the rule a really uh niche little thing and that's my and response to it. discovery or the afrofuturism of black panther or a female-led mcu movie with captain marvel See, I, I disagree. Like, there's criticism against Black Panther. I, I actually don't like a lot of the criticism against Black Panther. Like, why are they like using this fusion of technology? I'm like, because it's I, Africa. I don't like that. Because it's Africa, and that's actually one of the big things in the comic book. Because I used to collect Black Panther comic books, and T'Challa was an amazing character, and it was cool to try to use the fusion of Africa and like the futurism that they had back in like the 70s and 80s comic books, but in this day and age, it just looks so pandering and silly. It looks silly. I, I know. It really looks okay. silly. It does look silly, but it makes sense in the context. I like anyone who's played Civilization knows you have different tech paths. Okay, Wakanda just picked a different tech path than the Westerners. I like. Okay? I like. The, now, that's a good one. I like that analogy. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, even they just use a different tech tree. There's different development paths within different countries. And the more isolated you are, like Japan has a really wacky tech path because they close down, open up, close down, open up over the generations. So that creates a very interesting culture. But yeah, sorry, just a side tangent about Black Panther. I, I Some of the criticism against I'm like, what? what? Why are you complaining about the Afrofuturism style? Okay. Yeah, it feels pandering, I guess, but... So you're saying you hate black people? Uh, no, That's the only I, I reason to so dislike much. Black Panther. That's the only reason to dislike Black, black Panther. I heard from Snoop hey, I'm Dog. saying that the Snoop hate Dog is told unwarranted. Me. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying the criticism against Black Panther is excessive to a weird degree, but that's, it's fair enough. Some people can't, can't accept other cultures. It doesn't make them racist. It just makes them intolerant, okay? Fair enough, fair enough. I'm moving on. Are these fans being <laughs> baited? Or perhaps these fans simply being given something they want to see? And if so, does the joy they get simply not count? Are they not allowed to be part of the fandom? Oh, sheesh. Oh, Did you make out with Jesus. either one of these guys? Okay. No. This gay couple? Nope. Because I remember the plagiarism claim against uh, STD, okay, back in the day. Supposedly they stole it from a game called Tardigrades, okay? And, the, the of course, the big corporate company won. It always bugged me. This is why I was, besides it seeming like pure and other crack, the plagiarism claim. I don't care how it played out in court and that almost no one brought it up, but it seemed like a clear-cut case, like these two gay guys. Sorry. <laughs> Another side tangent that uh, is probably going to be a skewer. I'm not even suggesting hey, that these fan bases that. turning up are driving the success no, of any of these titles. Guy. In the same way, I don't think fans like Trink are skipping a title is driving failure. Complicated market forces and entertainment. Oh, God. Okay. I'm thinking about skipping the rest of this. I watched this a few days ago. Is there really anything more relevant? I mean, he brings up something I think is relevant. Let's just... Look. Is there anything more relevant? Are these works. But as someone who engages in a bit of media criticism now and then, I try not to get so swept in as to think that this is all normal or that my voice is representing the masses, even if a few of my videos get over a million views on YouTube. Although Drinker's critiques are a hollow echo of conservative fan outrage, in spite of how he tries to present a it as hollow something new, echo there's part of, of his work that I find even more bothersome. In the yeah, the language just starts getting like, <laughs> how many times have you used hollow? I'm curious. You <laughs> used that word quite a few times. Yes. Always, sometimes... Sometimes when the, a little word came comes up, I always like to see 
check the transcript. Yes. <laughs> okay, it might fuck up my flow. Conservative 27. Some of that might be in the comment. I want hollow. Hollow Knight. Let's see, not that much. Well, really doesn't come up that much. Okay. I'm just, it seems like a weird word to use. Okay. He tries to present it as something new there's part of his work that i find even more bothersome in the they hate their own fans video he almost seems aware of his role in all of this actual fans get so burned here's where we come to it franchise that they go into it with the worst possible outlook determined to find problems and unwilling to even give it a fair chance trinker is the one fomenting this when he spreads this endless negativity to his audience with his reviews reinforcing a politically conservative reading as more acceptable than any sort of leftist or progressive one yeah okay Fair enough. Yeah. But... What? Twice bitten. You, you get bit twice. You you start like just going into situations, going, okay, do I have to do I have to wear protection before I go into this situation because I've gotten hurt already. So, what should I do? And then then you get things like One Piece, where you go in thinking it's going to be garbage because Netflix fucked up so many anime uh, adaptations already, and it turns out to be pretty good. Yeah. Lower expectations is the way to go. Okay. Just assume yes. it's going to be crap. Well, when, if okay. you, you know, if it's going to, if a seven nowadays, people are like, holy crap, that was great. And it's actually, you know, well, I give it a seven, a 7.5 out of 10. There's like, that's, 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 we're living in an, an age where, you know, you didn't get raped on your way home from work. So that's a great day. Because so many <laughs> days before you got beat up or you got mugged or something like that. It's like, oh, God, that's just that's not something we want to get used to. And I don't think that's a good idea to get used to stuff that is just trash. You know, I I, I have issues with uh, sort of the conservative viewpoint, but the progressive one tends to just hurt my head like glass onion. God, that that. Uh, I covered that before. The ending just still pisses me off. Everything Ryan Johnson does piss me off in different ways. So maybe I should give him props. Sorry, Ryan uh, Johnson. Reen. He has to be special. <laughs> he has to have a special uh, Ryan variation name. I always have say you seen Ryan. That brick? No, no, that's the one I missed. Was that his that's, one good one that people yes, actually that's, praised? That's the only one I liked, but. I, wa I, wa I watched it with my friend who was a, a film fanatic back in the day, and we and we really liked it. The way the story was told was really weird, but it was really cool at the same time. And then I rewatched it, and I'm like, okay, never mind. Fuck this show. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I got it. Yeah. yeah it's, like, like, uh... it's, like ha it's like hanging out with, your, with one of your exes that you used to be really into. And then you realize, oh my god, oh that yeah. Now I realize why I broke up with you. Okay, okay. Yeah, sometimes uh, you you notice habits and it starts <laughs> annoying you. So you even if you're like, it's not that bad here. It's remind you about where it's so disastrous to other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people's yes. personal bias uh, get a version to certain things, and a lot of this progressive uh, messaging in it just definitely is building up and people are just getting intolerant. So I do understand people freaking out, even uh, as going pronouns. Hilarious, by the way, but I, I still, <laughs> yes. I was one of the people to still make fun of him for it because it's funny. You have to learn to laugh at yourself sometimes. And, but that's besides the point. I was it, actually it, watching that stream. I was watching uh, as stream that game because I re I was really thinking about buying it. So I went through okay. and watched like, two and a half hours of him playing it and as just he was the chat was beating him up too because it was some of the stuff was so stupid and then you know that one point where he's like yep yeah, okay now i'm gonna snap it's snap time and some you you can understand that you've probably done that a bunch of times i've done that a bunch of times where just that one straw then you just go back and go yeah well this and this and this and this and bah! It's still a stupid reading. Oh, she was cloned from a trans person. What? Why are you getting a trans allegory? I understand why he snapped. He's reading too much into it, but it was a stupid snapping point. Sorry, that was just a stupid snapping <laughs> point in my what opinion. You talking okay? about? A, it was hilarious because he called it. It was before no, it, it happened. Was. It was like, oh, and I gotta tell you something. Oh, what? You used to be a man. Let me guess, you used to be a man. I was cloned. 
from a man. It's like, oh, of course. It's not of the course. same thing, though, okay? <laughs> of it, course. It, it's a good way. It's a good joke to make, okay? It's a good joke. <laughs> but it's not something to be made seriously. But, yeah, people are getting intolerant. And uh, they're definitely uh, losing sort of – they're just getting tired of this. So even little small elements of progressive uh, messaging sets some people – some, uh, you know, and SJW, uh, Jason, you know, their micro wokeism is just causing some of these more in people who are really sick and tired of it just to go off. I, like I can't that understand that. I like that phrase, micro wokeism. I'm going to I'm going to oh. save that. I'm going to save that for later. Oh, I, I coined that for uh, I coined that actually for as when Andrew had me on Andrew Clark a while ago. I like that. Okay. I like that a lot. I will make I can sure agree. To, I'll make sure to Starfield had it. plenty of micro wokeisms. Okay. I don't think there are anything to cry over, but you know, that's subjective. And I probably don't expose myself to as much cringe as some of these people. So it's like that chick from uh, black girl gamer or the sweet baby Inc. Who is like, yeah, I don't want to work with white. It's not that I hate white people, but I just don't want to be around them because when they, you know, talk about stuff, usually it's a microaggression. It's like God, and and now that I think, now that I'm trying to like connect the dots between them, I can imagine why these racist black people who just see white people as oppressors all the time, every little thing that annoys them, they think about. Yeah, you see, it's just another microaggression because you're racist against black people. It's like, oh my God, are we going down the same way? Is that is that is the pendulum swinging? It is. I, I think way. it is okay, and I can understand it. But I'm st still going to try to push back on it. How do you push Good. back on it and not uh, push the other direction? That is the difficult path to walk. Okay, You're like yes, okay. I, I'm thinking going with objective crap, but there's still flaws. You're you're missing the mark with the emotional because people's feelings do matter. But sometimes I like being asked, be like, "You're just this isn't good optics, dude." Okay. But a not acknowledging that people are getting intolerant as a society to this is incredibly flawed. But I think the way he framed this, because the leftist critiques of the past were extremely heavy handed. Chud Logic was watching like earlier, which I thought of including, but I'm not probably going to. He was watching the alt right playbook, how they radicalized normies. And he he's a former lefty. So he was like freaking out. He was like, I can understand. Uh, why people are like this, okay? They bought this bullshit back then. If you don't know about the, what was it? Folding ideas, uh, alt-right. Okay, shouldn't get off of that tangent. Bunch of nerds. Hey, BMO. Yeah, I, I, I really like uh, Chad Logic. I really like him, especially recently. Yeah. Some, of the, some of the videos is, uh, doing some of the internet drama has been hilarious. I've clipped out a whole bunch of stuff that he's done, just like two second stuff where he's like, you are a whore. You are a stupid whore. If I want to get advice on being a whore, I'll call you. Until then, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I love you, son. Clip that. Yeah, Clip he, that he shit. Still, he still has a leftist perspective to a certain extent, but he's no nonsense. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's smart. He's okay. honest. Ed. He's honest. Okay. Yeah. Anna Kasparian and uh, Cenk Uger seem to have a segment on DEI. I'm like, great. Okay. This shit doesn't make sense. Okay. People are just getting tired of it. Even people on the left are getting tired of it. I think, but I don't want to see it going the other way. Again, you brought up the pendulum. I think we have a lot of indication like this video. His criticisms often don't amount to more than a few superficial observations tied to a thumbs up or thumbs down. For all his complaints about heavy-handed messaging in modern movies, his videos are just as guilty, and it becomes so much more apparent how this works with his buddying up to the conservative media outlet, The Daily Wire. For the unfamiliar, The Daily Wire is a conservative media outlet perhaps most well-known by... I think that he's overselling this. Critical drinker's just trying to push himself. I understand why this looks bad. I understand why people see this as bad, him uh, going, when he's trying to be non-political. He's trying to stay out of the politics, yet yeah, he's getting promotion from people like Russell Brand, uh, Daily Wire, a lot of politically uh, adjacent people. I understand optically why this makes critical drinker and why that ties him to a conservative worldview. It, yeah, he's a more traditional, so he's going to be more appealed to more conservative or traditionally liberal values. But does it make him a conservative? Uh, 
he probably is one. Any thoughts on that? Or I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to say that I because I've I've read like virtually all of Will's books that I kind of see that he's there's there is a lot of undertones of the people that are like leftists in in his books are always the bad guys. They're all, and they're they're always the people who interfere with saving the day. So <laughs> oh, you know you you know if you, you know I wouldn't say just after reading one book that oh maybe he hates leftists and he's he's kind of against them and he's on the right but you know when you see it like 7 12 13 times and you're like okay yeah the hippie who who is really cool and is he's he's a, a male feminist is actually the bad guy who made the virus that is now created the zombies that you're trying to fight against kind of resident evil style it's like okay okay fuck okay calm down <laughs> simmer simmer down now but who, how do you know? How do you know if he's conservative or not? I've never really, has he ever really said that he, he, who he votes for or anything like that? Like you would know Gary, you know, damn well, Gary's like a libertarian right wing dude, but drinker. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Don't know. Maybe he's more of a centrist. Maybe. No, no, maybe, no. What, maybe. What, what did, uh, what did Sitch and, uh, what did Sitch try to tell me? Uh, no, independent. Don't say centrist anymore because it makes you sound like you all all you do is sit on a fence on the fence about every issue. Just call yourself an independent thinker. And that's why I'm a radical centrist. Okay, I go with the J Rag sort of thing. But yeah, <laughs> I use that as a meme. I don't want to use the enlightened centrist. That makes me sound like I think I'm above people. I'm just radical. Radical oh, man. I'm above people. It's just because I'm tall and good looking and better than most people. Okay, okay. This isn't a place to plug you. And good lo- and good looking. Okay. And, and you know, Tober, look how good looking. They've entered Tober into the world of entertainment too, less than impressive results. I've made plenty of videos on that subject if you're curious. Drinker has reviewed several of the Daily Wire's movies, including Run Hide Fight, Terror on the Prairie, and Lady Ballers. For a channel that largely focuses on major releases from big studios, it's a wonder why he would waste any time at all on these much smaller releases. He's also far gentler on these movies. What? Yeah. What? Oh. What? Have you seen what? have you, you seen Drinker's r- review on Lady Ballers? What did it tear into it? Yeah, he's he gonna play it, a bit. He, he called it trash. He said it was one of the oh. worst things. It's he's not on par with the mid 2000s classics oh, like Dodgeball. So oh, so he's he's literally lying here? He's yeah, you'll playing see, a clip oh, here. Yeah, but he doesn't go into it. You he he cuts out all the parts where he's like, This was the biggest waste of time, and they could have made it funny, but it's just so heavy-handed and dumb like you want to watch you don't want to watch it all the way through like you could barely watch more than 20 minutes before going who made this it's like an snl sketch that got spread out to like an hour and a half okay so he tears into it but his point about covering the smaller stuff i think uh okay Glad I invited you. Okay, got some dishonesty Anchorman here. Anchorman Thunder that it seems to want to emulate. This movie is very much a rough gem. The imperfect first attempt of a company that's still finding its feet as a movie studio. For anyone familiar with this movie, which, yes, I have watched, the term rough gem is incredibly charitable. But the content of these reviews is almost irrelevant. To review them at all is to... Oh, it's almost irrelevant. To review them at all is to... Insert these uh, movies in front of an audience and track... Tracked by the mainstream, coverage for viewers... I mean, he sort of has a point there. Definitely um, pushing these things out. He has a point there. Why should he focus on them and not other smaller things more readily? Probably a matter of audience. Yeah, exactly. It was. And it was in the zeitgeist at the moment of, you know, because of the what he was talking about. Because the left wing ideals and the, the wokeism that's going into movies. What did the Daily Wire do? We'll make movies that are going exactly the opposite side of that yeah also it's a relevant thing if leftists are covered if a lot of people are covering it and you want to get into the algorithm of course you're going to make a review on it there's multiple different reasons to do it and if you just misframed it it thought it was irrelevant you're just doing it for the clicks you're just doing it for the likes and the and you know to get people to watch your videos well duh we're youtubers that's what we do this is part this is our literally our job (laughs) yeah when you're a loot youtuber who's trying to make money okay and it's fair enough to critique uh that small point but being dishonest about this 
and how he goes into this girl, she said something dumb. The internet made fun of her. And, you know, uh, the Daily Wire taking advantage of that to do a more traditional thing. Lazy, maybe, but smart. Okay. Yeah. And really, yeah. the different, and you know, what's her name? The girl, uh, what's her name that they're getting to do? Uh, Snow White, uh, Brett Cooper. Getting Brett Cooper to do that, it seems a, I don't, I don't know if that was a smart move, but hey, I'll wait until it comes out. Yeah, I would like I, to just I, see I, them. I would like to see both Rachel Zegler and Brett Cooper have a mud wrestling match to see who can be the best Snow White. Let's make this happen. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. I'm Let's gonna do talk, a GoFundMe. No, I'm not I'm gonna, GoFundMe. Exactly. No, I'm not. I'll, what was the thing called? Uh, the poll. Uh, Let's There's get a four chan poll going. <laughs> yeah, four, sure, four chan yeah. poll. I, I was yes. thinking uh, one of those uh, petition forms that they have on the internet. Oh, uh, that uh, mean absolutely nothing. Yes, yeah, so all, all, peti all petitions mean nothing. Uh, oh, yeah, what is that uh, one that? Oh God, wait, you know, uh, I know you're the one that you're talking about. Like, there's a specific one out there that everyone just like ignores. Yep. They're like, oh, sign this, this petition form to show there's so much blah, blah, blah. Yeah. If you're not going to put your money where your mouth is, go to hell. Okay. It's easy to sign a form, virtue signaling, small thing. Yeah. It goes on about this. I, oh, change I sort of has a. Oh, okay. Change dialogue. Yeah. Pointless. And he makes fun of trigonometry. Like that's such a horrible name. Yeah. Pretty much why would you uh, the make rest. Fun of tri why would you make fun of trigonometry? Because it triggers the sense. nibs. It's, but he's Kaiser, Kai, uh, uh, Constantine and uh, the other guy. They're not, they're not liberals or, or, or right wing conservatives. They're just like people who hate the fact people are lying all the time and dis misrepresenting shit. So they they love just breaking down exactly what you're saying. I'll ask you the obvious question that you know everyone would ask. So if you're going to be silly, how about I ask you why are you being silly? Fair and enough, also, fair it's it's weird having a Russian dude who was working for the Russian government who moved to the UK talking about this kind of stuff and now becoming so relevant. It, it's like uh, same with um, who's and same with like Lex Friedman. Where did he come from again? <laughs> Joe Rogan. Okay, I don't know why he's popular. He, he's he's like a because he's dumb, and people like okay. hearing dumb people work that shit through their mind and be able to talk to smart people and ask the dumb questions that you know you would probably ask these these people who are way smarter than you. What the he's fuck's always going come on? across as boring as all hell to me. Maybe some sense of um, unbiasedness because of how dumb he is and how boring he is. That's what yeah. I get from it. And he, he always a great interview. And he always admits I'm a dumb guy. I just hope that people will be able to explain the, all this stuff that this complicated shit that I would never have a clue on how to work it out in my own head. Maybe if I talk to some smart people, I might be able to get that 1% that I need in my head to be able to almost talk about it with other people. So I don't sound like a complete fucking knobhead. Cause I look like a thumb. He keeps saying, I, look at me. I look like a thumb. I'm five foot five and I look like a thumb. <laughs> yeah. He, he dives into that sort of, uh, shit and do, 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 uh, like, Oh, Dave Rubin. I agree. Love that meme. Freedom tunes. Hit or miss. Oh, okay. Fuck Dave Rubin. <laughs> He, sorry, Freedom Tombs is actually one of the better uh, conservative places. So is the Onion. Well, again, no, uh, uh, what's his name? Not uh, Onion. Uh, Seamus. Oh, Seamus. Yeah, Seamus is awesome. Yeah, Seamus is. Those are actually funny. Sometimes it's a little lame, but he he gets more hits than misses. And yeah, comedy. The, uh, oh, the Tim Pool Joe Rogan one where they had uh, uh, Jack and the uh, Vijaya from Twitter on that was a fantastic fantastic freedom tube you haven't mm. seen that I, I just can't remember it how old is it sheesh it was it, it was like four years ago oh, okay. oh yeah i forgot you that was when you were in high school i apologize no oh, okay yeah i'm a youngin i know <laughs> <laughs> okay not that young but close enough okay but now we're going to uh 
So that was interesting. I think that's the fairest uh, critique I've saw of Critical Drinker from a leftist, but they tend to automatically go to the racism card immediately. And yeah, the sexism, the sexism and a little bit of the racism <laughs> can be felt in that, but it's really uh, took caution to not directly call him sexist or racist. So at least smart in some regards, but he overplayed his hand by the end. Yeah, and I, can, I, I agree I with agree. everything you just said. You agree? I Don't be a Dave Rubin. Agree? Oh, I. Do you know what? I would. I want to be Dave Rubin just so I can go back in time and moderate Blair White versus Candace Owens. Oh God, that was, that was the greatest. That was the greatest. That was internet gold. <laughs> internet gold. <laughs> There, there's a lot of I, I think personally the sargon vosh thing would have been hilarious to moderate okay oh and yes that would be or bad, uh but. vosh vosh and uh uh what's his name uh the scottish dude the nazi pug guy uh oh count dankula yeah count dankula vosh was a versus vosh was amazing and it was like vosh's worst debate because uh count uh because dankula just memed him the whole time and was completely honest <laughs> he never got he never got angry at vosh he was just like no i like i like trans guys i love trans women because they got they give the best head and vosh is but like you... oh, oh god i can't say, what am i supposed to say against this but why would you want it to moderate that that's something that just was beautiful on its own yeah, on its the own yeah sargon would have been much better it would have interjected <laughs> a little bit more than the boys but no, really. Uh, if it really came down to it, I would want to moderate uh, Spoon versus uh, uh, Sitch on uh, on de democracy versus monarchism. Oh God, neither one really. <laughs> They're both cringe. I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm in. Of course, I I pick my side with the liberals. I'm just a libtard. So. And monarchy oh, is just way too much of a mean position for me. I understand the core of it, but it still comes off as a mean position. And we can't go back. Yeah, let's elect a king in America. What the fuck are you talking about? That's never going to fly, okay? Barely flies well, in Europe, okay? One of my favorite things that he says is, well, we've had, monarch we've had monarchisms for thousands of years. So obviously they worked. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> that's not that's yeah. not that is not how to make an argument. I loved Hydra actually made a, a very a very concise argument against him. Going, okay, so just because it worked in the past, you think that just automatically gives it a pass to working right now? It's like, yeah, well, it does, it does. So pff, you're just too low, low IQ to handle it. It's like, yeah, yeah. No, I think, the AI, <laughs> I think the AI overlord is a, a much better thing, which would actually be scary to me. Okay, but Skynet? I think it would fly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yay, Skynet. No, Hooray. it's not yay, the Skynet. Uh, yeah, I really would have actually liked to see this hello future me thing, but all we can get is this response. So. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. I don't know this. I don't know this one guy. Random film talk is Cinema Sin run by Matt Wash. I haven't pre-watched this. I am doing this one blind because. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Did you pre-watch this one or no? Yes, I did. Okay. So. I, oh, I'm you'll, you'll like, like it. Video. I can't wait. To see, I can't wait to hear you. Oh, I, I watched a little bit of it in the beginning. And I really hate this beginning bit. Be because I always hate this begin bit because it's ironic. Okay, well, I'll, I'll explain it when it comes Channel with over a million subs. In the latter half of his video titled Rings of Power is a Disappointment and Here's Why, he calls out multiple channels that he deems to be, quote, woke bros, and claims that all of them are political activists posing what as media groups. Here, the channels he calls out are The Critical Drinker, Night's Watch slash Shadowversity, Nerdrotic, The Quartering, Despot of Antrim, Little Platoon, Just Some Guy, George the Giant Slayer, Heel vs. Babyface, oh, Disprove the Woke Critic, and me. Hello Future Me evidently did not do his research regarding my channel in particular, and because he did not do his research, he has undermined the point he was trying to make. You didn't do your research. <laughs> I how hate he people leading up with this. He didn't this say whole Mahler. beginning is cringe. <laughs> he didn't yeah, say well, Mahler. <laughs> yeah, well, Mahler, Mahler has it. You don't want to come on British Runner, do you? This does not seem like your cup of tea, man. 
you don't want a Brit in here, you know, proto-Americans. Uh, maybe I'll send him a link just in case he wants this cringe. Just in case. You know what? I like British people are, I think, are better than Americans in like 99.999% of situations where we're not interacting in real life. Fair enough. Fair enough. I would rather yeah, hang out with it. Americans in real life, though, than Brits. Because, you know, Americans actually are cool and they, you know, make make women want to hang around you. Brits, not and so some much. Americans. <laughs> Brits, some Americans. Brits, not so much. <laughs> Don't know. You know, that's just a stereotype. You're being racist against uh, the physical characteristics, I think. In oh, yes. Yes. I'm very, I'm, I'm very this racist. This means that what has happened, in a nutshell, is that Fair a channel enough. with 1.1 million subs has blatantly misrepresented what my channel is, who I am, and what I think. In spite of this, I am not angry, because the reaction to this appears to be largely on my side. Looking through his comments, I did not find a single one saying, oh yeah, random film talk, fuck that guy, whereas I did find multiple comments calling out Hello Future Me for including me in his video. So anyway, here is my response slash reaction to this segment of Hello Future Me's video. Last thing to mention, the relevant section of his video is very long, and in a lot of instances I simply don't care about what he says, nor do I have anything to add. So in those instances I have cut out what he says, so if you want to see his full video, then it is currently live on his channel. It is hard not to talk. But it's not. I would rather have actually seen it. But uh, Lord of the Ra Rings of Power, I could not make it through. That's why I didn't want to do the review. I was going to try to make it through because I was going to do a, something with a friend. But no, I couldn't do it. I, I had some hope. It was very cringy. The third episode, I'm like, out. Fuck this. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. The, the first episode when she jumped in the water, I was like, okay, this is stupid, but I, I can handle it. But then her swimming across like 3,000 kilometers. Hey, I, I'll send I, I had to watch the rest. Also. I, had to, I had to watch the rest because it was so crazy. <laughs> I had to. If it was going to be okay. that stupid, bring it on. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, I'm sending BMO the invite. Yeah, I know he can handle him. I, I, I know he can handle himself on the stream. Let's see if he wants to engage in this. Yay, okay. I get to talk with BMO some more. Yay, hooray. I like it talking with BMO. Pops up. Yeah, uh, talk over this cringe. Probably make fun of me for this particular take. Jump in at shadows. It's a power without discussing the political storm raging around it. One which has defined the show perhaps more than anything actually in it and places it firmly in the center of something far more important. A lot of the anger directed at Rings of Power here is not rooted in the same love for Tolkien you and I share. Okay, so straight up, he's assuming intent. He's assuming that the various people that he's going to list, which uh, he will get to momentarily, um, he's assuming that they do not care about Tolkien in the same way that he does, um, which I guess means that Hello Future Me is capable of mind reading, because... No, but he's probably actually correct here, okay? Oh, the heart... The, the cart before the horse, okay? He's probably right here, okay? Probably not right in the way he's going to explain it, because he is hyping it up like... Because he's more of a book channel, okay? So yeah, and he's a huge he's sort of he's I, a huge Tolkien nerd. Like I've watched lots of his videos on on like old school Tolkien knowledge and breaking down of like random stuff from Lord of the Rings books. Okay, yeah. Hello, future me. Uh, he, he, this is sort of ironic that he's saying he's setting this up. No, he's just stating probably something that's true. <sighs> A large part of the problem that Hello Future Me seems to have with the various people that he will list soon uh, is that he believes that they are political activists who are pretending to be, I guess, honest movie reviewers, or in this case, TV show reviewers, that they care more about uh, spreading a particular political agenda than they do about honestly critiquing a particular TV show or movie. And basically what Hello Future Me is doing here is he's poisoning the well immediately by essentially telling his viewers up front that all of these various channels don't care about Tolkien, or they don't care about the Peter Jackson films, um, or that they went into like this is insane. He's poisoning the well in this reading. I just yeah. find this ironic. Okay, and that and it's right at the very beginning. He poisons the well. Yeah, it's it's so it's so silly. It's uh, but I, I'm I'm pretty sure he's he's not trying to t convince anybody that that he's he's doing a bad review. He's just telling all of his friends that hey, I got your back. Okay, maybe virtue signaling. So he said. It happens on the right is just as much as the left. Like everyone who came out against Az. I'm like, why do you need to defend him? This makes him look like he needs defense. He didn't need defense. It's just bad optics when everyone came to Az's defense. People clowned on him. Fucking hell. It's just, and 
him starting off with the freaking uh poison the well thing. You're literally poisoning the well. You're reading way too much intent into Hello Future Me. But Hello Future Me took it down. Okay, so they win by default according to Little Platoon. So yay them. Little Platoon, no, everyone. No, far, far. I'm not gonna talk to you about Little Platoon. Just give me a sec. I'll, I I gotta I gotta go wash my hands. <laughs> hmm? Not gonna talk about Little Platoon. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll Rings of power, uh, I guess, knowing that it's going to be bad. ...in a deceptive trend in media criticism we've seen on the rise over the last decade, especially on YouTube. He's also used the word deceptive, which again, immediately, we're poisoning the well. We're going into this in uh, what I think... Really? Can be Doubling reasonably... up? I'm going to have to get the transcript for this. Fucking hell. Transcript time. I'm just not sure where to go. Uh, gonna have to back because this. a large part of the problem that Hello Future Me seems to have with the various people that he will list soon uh, is that he believes that they are political activists who are pretending <laughs> to be, I guess, honest movie reviewers, or in this case, TV show reviewers, that they care more about uh, spreading a particular political agenda than they do about honestly critiquing a particular TV show or movie. And basically what Hello Future Me is doing here is he's poisoning the well immediately by essentially telling his viewers up front that all of these various channels don't care about Tolkien, or they don't care about the Peter Jackson films, um, or that they went into Rings of Power, uh, I guess, knowing that it's going to be bad. ...in a deceptive trend in media criticism we've seen on the rise over the last decade, especially on YouTube. He's all Okay, he did say deceptive trend and media criticism. Okay. Jumping on that particular point. Okay, hear out why he thinks it's deceptive before you point it out. Maybe you would agree. Again, also use the word deceptive, which again, immediately we're poisoning the well. We're going into this in uh, what I think can be reasonably described as bad faith. He has decided what all of these channels oh, think. He considers them to be a hive mind that all have the same opinion. And the reason why I find this particularly funny is because this may be. You know, I'm finding this particularly funny. He's fucking doubling down. Yes, you can give a particular reading of this in this way, but you're just crippling up with. Oh, God. Sorry. Some words just trigger me. Okay, I'll admit to it. People bad you, faith. You triggered me by bringing up Little Platoon, so I decided to go get a non-alcoholic beer just because you said Little Platoon. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to trigger you. Okay, he's the only. Sorry. He's the only one in the EFAP like that, that grouping that just like I I I have too many things to talk about about him, and I'm not going to go into it. Okay, fair enough. I have to ask. You said Eve happened. You like Fringy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Fringy and uh, Rags and and Mahler. Are... I used to BS with Rags and Fr and Fringy one play while we played uh, uh, what's it called Halo on multiplayer all the time. Okay, you have a personal attachment. Oh uh, yeah. Like, I, what, I, what six I'm years also, now? Oh, I, I'm probably just a bit biased against a, a lot of people. When I probably shouldn't be okay. I just don't like bringing. Hey, I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> he's sort of dressing down. I mean, I, I think he just got dressed down over uh, his like of Bowman. G what, Bojack what Horseman. Series? Bojack yeah, Horseman. That, that 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 sort of a struggle session that uh, Mahler made him go through. I found it funny. It was just really weird to me. Like, I oh, it was you funny like too. this? <laughs> It was funny, but a little bit like a struggle session, a comical struggle session. It, well, okay. Now let's, uh, Fringy, at, be, even though he's done that and they're all friends and they went through that whole situation, they're still friends and they, you know, we, we move on. JX yeah. all went through that same thing with Rags and Mahler and now Jay never talks to them again. <laughs> never talks to them. Well, on, JX, well, definitely he's on also, he's, JX, yeah, I know he's... Jay's gone down the rabbit hole. The, the struggle, not struggle session, the trans. So probably very emotional. Like, no matter how you feel about the trans issues, it definitely fucks with people's uh, mental states, okay? I think it was the okay. mental state is, you know, the, the main issue in the first place. But anyways, what? okay, where are we at? Three minutes and 29 seconds. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get too far. I just pointed out the fact that he, I wanted to check to see if, uh, uh, hello, future me said deceptive trend. Okay, I'm like, let me double check that. I missed that. Okay. 
He did say deceptive, but how's it? Just how's the trend deceptive? He jumped on it and said poison the well, buzzword, buzzword, bad faith. Don't like it so far. He true, and I think it probably is true for definitely some of the channels that he has listed. It's definitely not true for all of them, and it is definitely not true of me. And if he had watched any part of any of my videos apart from the clip that he shows later, then he would know this. Empty because these channels are a Trojan horse. They project this false image of authenticity of critics just concerned with quote bad writing, when their real concern is pushing how feminism and wokeness is supposedly ruining movies and television and even society these days. Supposedly, because it's not even necessarily in the media they talk about. They just see it everywhere. There, I think Hello Future Me actually is making a reasonably fair point. Um, however, I do think that he is definitely also guilty of this, which I'll explain in a minute. Okay, yeah, sure. He admitted it, but yeah, he's probably guilty of it also by including this, okay? Oh, God. It's a catch-22. You pointed out and you're... No, oh, I got I got a phone call. Just a second. Oh, that's your phone. That's like my alarm. I think that's one of my alarms. Okay. So he views the these channels that he has termed the woke bros, which for some reason includes me. Um, he has decided that these channels see uh, what they want to see. They they see things like feminism, and uh, he goes on to say make specific reference to LGBT um, activism or or advocating that that ideology these people will be unable to enjoy something purely on the basis that it contains pro-feminist pro-lgbt themes i guess um and like one example of um where i think to use the example of drinker where drinker was caught out on this was in his coverage of i believe it was the trailer for the dungeons and dragons movie um and i believe he had a very uh, negative response to the trailer and i can understand what what's with this going on and on and on he's like a few seconds into this video and he's going on and on and on about it okay I, he's trying to give context i understand that particular thing but jeez this is just terribly ironic you, you make sure you get to the particular point before you address it okay that seems like a good fair way to do it not preempt everything god sorry this hurts my head preempt in everything every possible point so when it comes up man, let's see how you dress. him having a negative response to the trailer because it's not a good trailer it almost misrepresents what the film is but in that in that instance because he he essentially changed his mind and he was like well okay now i've seen the film and the film's actually pretty good um but that wasn't him making this up that wasn't him deciding that oh this film's gonna be full of the feminism and the blah 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 and it's gonna have the strong women and it's gonna have the weak man who does what she says okay has he there's no examples get to... Sorry, I'm probably going to jump over some freaking stuff because he's just... Okay, his content... Societal issues such as feminism, wokery, girl bossing, and all that sort of thing, which there are moments in my videos, like of, um, out of, again, like essentially 14 hours of content, where I will make mention of that kind of thing. But every time I make mention of it, which he would know if he had watched my videos, it is exclusively relating to the... He's stupid. He he didn't do his research. Try again, bro. The woke bros. More like anti-woke bros. Context in which it appears. So I have a, I believe it's at the beginning of episode five of Rings of Power, where they essentially girl boss Bronwyn. Um, and she becomes the strong independent leader who everyone listens to because she's the main character. And um, you can complain about that from a societal perspective if you want, if you, if you think that that is problematic for society to see that sort of thing. I don't believe that. Okay, Wild Bemo has entered the chat. Why is there any hey. fapper on my screen? I don't know. I don't know. But also, yeah, I, I I hate that he's not trying to do a cronk voice. Uh, sorry about that. Also, it hello, really, Lucifer. Also, sorry about that. It's fine. It's fine. I was just uh, whining that he's go. He, He's, he's just watched a few seconds of this section of the video and going on and on and on, like get to the examples before you... Sorry, what? here, Jay Steve. Um, have you seen how long this video is? Have you ever, no. have you watched any of his videos before? <laughs> no, no, talk. no. They're all <laughs> long. They're all Mauler length, but not as, you know, poignant and uh, never gets to the point. Oh God! I've only ever style. seen him on EFAP, and he was the one that I was least interested in listening to. Yes, and do you <laughs> know what? He's he's okay when uh, when he's reacting to other people that he agrees with, but I 
his videos uh, uh, sometimes i'll uh you know in the middle of the night it'll just like auto play one of his videos and i'll get like 10 minutes in and i'm like why, why am i watching this guy his voice is annoying he he just comes off as as smug and when uh he gets annoyed at somebody like what he's doing right now you'll hear that that tremble in his voice where he's just like he, it he's sounds pissed. like he's angry he sounds like he's very angry and he's you know when angry people are just like trying to grab stuff from their brain and just throw it at you they're not trying to have a good time they're just yeah. like what I'm just, you could I say they're see. trying to poison the well yes <laughs> see oh, Peter, there are some people out there who are really good at it like disparu disparu is really good because he's very he's very well spoken and he's witty he's quick witty and he's funny but and he never gets angry at stuff. He he always just takes it as a joke, and that's you kind of got to do that, or or you get poisoned by this shit. Yeah, gotta have a thick. You gotta have a internet. certain amount of gotta have a certain amount of resilience to do this sort of content and uh, dwelling on little stuff and going on and on about the littlest amount. Yeah, nobody it, wants to that... nobody wants to talk to people like this. Like if you have a coworker. Who complains about little things all the time? Do you ever want to hang out with them or actually interact with them in Hell any no. way? No, you 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 go out of your way to avoid these people. Yeah, I'm at these. Mm, I, I probably made a bad pick with this. Why am I? I but half the point of some of these reaction streams is to watch me cringe at some of the stuff. I love to watch you cringe, Vincent. Me too. That's why. Yeah. I, that's why I came on so I could listen to it and be, and be part of the cringe. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, at that, least I'm uh, not false advertising myself. <laughs> but... <laughs> I just realized he's wearing a Timo hat from like what the, uh, huh? Lord, from League of Legends. What? What? Uh, oh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, totally I Teemo. think I. Yeah, I think it is that not originally on the character. His this is his OC. Original, put a Timo hat on and lipstick. It's not the original Crunk, I don't think. I no, saw someone. No, definitely not the original Crunk. I have uh, no idea who you guys are talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, League what of is Legends that? Is has that... a little little character called Timo who wears that same yeah. hat. They're like a little furry character, and they're most known for being the most annoying thing to fight against. Yes, because they drop bombs everywhere, and you can't see them until they explode. Yeah. Oh God. It is a I, I play I, I never mained. Who did I main by when I was playing? Let's not get off. Okay. <laughs> I I always want to get off. My point was that it was Let's executed go. unbelievably of poorly <laughs> and that it was not set up. It was not set up enough as to be believable at all. Let me just mute him. Okay, you're right. This voice. Peter Jackson told told Yeah, I know Hello worse. Future Me is a big good guy i i i muted it whereas bronwyn is a complete <laughs> joke and there's another part in uh, my final autopsy where i very briefly touch on the diversity sounds very defensive ethnicity and skin color uh -huh. in relation to um, the various factions in middle earth and my problem with it isn't as i don't know if hello future me would actually uh, apply this caricature to the various people that he's going to list soon it isn't oh i don't like to see black people in in movies or anytime there's a there's a strong black character it's because it's been artificially inserted because of the message or whatever the problem that i had with that is that it fundamentally makes the setting less believable and as he would know if he had watched my videos um i actually suggested why oh, oh why have just it why didn't you watch the 600 actually, hours of videos that I've made and, and be able yeah. to understand what's going on with my, my you know, my entire YouTube brand? It's like Ugh, expecting such everyone... Such a fake to, fan. Exactly. It's like expecting Rando off the street to know the all the lore around EFAP and, and who, uh, who the Dawn is and who Jeb is. He pushes down uh, his glasses like, do you know who I am? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm associated with Mahler. Have you tried to wow. have you tried to smile a bit? Have you tried to smile more? <laughs> oh god. Bam. While he's on Actually, his way to uh while he's on his way to the kids' hospital to read stories to dying children. <laughs> oh god, bringing the up the dog memes. The deep lore. That was actually one meme I could get into. Okay, oh, I didn't get yeah. some of the memes of EFAP, but that one was a good one. The Don one. so good. <laughs> I'm not even a fan I, of EFAP. I'm just here for the lols. 
Okay, uh, the, let's not the, get let's not take BMO too much with the e oh, Take uh, me on memes. the roller coaster. Take me on the, the high rags well, one. Uh, okay, high rags will always be funny. I'm all I'm gonna say. Uh, high rags will always be funny. Uh, it's a little lame, but I understand it. Okay, what we're <laughs> talking about is uh, during Captain Marvel. When did you watch Captain Marvel? BMO? <laughs> yeah, I saw both of them. Okay, you know the one chick who uh, told uh, Captain Marvel to smile? No, the guy uh, on the motorcycle. The guy that said smile more and then she beat the shit out of him? And stole yeah. his motorcycle and his jacket? Yeah, yeah. and his jacket. Yeah. Yeah. EFAP uh, created a whole narrative about the Don, so he became a meme. They like created a whole I backstory for I him. I making him EFAP episode. Yeah, where his, oh, okay. his wife had died like months before. And his daughter was, you know, they were getting estranged because he was like starting to drink. And then he start, you know, his daughter says, I'm going to leave you unless you quit drinking and try to get your life together. So he started going to meetings and he started volunteering at the children's hospital. And his, <laughs> his daughter says, you know, dad, mom's gone. And I think it might be time for you to find a new girlfriend because you're such a good guy. And so. He goes out, he's like, he buys a motorcycle with the money from the insurance company. And he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to better myself and I'm, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he sees this, um, this gorgeous blonde who's just standing yeah. there and he, and he thinks to himself, okay, my daughter told me I need to put myself out there and I really need to show off like, okay, I know I'm not smart. Okay. I'm, I'm bad with women, but I, I just got to try. I just got to try. And and that's the, the scene happens. It's like, what the hell? And he stole, oh and then she, she stole my motorcycle. And then he's got to go. To, he's got a broken hand and a broken wrist. And he's going to the kids' hospital. He's he like, loses his job. Yeah, he lost. He lost his job. <laughs> and he started. He started drinking again. And then his daughter yeah. started. His daughter just turned eighteen, so she got an OnlyFans. Uh, oh. Started an OnlyFans account, so she could actually pay her own rent, so she didn't have to hang around her abusive drunk Whoa. dad is Dead like so, dad. Yeah. it's like the aristocrat jokes for that character okay you just <laughs> yeah. it just keeps evolving and evolving it's one of those Vincent, things and you said one this of, was lame huh no i said lame? it's one of the better ones no <laughs> yeah. i said oh, that well, that was mean, is one of the really better good. ones okay i that i don't get great. them all but I'm not a super fan like some people about you like so but yeah people. this particular uh this particular thing here, I might actually agree with this one. And my problem oh, with it isn't funny. as I don't know if Hello Future Me would actually uh, apply this caricature to the. Very but he should fucking get to the point. It does irritate <laughs> me. He's going, oh, future. Me. Who cares? Okay, point point it out to the audience. There's people that he's going to list soon. It isn't. Oh, I don't like to see black people in in movies. Or anytime there's a there's a strong black character, it's because it's been artificially inserted because of the message or whatever. The problem that I had with that is that it fundamentally makes the setting less believable. And as he would know if he had watched my videos, um, why I actually suggested why, why not make all the of the half of black? Like you could absolutely do that. That would be more believable than what we end up. Oh getting. no, he doesn't have it. He doesn't mm. have it. Okay, mine is the one black elf. Okay, that always fucked with me. Okay, the one yes. black elf. The one. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. Why the half elves? I mean, it didn't bother me that they, they were multi uh, multicultural. That didn't actually do it. It would have been fine if they were all black, but that actually fit. It was the one black elf in the middle of a whole bunch of white elves with long, luxurious hair. Okay, I'm like, yeah. Why not just have a few more in explain that they're from a different tribe? Okay, that would have made it more. That believable. would be a better explanation. Instead, yeah. oh, it turned okay. into what if we made this like real life and just made it a racist joke. Well, that's, and that's uh, what they did with that town that uh, mm -hmm. the Black Elf was watching. It was in the middle of nowhere in the Southlands, and it was the most diverse town ever. But there was only maybe about 14 people there. But everybody was a different race or skin color. Every single person. Like, there was no homogeneity at all. Over a thousand years that town has been there, being watched over by the elves since Morgoth died. But... Mm -hmm. It's everybody's completely different. It's like somewhere in like South Bronx where you go outside and it's you got a hipster over here with a huge mustache and then you got an Iranian girl and then you've got the Siberian guy and then you've got the child who's the Iranian girl's daughter, but he's actually South American. He's his he's actually Chilean, a Chilean dude. Like, what, what are you doing? I think I know what? why, actually. I think I know why it was so diverse. The only way that we can explain this away is that the elves were having fun messing with the humans. 
She's like, the mm. kid gets born. Okay, we're going to replace him with another baby. <laughs> oh, That's like more of a trope of a different... I like your thinking. You're, you're making the elves into some sort of malicious figure. I like it. No, it's I like not it. malicious. They are. It's just funny. Yeah. Trickster, <laughs> tricksters, tricksters, okay? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I sometimes use the wrong wording, okay? Tricksters, you know, like goblins uh, steal my baby. <laughs> Ooh. Well, so babies are a... ba babies are delicious. Okay, just about moving on. <laughs> and moving my theory on. as to why the producers of Rings of Power did not do that is because they knew that going into season two, they're going to be ditching all of the Harfords because of because of how season one ends with Nori and not Gandalf going off and doing their own adventure. So that would mean that they don't have any black people that not they can include in off. season two. So they decided, well, we can't do that. Like that's not an option. What? So we're going to just make every single faction, regardless of their. What does this um, have to do with his? Of what he's species, saying? Because you've obviously he... got elves and dwarves as well as humans. Um, regardless of their uh, wealth, regardless of how long they have existed, regardless of their geographical location, okay. they are all going to have the same why, levels of multiculturalism. Why do I do this to myself? Which, no, he, again, if you he want to make an argument he against that, he doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't no, go anywhere. This. No, I've seen this, and he doesn't go anywhere. It is, it is <laughs> just a. He's just doing a struggle session over getting critiqued by, by this. I just see it. It's, it's silly. It's 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 kind of it's kind of sad. Yeah, he's not addressing what he's saying. He's just offended that uh, he would be included in all these anti woke peoples and trying to run mental gymnastics to say, no, I'm not really part of the anti woke movement. I might occasionally talk about feminism. Uh, hi, Bimo. <laughs> That's my. I have a cat. Barbie uh, video cued from this guy. Yay! The Barbie video! <laughs> Hooray! Okay. okay. Wait, what? What did I miss? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Makes Middle Earth less believable. I don't think I even in, need to example, play it. Peter Jackson movies. Yeah, they talk about. They just see it everywhere. Phantom Feminism, whose channels together have millions of subscribers and pull in millions of views every week as some of the most dominant review channels on YouTube. People like... So uh, this is where he names names. So we got Critical Drinker with one, uh, essentially two million subs. Yes, I can read. <laughs> so you got to remember <laughs> some <laughs> people listen to this okay good, good point especially when you talk this long who, who wants mm -hmm. to watch the visuals why put any effort into visuals okay he like he is. no he's not he's just putting his skill <laughs> on and overlaying so i can't believe i can't believe he put just some really guy up there about I know, right? Yeah, why uh, bother? Okay. Yeah, also, some guy got in trouble because he's too woke or something. Yeah, no, he is. He's an idiot. <laughs> yes, well, he is an idiot. Yes, he is. Uh, not him, my biggest fan. Him and Spoon got into it, and the videos of Spoon just tearing him apart and showing how dumb he was in his in his like critiques. He, his, those are his biggest viewed videos. He's got uh, ninety thousand views. Don't make me take Spoon's side. Come on. You know you love you know you love to well, hate him. <laughs> well, long as Spoon is going after someone that I probably would disagree with, and I think just some guy is a rather odd. I've seen some of the dramas he's gotten in. When and just some he, guy isn't talking about Dune or uh Lord or of Lord of the Rings or or um like uh Expanse or you know book series stuff, he's he's kind of a he's he's kind of a tard. He's kind of tarted, but yep. he's really good when it comes to talking about Lord of the Rings. He's really good. I can't believe, like, buddy, um, I can't believe they're not, like, best friends. Something tells me that they'd be, like, talking all the time. Oh, hello, future me and just some yeah, guy? Yeah, hello, hello, okay. future me, yeah. Yeah, he definitely didn't do research. He's just going off of numbers. He, like, Night's Watch makes sense. Okay, Shad. I'm sure BMO could even... Uh, He's definitely a uh, debate. He's unapologetically uh, super conservative culture war now. Yeah, correct. Y yeah. It, and you wonder why he's got shadow banned by YouTube. I know, yeah. right? I mean, I, I don't think it's right, but... I've been watching uh, his videos for a long time. I don't watch Night's Watch, though, because they just say the same stuff that he says on Neurotic. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the woke critic. I didn't know about that guy. He's interesting, okay. Definitely a parody of woke people. Yay, Disbrew! Yeah, Disbrew. Where's the giant slayer? Do you like yourself some Disbrew and my oh, okay. nemesis, heels first baby face. Oh, oh your nemesis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hyping it up, okay. If he's my your nemesis. Ne if he's your okay, no. uh what what's that old line? 
you can tell the quality of someone by the quality of their enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I fought a lot with Kratosis. That says a, not a lot of good things about me. Oh, oh, Kratosis. Okay, that would be more my nemesis. No one knows about him, and that, that would be more my nemesis if we went into the deep lore. I know about him because I follow you on Twitter. It is a, yeah. a marvel to see who hates you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I agree with that one. Oh, yeah, fair enough. I'm I'm glad I can entertain certain people. Try to fight with some Bosch fans, some Dark Viper fans. They they tend to be boring. I wish more people hated me on Twitter. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I can give you tips and tricks for getting hated. Actually, oh, please. Oh, trust me. I know how to troll people. I'm a pro. But for some I don't reason... even troll people, okay? <laughs> I'm just uh, halfway jokingly... I, I, I take a certain stance of uh, I try to be ser a little bit serious, a little bit comical on Twitter, and it comes across badly, and people just, like, freak out on me. I think it's the people I try to communicate with. I don't even know. Oh, you got, the, you got the lofty problem. Okay, never mind. Okay. I I'm not going to go down that direction, but you, you do you. <laughs> well... I'm not as bad as Lofty. I can back up most of my stuff without... Uh, Lofty, uh, Lofty can back up his shit. Sometimes, sometimes. He falters <laughs> at a certain point, okay? I don't falter. I, 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 don't, I don't let it up. You don't falter? <laughs> of course That's you probably don't. Good <laughs> You're sharp as a tech. Uh, okay. Let's not get into too much of that. <laughs> Meta stuff. Love you, Vincent. I love you, Vincent. Clip from I don't know if it's more annoying to hear the audio or not. I, I think I, <laughs> I don't know. Let's test it out. It's going after Critical Drinker with two million subs. God, is this more annoying? To his when voice. I put the video out, I had like two thousand. These channels or target this. vulnerable men with a political narrative. Not only that things uh. like Rings of Power are pushing a feminist and LGBT agenda, but this is why it's bad. So that is a conflict. Oh, okay. that i think may be accurate for some of these channels we'll oh god something i could actually argue against and he's agreeing with it <laughs> that is just hilarious they're not targeting people they're just their audience who agrees with them they align politically okay they don't the whole uh parasocial sort of network between people is very complex and a lot of people just simplify it to an insane degree they're not targeting these people. These people are attracted to them, and they think like these younger people. It, would you say they target any of these people? Target these people as villain of the week. Yeah, it's, it's just I think what's it, in the zeitgeist at that. Exactly. Week. What's what's the algorithm like going to promote like the most right now? Well, and how, how am I going to get the most cynical. views? Well, it's, it's, if it works, if we can talk about it and have a good time and everybody's already talking about it, then it, it just works out in you to fill up your pocket at the same time. If you build Pretty it, much. they will come. Yeah. Okay. People yeah. love to and hear maybe... the same opinions coming out of someone else's mouth. So Exactly. Okay. I don't think it, they target. Maybe the algorithm cites it out. But this is like the whole freaking uh, alt-right pipeline bullshit that really seems rather flimsy in my opinion do you know okay. what uh, franco was on that yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> yes that was so hilarious when they put his picture up on the outline pipeline oh that was so beautiful philip defranco of all people <laughs> oh god next thing he you know he got a little bit too lefty for me okay oh, he, a little i liked him for a while I, I did Wait. too. I was a fan uh, before he went like the weird corporate direction he's at now. Yeah, yeah. Watched him for yeah. years. Oh yeah, he was uh, my when, news source. When uh, uh, what's it called something fed news fed no uh, source fed when yep. he had source fed and his show I used to watch them all the time and then when source fed got bought by now this and Phil just went off on his own just to and and like separated from everyone. That's I couldn't I couldn't watch him after that for some yeah, but reason. we should have all predicted anyone who watched him should have predicted he would eventually go with the trend. He picked that a horrible the, time. 
That was when I finally Actually, realized that just because someone says that they're a moderate or middle of the road does not mean that they're middle of the road. Yeah, well, he crept slowly. I started to notice it slowly. I'm like, oh, this is a weird stance here. This guy's shitty. New. No. Sort of like H3H3 throwing Jordan Peterson under the bus. Way mm -hmm. too early. Should have waited until his more recent push, which is actually understandable. I, I, I probably am too generous to Jordan Peterson uh, more than I should. We'll see who can who cancels who. It Up creates yours. some great memes, so I <laughs> yes. love that one. Up yours, wokes, moral woke skulls. I've actually used that before. But you, it's like Alex Jones sometimes, okay? You don't have hey, to take some people seriously. Come okay? on, Alex you is can... entertaining. Alex is super oh, entertaining. Very entertaining. Yeah, people should lean more into Alex's direction. He's considered like the worst person in the world. But I'm like, really? If no one takes him seriously, look at it's the Joe Rogan clip. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of retarded. I'm kind of I'm kind of retarded. It's, uh, thank uh, you. Who is it? I compare uh, Alex Jones with Rachel Maddow, but everyone <laughs> thinks that everything coming out of Rachel Maddow's mouth is completely true. And and, and really, down by the book, the people who watch MSNBC do. Mm -hmm. Okay, but and they yeah, don't, there are. But she's not entertaining. Who, yeah, good point. Well, she's there are some people who Carlson actually believe though, Alex yeah, Jones is bullshit. Okay, yeah. I think those people are stupid and functionally retarded themselves. So who cares if they believe? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But I used okay. to watch Rachel Maddow all the time back okay. in two, back in 2015 and before. I don't know what happened mm. around 2015, 2016. Something happened. Mm. Mm. Then I, I started she got a haircut. That's what. It was. Yeah, it was probably that. It was probably that. So I don't yeah. know what happened. And also, I used to watch TYT all the time. Yeah. And then right and around 2015, for some reason, something happened. I don't know what happened, but then I couldn't. Mm. I couldn't even tolerate watching them anymore. I was actually a TYT member back oh, wow. in those days. Yeah. For, maybe maybe someone like, sent uh, the magical black Negro uh, society back in time, and it sort of brainwashed all these people. I think. I, I think that's a good probably. theory. Pro yeah. Probably. That's going to be my working theory. It has nothing to do with presidential elections or anything like that. That does. Okay. That's just a crazy <laughs> conspiracy theory. Okay. To quote Vincent, "Time traveling black people changed changed our history." Okay. Okay. Clip it, CT. Black, yeah, black, exactly what, black, what exactly black man magic. Him, but it's definitely <laughs> yeah. not accurate with all of them. That's and so the opinion magic. that I would give with regard to, let's just say, Critical Drinker, because he's the first example that he goes into, Drinker obviously has his opinions on society and um, that, uh, I guess, this kind of emasculation of men and girl bossing of women is bad in a societal sense. It is. It does not lead to a healthy society. Um, I think that that is a totally separate argument as to whether or not the uh, TV show, in this case Rings of Power, is actually good. Um, you can absolutely have something that depicts characters in that way. Okay, let's see how long he Not drones on for. Not if it's for. Lord of the Rings. Oh. Yeah, they, if they would have kept it away from the Lord of the Rings IP and made it some different show, it probably would have worked out fine. But why yeah. take one of the most beloved properties of all time? Like, can you name something that's more well known all over the world other than the Bible? Then the Bearstein Bears. Then the Bearstein Bears. Then the the then Tolkien's books. Like it's got it's been uh, all the books have been like translated into something like 80 languages. Yep. Yeah. This is why mm -hmm. they were able to get away with the bastardizing uh wheel of time. A little bit more niche. It's got a good fandom. It actually has a little bit of a progressive fandom, if I know uh my uh, wheel of time thing. It's not very conservative lord of the depends rings depends on who you ask it's got a it's got a more mixed audience than freaking lord of the rings okay for that sure was, for sure i'm a what's very the lore of lord of, fan, of the rings so. they want lord of the rings the conceptually was a mythos for your Europe, european countries okay yes, specifically taking England. that and diversifying it is definitely a giant f you sort of like the magic car oh shit magic uh turning one of the characters black I'm like, this this is just like a spit in the face. Then when people started doing a turn that used the more lore accurate representation, all the leftists were freaking out about it. Like, ah, like they're just using the books to 
changed the character back to how he would have looked according to how token. So yeah. they all freaked out about that. I still want to see a uh, white black Panther. I want to see uh, <laughs> Chris, P Chris Pratt playing black Panther. No, no, you couldn't get away with that. You have to use. What do you uh, mean? It's Ryan uh, Gosling. You can get away with it. Is Ryan Gosling? Ryan Gosling. Get away with it. Okay, you can get away with it. Or need why, not right Timothy, why not Timothy Chalamet? He's super popular right now. Okay. Long, too long <laughs> Sorry, Chris yeah. Pratt gets unnecessary hate for being a Christian, but a lot of people do. He's Doesn't based. make sense to me. Based. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a total atheist, and I love the fact that people hate on him for being Christian for, like, no reason other than his religion. I looked at and, his church. It's a really progressive church, too. Yeah, it yeah, is, too. Like, <laughs> it's so yeah, hilarious. No one ever consider that. But also, the people that hate on him for his Christian values would fall on a grenade to save a Muslim person from being discriminated against. So... Eh, not all of them. Let's let's not do broad strokes here, okay? I love Just broad strokes. I'm a, a painter. Lot of That's them. what I do. A lot of <laughs> all them. Of them. Okay, yeah. All of them. I'm going to pull them off. Okay. All of them. <laughs> disavow. Disavow. I disavow. Yeah, you're disavow. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, we finally get to uh, the perspective if it was good. So it would be better for the audience because they get to watch something that's good, and it would be better for the people making it because they get to um, spread their propagandistic <sighs> message, if you want to call it that. Um, in a more effective and entertaining way. This anti-LGBT, anti-feminist Trojan horse can be difficult to spot because they'll often target stories which are truly mediocre already, like with Rings of Power. It's underwhelming. Wrong. A Tolkien fan or not, and people go wrong. How's it wrong? How's it wrong? They target uh, stories so that, that are over. There's a spread. Even they'll go for really good stuff. All right. There are people even saying that the new Fallout show is woke and weird. Like it's. It, I've heard really good things about the new Fallout show. I haven't seen it myself yet. I like the first yeah. episode. That's the third. I'm going to have to watch it for a Thursday night stream. It's also well, on like, brand for me. These days, Sadly it's very enough. hard for the course. Anytime a new show comes out, there is an assumption that it is filled with the wrong politics. And then if it ends yeah. up being good, they'll shut up eventually. They like They'll realize, oh, it's not going to work. Yeah. Barbie was a really good example of this, actually. But they yep, haven't shut up true. about it. They still go on about Barbie, though, being a woke, okay? Who's, but then who's it's going like, on about Barbie? Oh, that's, awesome. that's a good question. Oh, well, it's a good question. But a lot of the videos <laughs> going over Barbie. Who's Besides they, me. though, okay. Vincent? <laughs> yeah, who is they? <laughs> uh, I, I will retract that for now, okay? <laughs> disavow. <laughs> I disavow that disavow. Uh, We're spooned when you need them. The bad things to be laid out. But what these people uh, do probably doing something more entertaining. Of pacing, character, dialogue, what? And I'm these I love talking oh, with you guys. You? So I play yeah, I was about to say, I'm having a lot more fun talking with you guys than, than I've ever had watching random film talk. <laughs> well, that doesn't seem very hard to do. I know it's a low, I know it's a low bar, but you know, it's like... Okay. It, it's like getting a BJ from a drunk girl at the bar that you're hoping that she's good looking in the morning. It's like, yeah, yeah okay. Well, but hey, it still worked out. It was, you know, I still got it. It still happened. Baby, she's got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going on and on. I almost wish so, I could just go to uh, actually a uh, Hello Future Me's video directly. But shit, why did he take this out? It would have been funner to watch what he says and just tear apart it ourselves. Yes. Okay. I almost should have made at it. Okay. This guy's just intolerable. Okay. Play what Drinker actually says. Hello Future Me hasn't explicitly said this, but his um his perspective here definitely seems He hasn't said it, but this is what he's thinking. Hmm. Didn't you talk about mind reading earlier? We're all mind readers I here. Yeah. When okay. it's our when it's people we disagree with, we're mind readers. When it's people we uh. agree with hey maybe maybe don't try to pretend that you can read their mind yeah fair enough fair enough rules got a for lot the... of that. not for me <sighs> seems to be that channels doing what he just described is a bad thing um, oh, and oh. i'm not entirely clear on whether he means that it's bad bad for society uh, i guess uh, oh. I'll, I'll be back lucy just farted and it smells like death I gotta put okay it good luck with that Take care. Uh, I immediately gas thought of Lucy Lemonbug for a second. And I was like, what? That's a little different. Oh, well, that would be a catch. 
That would be I think she's married. Sorry. She is. Don't try to. Oh, okay. Man. Previous thing that was said. It might inform you as to someone's motive, theoretically, but just because someone is. Let, let's, just going say, on. let's just say that Drinker did go into Rings of Power in bad faith. That doesn't mean that he's wrong about anything that he says about Rings of Power. If you're motivated, um, I guess, politically to find something bad because you disagree with what you perceive as its politics, and then you find a whole bunch of legitimate, as Hello Future Me has already conceded, there are a bunch of legit legitimate problems with Rings of Power. Having that perspective. Oh, God. I don't. Why, why am I doing this to myself? This is just... all he's saying is that objective critique is okay. Even okay. if you're coming Thank at you it for... with a certain bias. Thank you for translating. Okay. I didn't want to listen to it. I don't know why I'm being stupid and going into this blind did you know it that just... it was an hour and 48 minutes long yeah i thought i was what well, well, he wouldn't talk as much or his segment would be longer <laughs> i thought maybe it hello like future me over half of this video yeah how long was this section by hello future me i didn't end up actually catching it so this is uh some of this uh drama is new to me well, it is rather, uh, rather fresh drama. Okay, maybe that's not many I'm people are it. jumping on it. Yeah, it's an unknown person. Hello, future me. He does a I lot watch of his book videos, stuff. though. That's the thing. I've done. I've seen his book videos. Yeah, so have I. Okay, he sometimes talks about popular movies that intersect with like, like this. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know why he cut out this woke bros thing. I mean, definitely really bad marketing the woke bros the woke bros yeah i don't know why you cut out that section would have been mm. better to leave it in so people these guys could not take the knee on like, yeah he cut it we win <laughs> oh god okay here's a little bit of this so the male characters fall into one of two camps they're either corrupt selfish manipulators or benign unthreatening beta males who know their place and never show even a hint of agency benign yeah, that beta was my males, problem with totally the series normal hmm? i only got four episodes in i couldn't stand it oh you got a, further than me i am a i'm a pretty big like not as big as wheel of time but i'm a big fan of lord of the rings and tolkien's writings in general so it really bothers me when characters are not, they're not depicted properly uh, in adaptation. Like an adaptation is fine, but when you decide I'm just going to completely and utterly change this character for whatever reason, I hate that. And that that's exactly what Rings of Power was like. Yeah, but they use characters who weren't really in the books, really. Well, the, except for the one girl. Well, the Cimmerillion describes these characters, and they're a lot more noble than what it is, but it was a lot more fairy tale esque anyway. Okay. Seemed um, weird. But to Galadriel, us. especially, is the, the assassination here. Yeah, they made her to a girl, a stupid girl boss from the very beginning. At least I can say that much. Why? Mm -hmm. Why is she struggling these men through? Okay. And how, how is she just still super. Uh, the only one capable of anything because she's the oh, yeah that beginning she's a mary sue yeah 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 how did she she shouldn't have survived uh, jumping into the water why did she even do that drama Excuse okay me. i almost sneezed all over my computer oh, uh, uh, probably would have suited this particular thing and yeah. i then i would have had made... to clean it yeah uh, fair enough fair enough but this beta males relevant thing to say i'm media literate character's not having agency yeah so i'm going to pause it there so here he is essentially straw manning he has effectively misquoted what drinker actually said he's conflated what drinker said and the problem that hello future me seems to have with drinker is not with his criticism of rings of power so um, it's politics. with how he's framing his argument because drinker's point yeah i'm not understanding this but maybe i'm not tracking too well Seems like he's trying to reframe everything what Hello Future Me is saying, but I could be being unfair because I'm just I so annoyed. Yeah. He's trying to get the fair use in there. <laughs> okay, super fair use. Okay. Beta Males isn't... Let, let me see this whole clip. Let's see if either one of us can get this reading. Modern day production. Care about this bit. So it doesn't... 
the show in general. Naturally, because it's a modern day production, the male characters fall into one of two camps. They're either corrupt, selfish manipulators, or benign, unthreatening beta males who know their place and never show even a hint of agency. Benign yes. beta males? That's a totally normal, relevant thing to say. I'm media literate. Characters not having agency. Yeah, so I'm going to pause it there. So here he is <clears throat> essentially strong. Yeah, it's a, no, it's that's a, a joke. He's somewhat right, but he's trying to play this off more. Um, I'm not sure what his commentary is even worth at this point with this specific part. Yeah, oh, I, not hella feature me, but the other guy. <laughs> yeah, what you, you didn't get enough from him? It seemed like a really bad joke. Oh, he used the term beta male. Why? That's so relevant, you know. That's so quirky and cool. I, well, yeah. I regret the decision. It's also a pretty common trope in modern shows right now. Where oh, it's time yeah. for the women to step up. Yeah, it is. It is. He's not addressing mm -hmm. the real point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the girl boss. Even though the last video I went over, sort of uh, like, yeah, even the leftists have this critique of the term girl boss. Uh, you're sort of missing the point here. Okay. Yes, it's not exact. It's not precise language. He's not using the same context. Okay, what does he mean by girl boss? It could mean a lot of things. A little bit lame as a serious critic, but you, you're taking critical drinker way too seriously. Okay, this guy is mm -hmm. taking critical drinker too seriously. Okay, he's straw man and probably jokes on top of jokes. Okay. <laughs> oh, I regret my life. <laughs> he has effectively misquoted what Drinker actually said. He's conflated what Drinker said. And the problem that Hello Future Me seems to have with Drinker is not with his criticism of Rings of Power. Um, it's with how he's framing his argument. Because Drinker's point seems to be that Rings of Power is emasculating men by depicting them in this particular manner, which I think is a fair observation. Um, it's just not one that like I particularly care about. Um, Drinker obviously cares more about that kind of thing than I... Not one I particularly care about. Then why are you whining about it? Because he has to put that required commentary in, man. Have you oh, seen how course. long this video is? Yeah, I'm probably not going to do the whole thing, okay? I, I, I'm not going to stay for all of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm surprised you're not dead yet, okay? Where I'm is not, I, I told you, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, whoa. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I'm surprised you're just not... Not dead is in literally dead, man, okay? I'm talking about, like, brain dead. More brain dead, Jesus like shutting Christ, off. I missed something, didn't I? <laughs> no, no, no. Just brain dead. I, I'm very loose with my language, okay? I just, I, I'm careful with my words. This is, why, this is why I get in trouble so much, okay? I'm not very precise with my language. So don't disavow this one. Okay. Okay, I'm with you on okay. that. I'm with you. Okay, I agree. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Dodged a thing that hurts people. Because of benign beta males somehow see this is why people hate him on twitter like Dura and Elrond and Aaron, they're all perfectly fine even especially masculine male characters whose actions regularly drive the plot forward so this i find quite funny um he's essentially trying to counter drinker's comment on character agency uh by stating that Durin, elrond and elendil are perfectly fine traditional masculine characters who regularly drive the plot forward and therefore drinker is wrong about what he said about the characters not having they agency. don't drive the plot so though from this what is i, I think I partly saw. true no, they don't. Yeah, they, they they do not in any way, shape, or form. It's more yeah. just like kind of a. In. I don't know if you heard that, Lucifer, it, but it's more like a it's more like a B plot that's just to give like a little bit of like a side story to fill in, which makes no sense because you're they're trying to tell a huge like huge 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 story, but they're putting in a whole bunch of filler. But yeah. at the same time, the, all the stuff between. All the stuff between the dwarf and the elf are actually the most entertaining parts of the whole show, which is weird. No, it's not weird. The same thing in the three body problem. the The best thing was about the some of the guys together when they focus on they really create these women almost as girl bosses. Okay, a lot mm. of the back and forth between the men is much better written. The women come off as. God, they come off pretty badly in the three body problem, but don't many people have watched that. It's not culturally relevant enough. And it's probably good. I know it's a book. 
it's that's also a Netflix show now, which oh. is rather yeah, cringe. And uh, the people who own the prop, who owned its property, like its IP rights, sat on it for since 2011, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just it sat in development hell forever. Oh, yeah, lovely! It's so it's things. probably really good, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah right. sure. <laughs> I'd probably and, uh, book. Okay. And the but. Chinese government right now is banning all uh, people from watching it. Like every time uh, it gets it gets brought up, like people are are sharing it on the the WhatsApp or whatever the web app. What's that? Uh, what the Netflix adaption? What, no. What? No. What's the fa- what's the Facebook? Uh, yes, the Netflix adaption. What's the whatever the fa- the Chinese version of Facebook? They're Isn't that Billy Billy? No, no, it's no, um, YouTube. Yeah, we it's some, something. Uh, yeah. Anyways, but uh, every time it gets somebody tries to upload it onto there, they they usually in, in Chinese social media, if you upload Western stuff, as long as it's not directly against the Chinese government, it's like yeah, whatever copyright, we don't care about that. You can watch whatever you want, spread it as much as you want. That they're banning, they're literally banning people. And like banning wow. you from using it and lowering your your social credit score. Social it, credit score. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Wow. Okay. That that that's propaganda for the West. We're fine with it being produced in the West. We have our own version. Okay. You have to do the cult. You have to do the uh, CC. They have their own version. It's much yep. longer and boring, from what I hear. And a lot of the booktubers are praising it more. Like it doesn't have the same budget. I'm not going to watch it. Okay not culturally relevant enough but that's a fun fact oh they're banning the netflix edition what was that good to know oh that's slurpee okay. oh no that's the non-alcoholic beverage but yeah them not being men. calling him a character with agency is inaccurate but it creates the impression the quality of the show is tied to things like men not fulfilling traditional gender roles them not being man enough not to mention there's no shortage of men who are traditionally masculine in other stories. His videos don't make sense if you want to engage in honest media criticism. And holy mm. shit, so yeah, when when Hello Future Me said that is when I stopped taking notes and decided <sighs> that I'm just going to hit record because... <laughs> okay. He, he was taking notes before now, guys, okay? Oh, God. <laughs> Maybe that's why it was so that destructive. Was... Maybe it's not now. Okay. Oh. Maybe he'll be better without Everything notes. Maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe this will actually get better. Without him taking notes, because you know, it, it, if you have time does, to dwell on a script, spoilers. It, you... it, it, he doesn't get better. No. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I don't know how long I'm going to spend on this. I'm not that <laughs> invested in this. Okay, I, I'm almost curious about his Barbie take. Okay, I have several videos lined up. Because I kind of can't believe that he said that, so I'm just going to rewind it so we can take it in again. In other stories, his videos don't make sense if you want to engage in honest media criticism. Hello, future me is stating that by including statements such as uh, because this was made in current year the men aren't allowed to be masculine because of the message for example which is an absolutely fair observation but he's saying that if you include that in your review then you are being dishonest and he's saying that if you want to engage in honest media criticism is he doing that i look like is he even saying that i generally okay. i actually agree with what he just said Okay, I could fair be wrong, enough. Just, but uh, I'm, I'm getting he really. I, I feel like Hello I'm Future me specifically. He uh, he said is like, yeah, this isn't going to work. If you, you can't do these things if you're going to engage in honest media criticism, that was his big thing. I agree with this. Okay, take I here. agree. It definitely does tamper uh, the media criticism, uh, adding the sort of cultural elements. Okay, you can factor those in, in my opinion with your assessment mm-hmm. of it in trying to decide but when you're letting the sort of culture decide what you think about the criticism it's a complex matter okay sometimes you lose uh a lot of uh tidbits within the media like with barbie i have a whole section on it you guys probably won't want to bounce when i go into my whole diatribe with that fair mm-hmm. enough okay I'm not holding anyone here hostage okay <laughs> Then uh, I, will not I, I don't understand it, uh, no how you thought you could hold us off. Drinkers' comments about <laughs> uh, men. You know, uh, you know, Vincent. Yeah. Uh, we actually want to hang out with you. So, yeah. you know, if you if you're mm. on a date, if you're on a date with a girl, don't ever say to her, "You know, you can leave anytime you want." No, that's not what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. Just just go along with. But it. also, don't don't <laughs> oh, say, yeah, yeah. "Please don't leave. I'm lonely." 
<laughs> yes. Please, you have please to have clap. the moderate. <laughs> please clap. Yeah, please clap, guys. Please, please, please find me entertaining and intelligent and yes, exactly. so informative. I'm so smart or funny. One of the two, I hope. You know, <laughs> I was going to sleep with you, but now after you said that, no. Uh, no I'm, I'm, still sorry, gonna, I'm, I'm still going to sleep with you. Oh, if you can find me. Shit. I shouldn't have. Look, I know I where you have, live. Like, even... <laughs> I know where you live. Uh, move it on. Being an yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm Pardon be my French, but that is a completely fucking idiotic no, thing to say. <laughs> they do make scenes if you have a financial uh, no, interest no, in telling no. young men modern feminism has gone to the traditional male role in society, and Fair you enough. should hate this. So, here, what I think he's referring to is um, audience capture. So, again, to use Drinker as an example, Drinker is incredibly popular and incredibly successful. He's got essentially 2 million subs on YouTube. And, and he's as good looking uh, as Lucifer. And just to. Actually, Lucifer, you're you're much better than Critical Drinker. Gordon and BMO can back you up on that. He's a good looking man. Okay, I haven't He's seen quite Lucifer a bit in taller person. than Critical Drinker as well. Oh yes, I'm much I'm much taller than Will <laughs> Jordan. I'm I'm, I'm okay. pretty sure I'm almost a foot taller than Will Jordan. Mm. He's a manlet compared to you. He's a man's oh, dude, man. Like I'm a we're all beta men to you. Harrison's. We're all beta men. No, no, we're not. And every- no, don't not I mean, all. Him. I'm a gamma hey, stop. Man. Stop, yeah, stop, to stop using video. the the big brush, the wide brush. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just uh, most, just me. Bimo's probably just top tier. Also, for, are familiar with I'm because here. again, there is a financial incentive to do so, and because um, if he completely changes his style. Of, uh, of presentation and stops, you know, taking jabs at "quote unquote" wokery, um, then that isn't going to be what his audience wants to hear. Wait, 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 However, wait, 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 wait. Does... is he actually making the claim that Critical Drinker is audience captured? I think he is. It sounds like it. Yeah, he is. I'm not too sure yeah. about that because but he like... basically gives his opinion on anything that he watches. But that's the thing. Yeah. It's when you've co- when you've had your own opinions that are usually pretty consistent over uh, what five years now mm-hmm. and you, the audience that you get from doing that you 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 the people who follow you are usually into what you're saying so it's you know it, does mcdonald's audience capture or did you know everyone just goes to mcdonald's because they know what they're going to get yeah Fair enough. Of course. Fair enough. It's cheap food, okay? Critical that is a good comparison. Is the drive-through food of uh, woke w- woke movie criticism? No, yeah. it's not woke. Crit- it's the anti-woke. No. <laughs> yeah, but at anti-woke. least it, it's like going to McDonald's drive-through and and the person at the drive-through is like some some dirty chick that you used to know back in the day who's really witty and you wanted you may want to hang out with her for a drink but you don't really want to you know actually spend like lots of time with them but they're fun for the the 25 seconds that you get to hang out with them then you learn that she's got three kids and she never told you yeah well, and, 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 and like and a couple of stds uh, more than uh, a couple big boob and no brain okay you yeah know, I wanna... <laughs> and she's gonna, like and, she, and she has a shirt that says i've had 14 abortions <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> Hashtag Women's Day. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's empowering. <laughs> no, hashtag nevertheless she persisted to have more yes, abortions. That's right. <laughs> hashtag not all women. Okay. Definitely not all women. Uh, it's really just, pretty hard just to the get bad to 14. Ones, which is most of them. That's it's called it's called goals. It's called mm-hmm. goals. Yeah. Some people, yeah, yeah. some people, you know, some people give up at two. <laughs> you know, this person... you uncomfortable. Fourteen pages, okay. <laughs> it's a good dark viper meme. Fourteen pages. He said that, so I'm just going to rewind it so we can take it in again. In other stories, is oh god, I went too far to back. Agent, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> Hello Future Me is stating that by including statements such as. Uh, because this was made in current year, the men aren't allowed to be masculine because of the message, for example, which is, is an absolutely fair observation. But he's saying that if you include that in your review, then you are being dishonest. And he's saying that if you want to engage in honest media criticism, then Drinker's videos will not make sense. There is no honest way to engage with Drinker's comments about uh, men being emasculated in rings of power. Pardon my French, but that is a completely fucking idiotic thing to say. 
They do make sense mm -hmm. if you have a financial interest in telling young men modern feminism has gone too far and are destroying the traditional male role in society, and you should hate this. So here, That's what I think what he he's said. referring to is um, audience cap. Hmm? That's not what he said. That's all the mind reading in the world right there. Yep. Correcto mundo. Yep. Okay. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful bean footage. You guys are covering me there. Okay. Not my opinion, but it's probably accurate. Because I'm, I'm so, absolutely again, spitting to use your drinker opinions. as an example. 100%. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone subs to hear of what to expect when they click on one of his videos. Um, theoretically, there is going to be some pressure on Drinker when he when he makes a video covering a particular topic to present like his arguments ballers? in such a way as his audience are, <laughs> uh, are familiar with. Because again, there is a financial incentive to do so, and because um, yeah. if he Jose lied about his it. style uh, Don Jose. presentation and stops, you know, taking jabs at quote unquote wokery, um, then that isn't going to be what his audience wants to hear. However. That does not invalidate his his genuine criticisms of the show. Mm -hmm. He's covered in makeup, sitting in a tree like a 19th century boarding school girl. This is like something out of a Jane Austen novel. I'm half expecting a teenage girl to run up to him and give him some exciting news about an upcoming social event. I know wokeism demands that previously masculine men be emasculated. I've and never seen as this guy before. Emotional, but this is just oh, Despot. No. I, I I've I've watched a few of his videos. He's he's a he's a lot more concise than than fucking this guy. But love his accent. He's, yeah, I was about to say his he's he's a lot more uh, he, he's easier to listen to. No, that's obvious. Okay, at least he's not V. At least he's oh, 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 oh. the racismus, <laughs> the fascismus, the bukkake <laughs> of likes must flow. <laughs> Gotta respect him in some ways, but in other ways. Ugh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. So again, the the comment that Disclaimer is I'm making, making there, a porn has game and nothing to do with the quality Twitter. of the show. And he's a doctor and a lawyer. <laughs> what? I did not know that. <laughs> he has. He is. He's passed law school, and he has his doctorate in general practitionery in in Romania. Dang. He spends half of his day is working at the hospital. The rest of his day, he spends with his wife and bullshitting with people on Twitter and going th and making his videos. Good on fair him. enough, fair enough. Yeah, uh, that's, don't hate the player, hate the game. Okay. Fuck! Imagine going, to, imagine getting becoming a lawyer and a doctor, and deciding. Do you know what? Instead, I'm going to argue with people on Twitter, talk with racist <laughs> South African dudes like most of the day and make a gotcha game <laughs> where I can scam losers out of money. It's like, what, what can you, he's playing every game from every angle. He, and he's like well, a five just, foot, he's a five foot three man li living in, in uh, bro, he's, he's nowhere Romania. Hashtag hustle. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah, well, he is, he's, he's got a better thing going on than Tate. Okay. Let's no, hope he avoids no prison. freaking doubt. Wow. Yeah, he's not exploiting women. Well, let's hope not. Exploiting okay, I don't think he is. women. Oh, that's fair <laughs> enough. Okay, they have no uh, agency, no consent. Yeah, no women have no agency. Women have no agency. No, Cart I believe you, Vincent. Women. Yes, I Cart agree with you, Vincent. <laughs> Quote uh, the clip. Uh, CT. Lying in a tree. <laughs> Male elves, of course, famous for hating trees. The political filter here is so murky, so dense. He perceives an elf sitting in a tree as feminine, as weak and emotional. And this is the first point the vocals were trying to sell young men. On. This isn't what made him feminine. Be strong and manly, are being emasculated, turned weak and emotional. This I think that is self-evidently true. I. <laughs> <laughs> That okay, Bimo. You said that's not what making made him feminine. No, there was all these weird, uh, like one. He was never shown in a dominant light. For one, like he in the story in the Cimmerillion takes the leadership role that Galadriel has in Rings of Power. Okay. Okay. So they switch the roles there. Yeah, um, role reversal. You gotta love that. Yeah. Elrond yeah. was a warrior, warrior, like also a, war, a super warrior, but a politician also. Uh huh. Um, and what I'm saying is that the, the him sitting there all, and writing does not really make him the feminine part. The feminine part is the weird gay undertones that he has with the uh, the Dwarven King. Yeah, I felt that even when, uh, as much as I watched it, give yeah, it I got me, that. Give it to me raw. Yep. Okay, but uh, hello, future me's a point. 
isn't precisely right, but he's agreeing with him. <laughs> okay, but yeah, there's tall tale sides. It could be a part of his character to show him in that light to accentuate the more explicit uh, queer overtones, is what you're saying. It, yeah. You could defend what Hello Future Me sort of what they're saying more about or that. Less. More or less. Um, it's it's more the 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 specific example that he brought up is not a good example of showing how he's a he's more feminine because writing isn't yeah. inherently feminine. Yeah, that's sexist. Okay, hello, yeah. future me is such a sexist guy. Obviously, <laughs> yes, <laughs> agreed. Misogyny. I'm gonna grab yep. a root beer. I'll be back. Go for it. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how you could possibly argue against that. That happens <laughs> all the fucking time. And whilst like some people might be more prone to noticing it where it doesn't exist, um, or in the case of again the Dungeons and Dragons trailer, noticing it and being like, oh, um now that's funny actually. I saw the Dungeons and Dragons movie. That was quite a quite good movie that had some pretty diverse themes in it. They didn't play off the main character like he was at some tropey leadership uh role. Instead, they played him off as a, a broken man that's trying to be funny. And it works. Okay. Well, it's always good when something works. I actually this think works. you might enjoy that movie, Vincent. Oh, maybe. maybe well, I'll put it on my watch it. list. Uh, maybe, maybe. Need to do so much on my plate and so little yeah. time because I stick around doing stupid shit like this. <sighs> oh, it's going to be woke or whatever. And then the film I'm comes out. It's actually pretty good. To this. Like, yeah, that, that kind of thing does happen. But you surely can't deny that the phenomena that Dis Despot of Andrium is, is referring to, that exists, right? That That is that is something that is blatantly observable and blatantly real. Well, don't you know about them? I, I am amazed. I am amazed that he's actually making this parallel. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to let this play and just see how much of this clip he actually uses, and then I'll, I'll explain it for anyone who hasn't seen 12 Angry Men. A here. Yeah, I'm waiting for it also. These people are dangerous. They're wild. Listen to me. Listen to me. I have. Now sit down and don't open your mouth again. Now the book. Yeah, so that I particular clip in 12 about black men, people. Uh, that particular juror. Mm, what about black people? I'm black he's people. Gonna, so I have not seen 12 Angry Men. I'm making an assumption because it's an old black and white film <laughs> that right there they're dangerous and wild is that they're talking about criminal black men no 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 they're not <laughs> yeah you're thinking no of idea. kill the mockingbird you're thinking of kill and to kill a mockingbird would have been a better example <laughs> for that okay Fair no enough. you haven't seen 12 angry men whoa no okay amazing, no, amazing movie arguably uh, one of the most uh oh one of the most iconic movies of all time okay yeah I might have to take a look at it Still boring. I would definitely do it over. Uh, what was that? Uh, well, okay, and just so Rosebud, I can know where uh, your, uh, Orson Welles, Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane, Citizen Kane. That I have was, seen uh, and enjoyed Citizen Kane. Cinematically, it's really well done, but it's boring as all fuck. Okay, the ending is just like what the fuck. Okay, so I understand. Just so I can get a good like marker for what you when when you call it boring. Do you think that The Godfather is boring? A little. It, it okay. has undertone. It has tension. Un it, it's susceptible boring, okay? It has a tension undertone. Yes, it's slow. There's a difference between boring and slow. When something like uh, Citizen Kane really has no purpose, it's, real it's, slow. Practi it's practically an absurdist uh, piece of fiction and reality. Everyone's questioning about this rich guy. It's pretty much... Uh, Everyone speculating on uh, Scrooge McDuck, not Scrooge, Scrooge from A Christmas Kale, and you don't get all you don't get all this cool uh, time traveling shit in it. Okay, that's how I see Citizen Kane. Okay, okay, Vincent, it's more about the spit. Do you like uh, David Lynch movies? Uh they're hit or miss for me. Okay, okay, I, okay. I can, at least at least you say hit or miss. Okay, okay. I can enjoy <laughs> some aspects extremely, but they do tend to annoy me overall. Okay, I get frustrated with them. I feel the <laughs> and same get way the about them movie. as I do about Tarantino movies. What? Really? Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah. 
That, what? That's what a hot take. My, my, what my what brain, Tarantino movie are you talking about? My brain is having a hard time how you connect them. Yeah. No, there's not really any connection. I was just trying to cause shit right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Obviously. Thank whoa, you. whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can see how some people find some parts of Tarantino a little bit odd. Okay, I can see it. Quite a bit. I like Reservoir Dogs. Okay. Reservoir Dogs I almost is like... great. Hateful Eight is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Oh, oh agreed. Uh, oh, God. Okay, I, yeah. I disliked Hateful Eight so much. Sorry, I'm um... derailing us. No, it's anything fine. to it's talk fine. about Indeed. something interesting. <laughs> yes, exactly. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh. <laughs> like I yeah. said, our conversation is much more interesting than this loser up that we got on the screen right now. <laughs> at least yeah, I thought it would least... be more interesting. The Jose video fun. was better. I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm having fun. Yeah, at least the Jose video was interesting. There were some points we I agree with, some points I disagree with. Sort of analyzing how he uses his argument. It's somewhat fun. This is just like. Is one idiot uh, talking out of his ass. Because uh, another, another idiot, idiot interpret- literally just repeating what he said. Yeah. <laughs> and interpreted it in weird ways sometimes, okay? That's how it comes across to me. Like, you don't need to make Hello Future Me sort of bit really stupid, okay? I be- I can understand where his perspective on it is stupid overall. But you're making it into something much more than it really was. It looks like to me. Uh, I'm uninformed. I didn't do my research on anything, and I'm uh, I'm failing now. For it. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad. I forget which number he is. Yeah, just keep it on mute. He what? essentially wants them to vote guilty on the the kid who whose trial or whose fate they are deciding. How's um, that racist? On the basis that he is of a particular race by no, pasting what? his face on top of that character. I knew it. A... I was oh wrong. You was told black? me I was wrong. The kid was black, or what? I don't. Am I misremembering? Yes, it was. What? Yeah, it was. A, it was a black kid. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm thinking of a different version. Obviously, I don't think it was originally a black kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it originally a black kid? Yes. All this education, and I was right. Okay. I see, you're remember not just it was a black see, kid. Emo, you're not just a pretty face. I'm not just okay. a pretty face. Well, I also seen the stage play of this more recently, so that's oh, maybe okay. why I'm off on that. I didn't think expert. race came up really uh, explicitly, and uh, I just I heard the oh, language, it, and I'm like, it's no way! It's virtually never mentioned. They they almost never mention the person like specifically, like their their lifestyle and shit like that. They never talk about that. It's it's all the yeah it's. You never, you almost never, you can't even imagine what the person really looks like until they get to around this scene. Okay. And they're like, he's wild. You can't do anything about them. Yep. Okay. It looks like I'm wrong. Uh, I, I just remember uh, Killer Mockingbird uh, was much more focused on the race. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, at, uh, yes. I won't even go into the, the sequel to that book. Yeah, a sequel. Was that like anything like Return to Oz? Just a complete fantasy mess. And the- no, uh, they made Atticus. They made Atticus. Uh, the writer made Atticus Finch like completely non-caring about black people or civil rights or or taking care of like the the race issue at, at all. Like he kind of goes, "Yeah, well, I don't care about black people." There's actually lines in there like, "No, keep them away from me," that kind of shit. <laughs> and, that's, and there's a, what's her name L- Lindsay ellis made a a video about it where she was like see this is why sometimes you just gotta walk away from the author and go okay you had a one good book and i don't need to hear about your politics anymore uh it was i think it was something about jk rowling maybe that's uh, the reason why she brought it up <laughs> uh, that's fair enough okay i i'm fine with the jk no oh, let me not Get it. Equating um, that sort of openly racist diatribe from that character in Twelve Angry Men with Drinker's comments such as, because it's a modern day production, the male characters fall into one of two camps. They're either corrupt, selfish manipulators or benign, unthreatening beta males who know their place and never show a hint of agency. Those two things are not at all comparable. That is that is an unbelievably stupid and deceptive uh, edit to make. That's um, I'm kind of in disbelief that he's done that so boldly. Could be a joke, but it definitely... It, it, the thing is, with reading this as a joke, like if you already agree with the sentiment that Hello Future Me. Uh, okay. This is uh, the reinterpretation <laughs> of this. 
Yeah, I might. What's your take, Vincent? What's your take, Vincent? Uh, that I made a mistake. <laughs> he just wanted to be I've there. I've said that but I've said that right after murdering people okay, but so you know before we go any <laughs> No well I, but my, not my mistakes it... tend to be I they build up okay the, it's not like a big thing okay it's just a whole bunch of stupid little mistakes that I keep on making hey, and just making So are you are you saying that accidents. you like to double okay. down Vincent do you like to double down when you make a mistake and then you just keep doubling down and doubling down and doubling down? You don't, that doesn't typically, sound like you. Tip, that doesn't sound like you. Typically not. Typically <laughs> not. I typically just uh, don't correct the mistakes. I keep going with the mistake and it turns into something weird. It just it morphs into uh, like all my discussions with people online. They tur I, I don't double down. I switch things up and, you know, it just gets worse. Okay. <laughs> it's sometimes funny worse. It, it's funny worse sometimes. Okay. Yay. But generally worse in a, in an interesting way. Any further, I know that a lot of uh, the, I guess, oh, yeah. quote unquote, woke bros, they, I'm going to say all of them, even the guys that, whose videos I haven't watched, um, they are all going to care about uh, faith, faithfulness to the source material more than me. Yes. Um, I don't care at all. I think that you can make changes and it can be better or it can be worse. Yeah. I think that um, if you're making so, like the, the Peter Jackson's version of Lord of the Rings is the perfect example, including Tom Bombadil and including the scouring of the Shire would almost certainly have made those films worse. I don't care how faithful it is. However, I, I completely sympathize with people who, who, who do want it to be more faithful to the source material because at the end of the day, it is. Yeah. I sympathize. It's with an them. adaptation. Yeah. I, that yep. makes a lot There's... of sense. Because you're building There's... off a fan base already. If you're making a story that already is bit that already has a fan base built up, like Star Wars, and you start messing with it, the people that you want that you expected to like finance this stuff that you're making, you're kind of just going, "Well, I don't really care about your opinion." We oh, knew God. that you really wanted uh, it to be faithful. Yeah, you're but, breaking you up know... a bit. But... Okay. It's almost as if if you disdain your fan base, maybe you shouldn't say something about it because that's the big problem. maybe it's the they're going a little too masked yeah. off with the oh well we actually hate the people that watch this yeah that's always a bad thing to piss off a fan base and some people do apologia for it and that is always lame oh okay i, I was switching stuff around so i'm oh, rather you. off with that yeah, how dare I? But ironically, this version of Elrond in Rings of Power is arguably closer to the one Tolkien describes in the book as as kind as summer, something that actually didn't really come through in the original Jackson trilogy. But they don't care about that because of course they don't. The message is more important. So this I think is probably a fair comment from what I have heard, uh, Hugo Weaving's version of Elrond in the Peter Jackson films is not particularly similar to Tolkien's original version of Elrond. Someone who has read the books he will be able to go into right, more detail. But at the same time, oh. Elrond, so, okay. In the Peter Jackson films, Elrond is seen as a lot more. Uh, so he's supposed to be more diplomatic than, in the book than he is in the film, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the first movie, but I believe it came off a lot more combative when Elrond was in, uh, introduced in the first book uh, movie. I mean, I don't know. Mm. I, might be I, I wouldn't really say he comes off as combative. It's just Hugo Weave, the way Hugo Weaving is, like his just his Mr. style Anderson. and the way his face is and the way, you know, his voice. <laughs> he he seems like a, a person you like an authority figure, like Agent Smith kind of thing. But mm. and, you know, Maybe but that's, that's one it. of those things, you know, when the like uh, Middle Earth has been so peaceful for like a thousand years, what's the point in being like warlike and and thinking about you know i gotta i gotta be with a sword on my back at all times like nobody gave a crap the only people who were fighting were the people in uh in in well anybody fighting orcs okay it makes uh sense uh weak time uh breed weak man that whole meme okay hard times <laughs> great hard man okay i, should, I like uh, hard man to keep i'm sure you Ooh. do i'm sure you do <laughs> Oh, if you to me. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm sort of skipping a lot of the commentary because I'm not understanding the co how the commentary is <laughs> going on that long. Of, uh, 
Hello Future Me, by the way. Yes, oh, exactly. Good pause. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm screen yeah, that. That. Okay, yeah, I'll give you a few moments. <laughs> I got it. All right, I'll make a okay. soy jack. Okay, Be- beautiful soy jack for him. Obvious when you actually listen to what they say in their critiques. She goes to run away, but then decides, nah, I don't know. Maybe she thinks, well, I'm a woman and women don't die in rings of power. And the choreography is just all over the place. <laughs> well, That's really the next funny. Shot is abandoned Come on. Life, so he pulls out a sword. He <laughs> gets to enjoy the implausibly well-earned kill, though, because the rope snaps. He's a boy. He can't be allowed to take the glory. Again, there's a legitimate criticism of the choreography. And then all this other stuff tagged on about the roles men and women play in the scene to make it... Yeah, that does seem a little bit odd. Okay. Mixing uh, the cultural with uh, the criticism. I would like them separated personally, but that's just me. Just me. Hmm. That begs the question, Vincent. If you're trying to give a proper critique of a movie, wouldn't you want to also give context to the culture at the time and when it was made? Uh, geez. Because uh, wouldn't it reflect in the writing? Yeah. And this is definitely very reflective of the modern day writing. Is that a good thing or bad thing? That's a good, good question. question. <laughs> Adapted for a modern audience. Yeah, yeah, usually that means a bad movie. Yeah, well, yeah. My I mean, uh, <laughs> well, we're we're just conditioned to think that adapt it for modern audience is a bad thing. It could be a good thing. I, but I wonder right, why. I think it, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's almost, I, I personally, <laughs> I personally think it's just because activists will, uh, but uh, people with more ideological bending will work for less and do uh, be more malleable. Okay. They're more brainwashable, easier palms, NPCs for uh, execs to sort of uh, move around the chessboard. Okay. They don't know what they want. It's just a theory. This is what I also believe that creating outrage uh, is like free advertising. Like with the black and like black and Bolin. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Velma sold itself on the outrage. They purposely had to have been. rage baiting with that whole series and yeah. learning think, recently but... that it actually did good numbers apparently like it wasn't a complete and utter failure they're getting a season the two watch. yes because of the hate watchers <laughs> probably Disparu, disparu's videos got more views about velma than velma did which is hilarious yes that is hilarious it is super hilarious. And that's why today when uh, they were talking about that with Wicked Virtue and X-Ray Girl, he's like, Velma season two got a got greenlit? Yes! I get to buy a house next year. Yes! Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. This is like when Jerry well, this is like when the quartering found out that Brie Larson was making another Marvels movie. He's like, Yes, I, I'm gonna buy a six thousand square foot place in Texas. What now? That's amazing. I'm, I'm you realize that? Pool. <laughs> yeah, they don't care about the term grifter anymore, and I don't blame them. It just gets thrown around so much. Like, why not play into it? Okay, fuck it. Okay, it's horrible. Find some enjoyment with it. Okay, <laughs> even if it's just people tearing into it. See, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's why. That's why I love Disparu in comparison to this guy. It's why not have fun with it? If, if you know, if if stuff's gonna be silly or or dumb. Why not make fun of it and have as much fun as you possibly can? And then, you know, you you actually get something out of it instead of just pulling your hair out. <laughs> you get the both well, of the best of both worlds and do both. Yeah. It doesn't need to be isolated. You can do two things at once. Critique oh. something and take the piss out of it. Enjoy it. Milk it, okay? Mm, and, again, milking, I, I yes. Like <laughs> this is absolutely taken out of context. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, <laughs> I have seen, <laughs> seen Platoon's video. I can't remember this specifically. I'd rather just do an overdub. Traditional British family, gender roles, all the rest. So many buzzwords. Okay. Yeesh, it just puts my teeth on edge. I've never seen the draw of his actual videos, personally. Little Platoon? Oh. Yeah. Me neither. Nah. And- I've, I've given it a try. It just was like, okay, this feels like the same commentary I get from uh, 
movie as a uh, video essay youtuber number three six nine four two that was yes yes <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what i that's exactly what i said to him and then everyone started like dogpiling on me for a while even sitch got in my face about it and then i explained to him <laughs> is this a mean tell me, thing to say tell me tell me who he's what he does better than anyone else tell me tell me how he's better than mauler or what what he does differently than him we, and Mahler has a nicer voice and is less of a <laughs> smug asshole. It's like, um, like we have dozens of them, dozens, dozens. Yeah, Mahler they all funny. go on E, and they all go on E fat. <laughs> you or just send him. him the picture of all the Buzz Light years in the aisle. Yes. This is you. <laughs> yeah, that's all it does. Oh, God. Uh, cherry. He has all. Uh, I haven't even looked at these sections. Cherry picking. Let's see this. This kind of thing happening. Say a lie enough times, and people might even believe it. Because the woke bros know. Oh, I like that one. Scenes. Frame them however. Cherry pick. I am glad you said that. So, um, this is relating specifically to my videos because apparently I'm, a, I'm an honorary woke bro. Um, I, he's really nailing that. He, he. I think that's why he made this reaction. Like. <gasps> I got mission in the same breath as all these <laughs> other guys. Okay, I got a milk. Okay, it's like, I'm gonna ride this, about this video. Yeah, but ride it a little bit shorter. Okay, the yeah. short bus. Get on the short bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, shit. <laughs> Footage from each episode. Virtually every line of dialogue. Virtually every. Oh, that reminds me. I need to no, my shit. If down. I understand correctly, he, we're watching this version because Hello Future Me took down the other one. Yeah, there's yes. one other response to it, but I it's really short, so I doubt I'm sure it's just a typical response. Okay, I doubt we'll get the context for this. I mean, I like the style of response to response, but you should make your response in comparison to what the people are actually fucking saying and not try to get it just feels like gaslighting when you need to when someone like goes on for like a sentence or two and you feel like you need to uh write a couple of need to create a couple of pages to sort of respond to that couple of sentences. Seems like almost, as we brought up, mind reading, okay? Like, how is he getting anything? I mean, sometimes I can agree with him, okay? But I'm just glazing over. My eyes is glazing over. We're, it makes me wonder yeah. how Hello Future Me actually uh, recorded this video. It's like, is he watching the video and then just pausing it and going off? stopping the recording watching the video and then just keep going yes, like that that is exactly what he's doing he said he said that earlier that he just stopped writing a script and he just said no i'm just gonna start recording and that was back yeah. at 13 minutes he was like this is the moment where i i stopped writing my script and i just start i pressed oh record. i thought that was rf2 that did that or was that is that that is that is rf2 i mean okay random no, film i'm talking call. about hello future me specifically yeah but maybe they oh, both may, may, maybe but he you know he's looking off to the side like you can see right there he's looking off that, to the yeah. side so maybe he's got the screen up so i'm that kind of and i can see the reflection in his eyes that he, he's mm. pro, he's probably got a screen yeah he probably maybe. wrote a script for That's all of nice this hello future me <laughs> hmm but yeah the hundreds of thousands of especially young men who watch their videos every week won't see how warped these interpretations are. Uh, yes, the, the poor YouTube viewer who doesn't have a brain and can't critically think for themselves. So um, I don't know if Hello Future Me does this, um, but myself and, and a whole bunch of people that I speak to. It's sort of funny he brought up, you didn't do your research on me. And now he's like, I don't know if he does this. Did you not do your research on Hello Future Me? Obviously not. Oh, just the irony of this is funny. Yeah, it takes uh as Lucifer brought up earlier, uh <laughs> you brought up little platoon as like a SAS. That's how I feel about it also. A lot of these people. Even Mahler to a little bit of a stent, not as bad, okay. And he's the original guy. He's not he's not the original. He just made he's no. he, he's the upgrade. He's the upgrade, okay. Everything fails in comparison. Everyone wants to get on the back. I wouldn't want to. Well, yeah. The well, there's a there's a reason why every yeah, there's a reason why everybody loves them so much is because they want to be like them. 
He's the elf. He's the, he's the, uh, he's the, he's the, what's it called? The brosphere dude for he's the, the manosphere. The, he's the manosphere like leader. He's the Andrew Tate of, of the video essays. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Long man, bad progenitor. Okay. Everyone uses it. Everyone copies him. I can see how that goes. Because they like Anyone him, wants... and, he, and he's doing good. And for somebody who has less than 100, what does he have, like 200,000 subs or something like that? Every single person wants wants him on the stream. Like, all the big names want to talk to Mahler. Yeah, even Dark Viper uh, had a little section I saw uh, where Star... he wanted to talk to Dark Viper. I mean, He was talking Dark with Mahler. Star Wars Theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until they had to cancel that, sadly. Never thought that that was ever going to happen. And having Ryan Kinnell on with yeah. Star Wars Theory and Mauler and Ryan Kinnell, I'm like, what, what, what timeline am I living in? I, I'm not complaining, but hey. Speaking of Star Wars Theory for a second, is that guy on roids or something? Or has he just been working out for that long? Because yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's gotten jacked. He is. Ever jacked all uh, right he is he's a big boy and it there is no fat on him whatsoever i think as soon as he started making the movie as soon as he started doing the fan movie he started hitting the gym like virtually every day i can tell i can't wow. wait i can't wait for that to get like completely finished and disney to get their hand get their hands out of his face and let him finish yeah i they really should let the fans really take over for this sort of stuff if it's a you fan got the project, passion and they can they sort of uh, any legal standing because they because he's going to make money off of it and get advertising not advertise because that he's not going to he's not charging anybody for to make the movie he's he pulled the money out of his own pocket so he can make the the mace windu comes back from the dead and fights darth <laughs> vader and shit like that yeah. but it's he's not he's not charging anyone for it he does. He's not. He's not. Uh, he didn't set up a GoFundMe or anything like that to make money for uh, to make money for it. But Disney is like they put a cease and desist order out on him, saying you're not allowed to make this fan made movie. Yeah, it's complete bullshit. They're just trying to stamp down fan made what if he products. Was like, Bite me, I'm gonna make it anyway. And then he just posts it. Did well. Disney might be able to might try to sue him and and put him into so much legal battles that it'll bankrupt him. And that's yeah, the thing when you're when you're somebody like Disney, you can just make up frivolous bullshit lawsuits and just bury people in procedure, and it'll cost you how much. You got to get your lawyer to file this and file that and file this. And... Yeah, I, was, I was having such mirthful laughter when like the U.S. government was getting involved with regarding the Florida Disney situation. Uh, <laughs> let's not get into that. Okay, yeah. that's a whole <laughs> rabbit hole of a mess. Uh, but yeah, let's oh, really uh, on the screw Disney side there. Regardless, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're got, all okay. on the screw Disney I'm, side, but we I'm we sorry. have different reasons we want to screw Disney. I know Lucifer's reason for wanting to screw you Disney. You think but... they're attractive? You want to screw them? <laughs> Damn right, I do. <laughs> I want to uh, grab. Yeah. I want to grab Mickey by the by the ears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, I got it. I've I've gone way too long. I gotta get okay. gotta get going. I got stuff to do in the morning, and I gotta I gotta set up my lunch and crap like that. But it was great talking with you guys again. Thank you very yeah. much for yep. the yeah. Appreciate it. No, uh, don't be a stranger. I hope you enjoyed. Oh, I won't be a stranger. Trust me. Okay, take care. Mm, don't be a stranger, <laughs> guys. Peace yeah. out. Oh, uh, yeah, BMO. I, I'm gonna try to tolerate this a little bit longer. This All is right. just such a waste. I mean, you want me to write it out with you? I'll write it out with um, you as your emotional. We, we watch videos email. by people that we disagree with. It is often good, like even even outside of the context. Maybe you would of, be a good um, soundboard for me. I listen to podcasts <laughs> and interviews uh, and debates uh, with people that I just dis I disagree with on most, if not all, of what they say, um, because it helps you get better at framing your arguments and it helps you understand what you actually think. And on a lot of these topics, I honestly don't know what to think, which is why I watch them. Um, Hello Future Me seems to be thinking that people like Drinker and Nerd Roddick are sat on the pedestal and that what they say is law and that their viewers aren't going to... They they drank the Kool-Aid. Let me just get to this section, skim through this. Because this was a mistake. Okay. Here, let, let, let's just at least get here. Lesson uh, in... Yeah. Actually, hold on. Lesson in subtext. 
Okay. Let's see if any of these guys know. Sludge for the purpose of spreading oh, propaganda, boy. even though they're the trying to and dealing with the worst games, commentary. It's poorly written. It's why they mix in yeah. the critiques of a lot of the writing too. This is where you can spot another tactic they use: intentionally misrepresenting the stories to seem dumber than they are, even when they're already bad. There's a scene in episode <laughs> three where Tommy and Lindy like, talks about how faithful a faction of people loyal to the. Ah. Uh... Not if you're actually looking at the facts, okay? If you're framing something in a way, interpreting something that's not actually there. Like, look at this little detail. I think Shad is actually fairly famous for it. Going oh, deep into it, okay? Finding something where there's not an issue. He's definitely one of these people I would would think the criticism would. And I he agree. sensationalizes, for sure. To generalize... Uh, generalizing this group of people together is a bad tactic by hello future me but he probably didn't do proper research to actually make this section why he probably cut it out it's like okay i was trying to make an argument but it's i'm getting feedback and it's weak so fuck it cut it out yeah because he was trying to do the whole alt-right pipeline type of idea um and maybe his shotgun blast was a little too far spread yeah i mean using this guy uh, random film talk. Again, I made a mistake of trying to go off of his response video, but I'll take the L and, and try to cover a little bit more, at least Hello, his Mills section. I'm curious about this uh, yeah, lesson in subjects. I don't think that's ever stated in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I could be misremembering, but I believe that you will only know that oh. if you read the books. I believe that when the petals of the white tree fall, the Vela are judging them and crying, that it's a sign Numenor has lost its way. Elendil says, In my experience, it is unwise to live one's life guessing. Of the signs and portents. She then points out his name. Elendil can also mean elf friend. Uh, he also believes that the sea is always right, which uh, means that he absolutely believes that, like, picking up Galadriel was a sign from the sea, uh, which means that this character is it, he's a he's a complete fucking mess. And are you mm -hmm. an elf friend? I'm a loyal servant of Numenor. Tamiriel then asks why he would rescue Galadriel, an elf, and bring her to Numenor. To which he says, "It was the sea who put her in my path." Okay. okay so i'm gonna tell you what Do i think you know about this very briefly snow? it's been a little while since i've seen it and then we'll <laughs> hmm? that was just the quote from the show it's like do you know why a boat floats <laughs> <laughs> so bad oh it's probably maddening okay uh, i'm looking up how something. hello future me is I'm really getting desperate oh, here. sorry no i didn't mean that Go we're gonna it. see how uh, hello future me is going to uh, give his uh, give his thoughts on this on this moment so this is really dumb because it essentially uh, depicts elendil as being an idiot who will do things that are treason because bringing bringing elves to numenor is established as being treason uh he will do that if the sea if he thinks that the sea kind of told him to do it which means that hello yes. future me's uh, previous claims that um, Elendil is a character with agency are a little bit spurious because he seems to do whatever the writers want him to do and they seem to justify it by saying well it was the sea so he, what, what can I do? Oh he also uh, he also his reason for helping Galadriel is that his name means that he likes elves so he you know he help he helps elves and the sea put an elf in. Oh yeah this all sounds stupid the reasoning here yep all stupid I still okay. I just okay I don't like his commentary his yeah. commentary isn't even very good. Now, I would rather just watch the Hello Future Me video. Yeah, this is just like... I. Well, he has the Hello Future Me. He just cut out the woke bros, and a lot of this is getting cut out. But the very beginning of him uh, sort of accusing the Hello Future Me of poisoning the well, why he's poisoning the well, just incredibly ironic. Yeah, he primes it. By his boat? Yeah, so well... He, um... Yeah, that's uh, that's Elendil in this scene, at least. And the sea is always right. See, Elendil and Tamadil are both secretly part of the faithful, trying to navigate a volatile political environment for them both. Elendil saying the sea brought Galadriel to its ship is clearly him trying to hide his true allegiance, to say it was out of his hands, just like he sidesteps the question about the white tree. Meanwhile, also Tamadil is trying to suss out if she can... Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> what, you're talking about the bad armor? Yeah, the armor looks so bad. <laughs> This has uh, nothing to do with Hell of Future Me, but man, I hate this show. <laughs> Understand that completely. Oh, well, look at that. Of power to exp you get better cosplay. Yeah, that's that official. It looks like a sweater, and then like it doesn't even look like metal. It it just looks like weird uh, formed uh, formed rubber. That's it. 
It does. It does. It really looks bad. You figure Amazon would have the budget, but maybe they spent it all on the CG <laughs> or whatever they use to create the grand it's vast the most expensive uh, show ever made. Because if they don't, then. Yeah. Now I'm getting lost in all this fucking details. Oh, this really is a problem. I... The word bros are only familiar with heavy handed political allegory they dream up, so they might not have heard of this. But the subtext here is obvious to it. That is definitely a they nice shot. Up. Okay. <laughs> good shot. Good shot. This probably doesn't apply to a lot. Well, all of them. I would actually probably agree. A lot of these cultural commentators, like Nerd Roddick, misses a lot of subtext and a lot of elements. Oh, for sure, but that's why he has a bunch of other people. Which features Alindiel explicitly telling yeah. the he is a friend of the elves. So you either have to somehow miss this, or they're just lying about it not being there. I wonder mm. which it is. He's like, in my experience. So yeah, the link between Elendil being one of the faithful and between and between the faithful being people who like elves, that is not in Rings of Power. That is something that you could mm -hmm. maybe make up and slot it in there and be like, oh, you know, kind of that explains a couple of things. But that is not in the show. If that is required for the show to. Is he missing that this is subtext? Okay. Hello, future me is making a subtext <laughs> argument. I just realized what it is you just said. Oh my gosh, you're right. He is missing it's it. It's not in. He's not in. Well, of course it's not in the show. He's talking about the subtext of it. Oh God. <laughs> makes sense. And the writers did not put it in the show. Then they have failed to adapt Tolkien's work. It does not make sense and ignores obvious context and subtext. And when they can't do that to manufacture a reason something is bad, then they'll just talk you good, bro? slow and scoff. To yeah, sorry, I laughed and turned into a cough. Right, here we go, it's me. So we're going to find out how, like, I'm trying to brainwash the younglings with political messaging. Sildor's oh, mother yeah. and Elendil's wife. She drunk. There are many ways that people can die. What Rings of Power has just done, and I hope to fucking God that this was an accident, is have one character who believes deeply that the sea is always right tell another character who is wearing a full suit of yeah. armor whilst at sea, and presumably unaware of the inherent drowning risk that this poses, that his wife died because she drowned in the sea. They could have picked any other way for her to have died. They quite obviously don't care at all about the source material, so just say that she not. tripped and fell on her own shears. At least then we don't have to work out the mental gymnastics involved with Elendil believing the sea to always be right when the sea killed his wife to uh be as clear as i possibly can before we uh before we get onto his misread and misinterpretation and dare i say it, uncharitable reading of what i actually said okay okay um there are two criticisms that i'm making here one is that galadriel is wearing a full suit of plate armor while at sea uh which mm -hmm. you yeah. uh, would That's not do different. because if you go you overboard for that. any reason you are going to die the show does not mm -hmm. realize the irony of having one character say yeah my wife drowned therefore or putting the idea of drowning into the yeah okay reiterate things <laughs> he has to explain I'm himself just saying it over explain again. yourself he's not trying to justify it. he's just saying it again hmm maybe she drowned in a bathtub uh, he's just explaining it again lol actually a third thing which is that elendil repeatedly states that the sea is always right uh when the sea killed his wife uh, go too far i back. guess maybe she drowned in a bathtub that's also possible who knows but yeah those are those are my points of criticism let's see what he has to say when the sea killed his wife he's like just the... reiterating this mm -hmm. you just played your section and you have to explain it again why and you totally missed the freaking subtext thing god cinema sin was run by matt walsh i will take that as a compliment i i don't quite see the similarity with matt walsh i guess but i guess matt walsh is a bad person and i'm also a bad person matt because walsh. i made a video on rings of power so i guess i see what 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 I, i'm not getting it from either side here okay similarity there and uh i guess cinema sins is typically associated with nitpick nitpickery and uh, i guess i made 14 hours of content on rings of power so therefore i'm like cinema sins because actually think about that's some oh. sorry it's gonna so, take me a moment to like, process watched... it's I've watched some Matt Walsh. I was never a fan of him, even when I was a lot more conservative than I am now. Um, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see a comparison here, other than right wing commentator. Like that's yeah. The, I, it's as far as it's I can go. It's from Hollow of Future Me. Okay, this was a mistake. Okay, but let me just finish up his particular section before i move on I to my little I didn't watch this section. because this was on my youtube feed 
and I didn't watch what, it. What the hell of future me video when it came, first came out? I would yeah. really like to. I was actually searching for his original thing. Thought that'd be more interesting to see direct. But I, I fail. Okay. And before I knew it, it was talked about. It's all stupid. I used to watch a bunch of Hello Future Me. Yeah. Because he, he had some pretty interesting game commentary stuff. And he had a pretty good avatar analysis. Like the, the... I used to watch Daniel Green. I'm a little embarrassed by that now. <laughs> He's annoying as hell. Yes, okay, but he, he he picked up on some decent uh, series that I'm like, whoa, he's talking about this series. Yeah, nice. what, his uh, no analysis else. of One Piece is pretty good, but I'm biased. I love yeah. One Piece. Probably. And he, he definitely doesn't. Uh, he mm, troubles him. He's talking about the Hugo Award stuff, and that was funny. People kept bringing up the sad puppy stuff. They get what they deserve. This was predicted back in sad puppies, and he doesn't mention it at all. It's funny. But that's a side. What he just said there. That rings a power bad because one, a character wearing armor on a ship has a conversation with someone whose wife drowned. So that is that is possibly the least charitable thing that you've said in this entire video, my friend. Um, <laughs> that is quite obviously not what I was saying. Uh, of course, you would find that. Okay, he's not understanding your argument. Okay, dude. You no. he, well, it could be he purposely is doing it, but that's my reading. Yeah. Yeah. And he's explaining it again. I'm mm -hmm. assuming the criticism, and they <laughs> might also drown if they fall in. And Question the problem mark? isn't that she might drown if she falls in. The problem is that she, she is wearing a suit of armor. He he's sort of proving the the hell of future me's point. He, all he's making is he, he didn't understand your argument. Okay. Ever, ever since uh, Lucifer touched on whenever he wife. speaks and he's irritated, his voice gets a certain way. I've p really picked up on it. I could tell to someone saying to have it to keep saying this. Oh, uh, yeah, it's sort of funny in a really meta, cringe, ironic way. After their wife mm -hmm. died of cancer, it's like, well, I mean, you know, that's the Lord's plan. It's like, what, what, do you actually think that? Like, you know, there are things that you can do with a character who might be presented with that kind of like moral conundrum, like a challenge to their faith. Um, they don't do that in Rings of Power. What? I mean, we already covered how Elendil doesn't believe that, and this is further evidence. They seemingly coincidentally ignored that subtext too. But even if Elendil did believe the sea was always right in this way, or again, you seem to be relying on the source material to state that Elendil doesn't actually believe that the sea is always right. Because if I understand correctly, again, as someone who has not read the books and has only seen the show in excessive an excessive number of times and in excessive detail, that Elendil's actual reason for rescuing Galadriel when she just popped up out of nowhere in the middle of the ocean. Did I just hear that right? He watched the show obsessively in obsessive detail. Apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Okay. This was a mistake. Okay. I, I give up. Hey. Okay. So how are you doing, you BMO? Okay. No, I'm not giving up. I was actually just about have... to, to draw. <laughs> I was about to to draw uh, Hello Future Me Soyjack. I literally oh, just okay. opened up my art program. <laughs> okay. You do that. Uh, you want to... I, I had an additional thing. I yeah. had it in my head. I want to re... re Relitigate the whole Barbie thing, okay? Based off of this guy's video on Barbie, because now I haven't seen Barbie, so I would have fresh eyes at least. Okay, let's just look at his arguments. Okay, it's something sure. that a little bit more tolerable, maybe. I don't freaking know. It's definitely worth. Can't be worse than this response. Okay, I'm, I'm not even saying hello, future me's response is any what good. I'm just saying this response to the response is. God awful. From a particular. Okay. okay, okay. So uh, let's just start with this. E here and uh, hey, humor me, okay? Isn't this what everyone does? I always humor you, Spe especially with Barbie. Okay, uh, the thinkers had vast amount of discussions around it. Yep. And let's just see this. There is very little to Barbie beyond its political messaging. I am unable to analyze Barbie as a film without talking about feminism, because that is what the film is, overtly political. This is unfortunate, because as soon as my opinion on feminism, for example, becomes a part of the video, the video itself also becomes political. As a rule, I generally try to look past politics in films, because I am far more concerned with whether or not a film tells a compelling and coherent story with characters I can engage with and understand. Uh, if a film really is fantastically written and worse. presented, but... Yep, I sped him up, okay. He's saying... I don't think he's saying anything in this section. 
for me to simply complain about feminism and then conclude that Barbie is a bad film, okay. because I personally feel feminists are at best misguided and at worst regressive self-victimizing degenerates. That yeah, I'm pausing. I, I'm slowing it down for your sake, okay? That is not the kind of analysis oh, okay. I'm interested in, because although so, I do like a good spicy joke here and there, I do try... He, oh, you get... The, the criticism... What was it? It wasn't the criticism that he had. He had, he basically just repeated what Hella Future Me said, and then like agreed with what he had said about how the the these these woke bros to take the quote, um, they see politics and everything. Isn't he just confirming that for himself through this movie? This this yeah, video right this, here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, I wonder where he's even going with this preamble. Okay. He's almost saying this is like almost double talk. Okay. I, uh -huh. I can't analyze this. I am trying to figure out where he's going with this preamble. I watched it before. Again, I'm going in a little blind, but this is actually something uh, a little bit more relevant. Try not to be an anti feminist ideologue. This is the same reason why I avoid accusing anything of being woke, because that word is unbelievably toxic and politically charged. It seems to have entirely different definitions depending on whether you are pro or anti-woke, and it just ends up polluting the discussion and distracting from the questions I am most interested in. Is the film good? Is the film bad? And why? There is a discussion to be had about Barbie beyond it is feminist propaganda, even though having now distilled my thoughts into this video, I am at this point entirely sympathetic to those who have described this film as such. I won't be doing that myself, however, because I would prefer not to be quite as divisive and exaggerated as Barbie is. If Barbie is feminist propaganda, maybe it's really well-made feminist propaganda. The question as to whether or not it is feminist propaganda is- It's just doublespeak, I swear. It goes on way, way too long about hmm. this certain section. It almost comes off as a virtue signal. I'm not going to be going into woke, but I don't blame people who do criticize it for being woke. This is all the priming. Yeah, priming. This is about here's what you'll patriarchy. expect from this movie. This movie is political. People call it woke, but I am not going to call it necessarily woke, but it's definitely feminist. Okay, yes. And he just thinks feminists are misguided, okay? He doesn't hate them like all the other woke guys, I guess, would be the okay. bad faith reading of that. It's unbelievably blunt social commentary and ultimately why it did a terrible job of communicating what it very clearly wanted to communicate by repeatedly undermining its own message and as a result has very little coherent to say about anything man With that I have said not seen who is bobby i think i'm missing out just watching yeah maybe clips. <laughs> you're probably missing out on a lot sorry but thank you for humoring me telling you exactly what you want to hear and you may well thoroughly enjoy it purely on that basis it is also a flashy, vibrant, and dynamic film with A-list actors, a heartwarming feel-good plot, some jokes that occasionally land, and some topical social commentary to make it seem relevant. If, however, you do not believe in the five pillars of feminism, then Barbie is probably going to be extremely difficult to sit through because the film assumes that the viewer already agrees with its premise. It does not attempt to convince. Given the target audience, my presumption is that the vibe <laughs> It does not commit. So it makes really bad propaganda if it does not attempt to convince okay this place is all over the place <laughs> I, he's just i don't a, even just... know well, majority of... do, do i need to slow it down for you maybe that would help maybe i mean you haven't watched it so no fresh i haven't eyes, watched it eyes. so i'm very very fresh i don't even I'm know very, the very plot fresh. of the film i just know that like at the end of it she goes to go see a, a gynecologist that's it. Like, really, that's all I know. Yeah, so I'm going to be making a really weird argument. Maybe I should just make it instead of watching this, but I want to use this as my framing, okay? See how good he is. Audience members will already agree with the film's messaging. See Imagine, how however, being a vegetarian and watching a film... Oh, I hate these comparisons. This is really what I hate. Christianity makes zero logical sense. Long live atheism. Imagine being a Donald Trump fan and watching Don't Look Up. Two. I am neither a vegetarian, nor am I a Christian, nor am I a fan of Donald Trump, but in both of those hypothetical cases, as well as the unfortunately very real Don't Look Up, if those movies were delivered with the same lack of nuance or subtlety as Barbie, I would find them equally obnoxious and repugnant, regardless of whether or not I agree okay. with their premise. The central message of this film seems to be that men and women are engaged in an eternal battle to subjugate each other, and in the case of Barbie, the women are victorious, and so continue to subjugate the men. You may be thinking, wait, I saw the film, that isn't what happens. The film ends with them all deciding to live as equals. Well, dear viewer, I will be getting to that, but for now, you will have to take my word on this. Anyway, without being too hyperbolic, this is a message- I, I don't think I should take his word on anything. 
yeah, it goes on. Good. Let's see what he says is the good bits. Okay, and you have to do this. Ah, so, is there anything worthwhile in Barbie? Yeah, not much. The sets yeah. were nice and vibrant <laughs> and appropriately plasticky. Watching Ryan Gosling <laughs> take the piss out of himself was occasionally amusing. There are many Easter eggs for Barbie fans that will have gone right over my head. Both of the Ryan Gosling musical numbers were excellent. There were two cameos that made my brain go, oh, look, it's that person. Additionally, the film opens with a mildly amusing parody of the opening of 2001 A Space Odyssey, in which Barbie appears to a group of children playing with baby dolls, and they then smash the babies to pieces, symbolically embracing the arrival of the hot new toy, Barbie. Given the feminist themes, I was expecting this to be the setup for an overt anti-motherhood payoff by the ending, but I was surprised to find that the film does not seem to be anti-motherhood outside of this scene. Or, perhaps put another way, there are anti-motherhood themes that are present, but there are also pro-motherhood themes that are equally present, which is just one example of this film not having a clue about what it actually wants to say. The girls who played with them could only ever okay. play at the... Okay, don't need to watch that. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Okay, I feel a need to give this some context myself, okay. Uh, how well versed <laughs> are you with uh, filmography, okay? Let's watch this little, quick little uh, video that I pulled up. Because I got an argument to make here. Might be a little bit annoying since you haven't watched it, and you probably don't care, but... We'll see. Here we go. So, what everyone seems to be ignoring care. or not even addressing is the fact... Yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm a horrible, horrible person. Sorry, BMO. Please forgive That's me. Fine. What is absurdism in film? See if this makes sense. Let's watch this real quick. See what is absurdism in film? Mm -hmm. Absurdism in film falls between humorous and pointless, guided by aesthetic philosophy. The creator's limitless imagery hits the screen directly. Absurdist fiction refrains from judging characters or their actions, making it unique. This principle in film is illogical, featuring characters and situations devoid of purpose, symbolizing meaningless concepts lacking truth or value. Characteristics of absurdism in film. Absurdism in film explores human angst and life's meaninglessness, highlighting the mm -hmm. irrationality of human anxiety. Absurdist fiction mm -hmm. features unpredictable humor, illogical elements, aimless behavior, and usually lacks a clear moral or story purpose. These films are ambiguous, lacking traditional plot so and character Phoenix's inviting viewers to formulate their own interpretations. Yeah, that probably would fall into absurdism in film. Probably the second one's going to go even harder on it, okay? Turn it into a musical? I bet. So much so, there's a question whether this film type can be classified as fiction at all. Defying fiction rules with simplified situations and senseless actions, absurdist films use dark humor to challenge common social constructs. Striving to provoke thought about the film's excitement, they avoid focusing on underlying meanings or connections. To some, this may seem like a crapshoot, while others might call it a masterpiece. Yeah. Absurdism's impact spans filmmaking genres like surrealism, comedy, and drama. Recognizing its principles can deepen your understanding of filmmaking genders. It threw me <laughs> off. <laughs> Did you read? Okay, it's a very I short understand. video. I, I just wanted the context yeah, before we go it. back into this. I so think it, saying... no one is bringing up the absurd factors of Barbie. It fits perfectly into absurdism. And they, like, just completely ignore that. Everyone who, a lot of people, no, everyone's ignoring this. Even the people who are praising it does not bring up the sort of assertive factors that are very clearly in this. And it's annoying the fuck out of me, okay? All right. No one's looking at it from a assertive lens. Sorry. As I said, you might want to ride in BMO, okay? No, not right. And also this... Uh, this tw 2001 reference is I sort of funny that, yeah. in retrospect. Okay. Uh, you know what uh, Stanley Kubrick did before then? No. What I sort thought. of a movie he made before that movie? Absurdist comedy. Uh, oh. Dr. Strangelove or How oh, I I've Fell. Okay. Yes. That was a really absurdist piece. Okay. Not as successful as uh, 2001. But mm, you're homaging this. Oh, let's see. Let's see what rundown of the world we are presented with in the opening few minutes. Simply put, it is utter nonsense that is hand waved to allow the film to make the points that it wants to make. Barbie Land seems to exist on some other plane of existence, or at least I think it does. The film is deliberately vague and occasionally contradictory as to the exact nature of Barbie Land. Is Barbie Land like an alternate reality, or is it like a place where 
uh, your imagination. Yeah. And you can only enter or leave Barbie Land uh -huh. under very specific circumstances that I will explain later. Barbie Land seems to be an analog for kids playing with Barbie dolls in the real world, kind of like in the Lego. Yeah, it doesn't actually make much sense. Okay, the logic of that just really breaks apart, which I'll agree, but. Uh, okay. It's just sort of supporting the, the sort of conclusion I have about it being an absurdist piece of fiction, and everyone just goes on and on how it makes no sense. And I'm like, yeah, it's supposed to contradict itself. What's so hard about that? You're not looking at it through the right lens, okay? You got to remember that a lot of these guys run off consistency being like the number one thing in films. Yeah, so. that's a horrible standard to have, okay? You're looking through everything through a particular lens. Why focus on something like Barbie, which is clearly a very artsy project, and try to treat it like a normal film? I don't understand it. Just frustrated. I got it. But uh, people like to see me frustrating, so. Too bad yes. we're saying this towards the end, okay? Indeed. A movie. So, for example, when a car crashes, it will fly all over the place Not as if people. a child was playing with a Barbie car in the real world. Or sometimes Barbies will float around as if an invisible child's hand for is the moving spurg. them from their house to their car. This. Hmm? Live for the Spurg. Uh, <laughs> uh. I mean, with this particular thing, it just frustrates me. No one's engaging with this particular argument. Stitching at him also. Okay. All versions of that Barbie or Ken could exist get through in those the real videos world. For sure. Uh, a lot I of. Threw Doomer on, and I'm like, dude, I don't want to listen to Doomer talk about Barbie. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. After my uh, sort of message, uh, Doomer went full board absurdism in a convoluted way that no one would understand. It's hilarious. I'm like, dude. <laughs> until the events of the film. No explanation is ever given as to what Barbie Land is or why it exists. We just have to yeah. assume that when the original Barbie doll was invented by Mattel, there was suddenly a Barbie Land. It isn't a place that Mattel built in some far off corner of the world. It just exists somewhere, I guess. Okay. More importantly, however, yeah. no explanation is ever given as to why the sentient Barbies and Kens that inhabit Barbie Land exist. They simply do in order to allow them- Oh okay, yeah, yeah. He's gonna harp on about that element, I'm guessing, for a while. The senselessness? Why can't people get over the senselessness of it? It's an easy thing Seemingly to conscious. Attack. So the Barbies do not run Barbie land by virtue of the fact that they are women. This is not a society where the women rose to the top because, unlike in the real world, the men were not conspiring to keep them down. The Barbies run Barbie land, and the Kens stand around. Making fools of themselves, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I've succeeded in making a soy jack. Oh, I uh, you want to link it? Share it. For sure. Okay. I'll try to put it up if I can figure out a way to do that. Solved. Which conceptually doesn't work whatsoever because the inhabitants of Barbie Land do not actually seem to be in control of their actions. Unless, of course, the film is suggesting that the reason Barbie Land has solved equal rights is because Barbie Land is a parallel for children playing with. Uh, children were able to on. solve the issues of equal rights no by playing with dolls, suggesting that solving the issues of equal rights is extremely easy, and meaning that all of the Barbies running the show and the Kens being brainless yes-men is the film's idea of solving equal rights. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. None of which really follows well, logically, and perhaps more sense. importantly, none of which aligns at all with well, the social Patrick commentary Warren. that the film molests its audience with throughout the rest of its runtime. The reason Barbie leaves Barbie Land and enters the real world is also hand-waved extremely quickly so as to allow the filmmakers to tell their story. Just as they didn't explain or contextualize what Barbie Land is in relation to the real world, they also don't provide any coherent reason for Barbie to go to the real world. She simply must, because the real world is where all of that juicy social commentary is. We are told that as a result of Barbie's existential crisis, <laughs> my earlier hypothesis about how this particular Barbie, stereotypical Barbie as she is referred to, is a Barbie Land representation of all stereotypical Barbie toys in the real world. How can she be expected uh -huh. to find the one person playing with her if she represents potentially millions of pieces of plastic in the real world? She can't. 
which means that either this is a plot hole, or that every single Barbie and Ken doll in the real world has a duplicate in Barbie Land, which would make the population of Barbie Land well over a billion, which is not at all supported by what we see. Barbie is then told that in order to resolve her existential crisis and return to being stereotypical Barbie... Okay. I really want to just bang my head against this. Yeah. I'm trying to find uh, someone who's actually uh, engaging with the medium, and this is definitely not it. It's... And he's trying to say that he shouldn't be on the Woke Brothers, the anti-Woke thing. This follows along the same lines as their criticism. Yeah. Okay. As as just gonna... Yeah, it's all the same mindset. Uh, let's see if we got anything here. Did we get the anything? The concept in the film that did successfully get my noggin jogging for the minute or so that it featured was when Barbie visited a girl thinking the girl would be like, holy shit, it's Barbie, you're my hero. Only to be devastated when the girl was like, fuck you, Barbie, you ruined everything. You made a generation of girls hate themselves because they don't look anything like you, and you set back feminism 50 years. This was the one instance of the film being anything approaching intellectually stimulating, partly because the film seemed to be showing both sides respectfully, as Barbie comes from Barbie land and believes that the real world pretty much functions as Barbie land does. Mm. Yeah, it's very ironic. Okay, I will agree. Well, is that uh, irony... is that legit though? The, like, so does it have like hyper feminist type of, of leaning in it? Like, in your opinion, uh, yeah. everything pretty. Uh, what's the term? It's plastic feminism. I think it. Some bread tubers pointed that out. Just like sort of the patriarchy is. It more like comes off more as red pill philosophy. Okay, so it's not Both critical the... feminism. No, it's, there's it's, no intersectionality on it. Okay. It's basic bitch feminism. Okay, stupid, and basically because oh god, the stupidity. I sent over of that soy jack, by the way. Yeah, I saw it. I'm trying to figure out a way <laughs> to display it. I think I can do it. Um. Yeah. If but, you want, I can just present my screen. Okay. Yeah. If you can do that, and this is okay, it doesn't I even will, want me to do that. Do both of those things. Okay. It is. I will show uh, it first. Can you do it simultaneously? Possible that this child is misusing yeah. the term. <laughs> so share screen. See if it works. Window Never here. tried someone to present the screen. Oh, very nice. Okay. Let's put this up instead. Okay. So you see, we've got, you know, Mr. Hello Future Me here. And yeah. Then, Perfect oof. capture. Oh. You, you should be an artist with that. Uh, soy uh, jack should. oh yeah i just i just didn't want to add the hair <laughs> so oh, well, good is that right there? Uh, uh yeah, you know creating uh, a few lines tends to up thing i don't know i don't know I, I i respect your decision to lack the lack of the hair there yeah oh, no problem so there <laughs> yeah right. better than this enough of that now Oh, well, more of this. See if he decides, anything. wow, this all seems nice. People call me sir. They do fist bumps and work out. They have big trucks and horses and bulging muscles. And I can tell women to shut up when they're boring me. I have finally discovered my purpose. And so, Ken attempts to get a high-paying job, but is rejected, as he does not have... Yeah, he's just going over the same exact points as everyone else, making the same arguments. I don't understand why he distinguishes himself. He's the anti-woke, non-woke, anti-woke guy. Same points. Trying to figure it out. I no wonder he had this whole speech. Then. So you do you disagree with these takes that the these people are generally making? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm okay. seeing it. I'm treating it generally like a absurdist uh, piece of fiction. Okay. And I have backings for it. I'm seeing it. It just annoys me that not even leftists are really picking up on this. I just think all YouTubers have well, no a real more backing interesting to me than this so i, I actually have a couple questions regarding that then because sure. since i've Go never ahead. seen the movie when you say that it's an absurdist film when when you say that do you mean that you shouldn't take this this the movie seriously at all you t shouldn't take its message seriously no it's a it's a style absurdist uh, fiction okay it yeah. has a particular purpose it, the purpose is tends to uh, it tends to contradict itself. It'll bring up a point, then sort of do something to sort of contradict itself and return. Okay. Mm. It's, it's sort of like it it's, has a message by sort of 
countermining any message that you'll find. And the Barbie movie fits into that very well. There's other sort of... <laughs> Why did they bring up the definition of racism? Because uh, they're anti-woke, oh, okay? Well. Let's actually listen. Let's actually listen. You, you, I, I noticed the same thing. Remember, this guy doesn't like to use the term woke, okay? Patriarchy yeah. could also describe a society in which women are forced to be slaves for the sole purpose of reproduction. What feminists like to do is smuggle an extra bit into that definition, as a feminist will tell you that a patriarchy is a societal system which has been... Con Depends on what feminists, okay? Depends on what division of feminists. I don't think we have any first wave of feminists. But you have uh, feminists like J.K. Rowling, who's more traditional. And you have the intersectional feminist who all thinks that she's a fascist because of her gender critical views. Okay. There's different yeah. types of feminism. And they keep on using the same quote, but not using any other interview. And that, oh God. Constructed because she so said that the word. Men That's all that matters. Yeah, she was prompted by uh, Mar Margot Robbie to say, oh, yeah, it's all about feminism. It seems rather forced. And it's we missed useful. This. We, we got on a distraction. Racism side has there. become less and less useful as a word, as it is increasingly redefined in certain sociological circles as requiring prejudice plus power. Yeah. Or in other words, white people are the only people who can be racist because they have all the power, which is an inherently provocative and divisive statement. It isn't really possible to discuss Barbie without addressing the concept of a patriarchy, but the film is not out to change anyone's minds. It seems to exist to affirm the worldview of people who already agree that the patriarchy is some evil boogeyman that has to be fought against at all costs. The film operates under the presumption that the audience has this received knowledge that women equal oppressed and pa Yeah, oh god, this is even worse than some of the other people doing this. I, I, I always cringe, but at least he didn't start with the marketing as proof. <laughs> a lot um, of people started with the marketing of Barbie, and at least he didn't do that. Okay. Mother and daughter subplot, depressed Barbie, going over all the ideas in it, weird and ugly. Yeah, I, hmm. I regret my life. I regret all my decisions. Let me just reiterate my Barbie ideas. If you haven't seen it? I am woman. Hear me for just going over the sections. Oh, here, here. Let's see this. So anyway, now that the deprogramming is in full swing, the weird ugly Barbies enact their plan. Throughout this sequence, the Barbies trick the Kens by pretending to be damsels in distress, pretending not to know how to use computers, and pretending not to understand how money works. All right, so the feminist heroes are lying by taking advantage of and exploiting the natural male inclination to help and protect women. Sounds about right. They proceed to abduct and deprogram <laughs> the various Barbies right. by... Oh, God. Who yeah, this guy's so uh, this guy is so uh not woke. He's definitely not part of the woke bros. Well, I'll, I'll, Hello, future I'll give me. him some charity. I think he was making a dumb joke there. Oh, okay. Just a well, little bit the, of charity. What with the woke bros joke? Right. <laughs> okay, here's where I really want to dig in. This works with my narrative. Yeah, Good I work. do have a narrative that Barbie is no one's getting no one's even engaging with barbie at, or at least entertaining the absurd angle feeding them feminism okay. they literally and i do mean literally cure them of patriarchy with feminism you have to be their mommies but not remind them of their mommies. Yeah. any power you have must be masked under a giggle you have to find a way to reject men okay i want you to pay attention to the speech mm -hmm. and i fucked it up because i'm all over the place let the words so the kens are voting to change the constitution what exactly they are going to change is unknown as is the impact this will have on the barbies deprogrammed or otherwise but awesome. because the kens are doing it and because the kens have snorted too much patriarchy both the characters and the audience must immediately accept that whatever at least a good joke they totally skip over it like her after this is all over and woman I'm... tells her that she is justified in wanting to hurt him because ken took her house brainwashed her friends and he wants to control the government barbie then responds it's like i'm a woman already i hate you oh why am i doing this <laughs> yeah barbie speech I, I i i should just i wish i had more control where's the barbie speech did i miss it i'm a dumbass doo doo it is so dumb. Okay, yeah, there it was. I went past it. Oh, I, it, much earlier. I just want you to see this. If you use and I'm an the, asshole. Uh, Exploiting the natural male inclination to help and protect women. Seconds. You're right. I forget about that. Mm -hmm. And sounds about right. They proceed to abduct and deprogram the various Barbies by feeding this them speech. feminism. They literally, and I do mean literally. Let me actually 
slow this down because this is important. Mm -hmm. Important for my stupid argument, which no one gotcha. is engaging with because I'm stupid, obviously, or too intelligent or too high IQ for other people. Cure them too of patriarchy IQ, of with feminism. You have to be their mommies, but not remind them of their mommy. Any power you have must be masked under a giggle. You have to find a way to reject men's advances without damaging their egos. Because if you say yes to them, you're a tramp. But if you say no to them, you're a prude. We then learn that tomorrow... That speech always came across as a paradox of womanhood, okay? You can't be too fat, but you can't be too thin, blah, blah, blah. I almost wanted to compare it to that song, Ironic, but it doesn't fit. But yeah, okay. Yeah, it seems like you a get the general idea of it. For the sake of comedy, um, for how this is, you know, the dating market works. Yeah, but it's more this is always how my to, how to deal with men. This is always my comparison. I used that one before. Here's a better one, which we'll see if it gets me a copyright strike. Wait a minute. What about a logic loop? A what? I've seen this before. Whenever they try to distract a robot in the movies, they tell it some kind of paradox to get its processors all tripped out. Paradox. Funny bot, I've been talking it over with the fellas, and actually, we think what you're doing is genius. Funny bot is simply pushing the limits of comedy. Yes, you certainly are. And for doing that, we have all decided to give you a comedy award. For you what watch purpose this one? is comedy? I have not seen you ever this. W okay. This is like horrible. Funny bot was created by someone and of course a Dalek representation. <laughs> and he starts just uh trying to do anti comedy to be funny. So oh, okay. they, they're like, he's going insane, okay. So funny, uh, so unfunny that he's funny. Go back loops back around. This is probably one of their criticisms, sort of like when they went after Family Guy. Like Cartman not liking Family Guy. How can you not like Family Guy? It's just references, it's not funny. Saying, of course you would like family guy. No. It's a validation of all your efforts. An acknowledgement of all you do in the pursuit of humor. Non sequitur, there is no logic in comedy award. Unable to process. Comedy award is, what is the meaning? If I accept, it means I take comedy seriously. If I take comedy <laughs> seriously, I am not comedian. Non sequitur must analyze, analyze. It's working. Explain comedy award. Unable to process. Awkward. Awkward. Yeah, but you, you get the general gist. This is my example for. It's probably I one of my weakest arguments. Any, I barely watched any South Park, but that was pretty funny. Yeah, well, that's my comparison. The sort of a uh, paradox to unbrainwash the Barbies. I because I treat yeah. them like pretty much dolls. Uh, automaton. Well, okay. I don't think it's, that they're supposed to be representative of real people. I would assume not. At they're least. not. And people keep treating them like real people and it annoys me. But again, and the the Space Odyssey reference like, sheesh. That was pretty like, funny. A little bit that of was, this is This is not going to be funny. This is going to be boring. Okay, Be prepared to be bored. Okay, Why are this you what priming I do to me to be my bored? Friends. Because I am a horrible, horrible person, and I'm also killing time. Oh, there's also the matchbooks, uh, the the one that no one's ever getting, the matchbook. Okay, let's do that while I'm looking. You didn't see that. Because I pointed this out to the thinkers when we were watching this, okay? Okay. And a lot of people keep on missing it. They keep thinking they don't understand this reference. It's funny. They keep... And it's sort of funny. Uh, maybe it's the wrong one. Yeah, just as Barbie okay. was wrapping up its historic weekend at the box office, ah. Rob Thomas dedicated push to the big screen Ken during Matchbox 20's concert in Mansfield Sunday night. If you haven't seen the movie yet, mm -hmm. it's not a big spoiler to learn that this happens. Yeah, Ken covers the band's track. It was released in 1997, 26 years ago. It's it's sort of funny. And supposedly, uh, this song being in Barbie actually reunited the uh, career. So that's sort really? of funny. They they went no. It helped them with their new tour. Okay, that's what they're saying. They're like the script. It was definitely that funny. song, and Greta was, um, you know, I love that song. Adamant. It's perfect. I love, love that song. Oh, this would be so funny yeah. if Ken loved this song. Yeah, it was a favorite of writer director Greta Gerwig's growing up. 
and she told Cinema Blend she always heard that song as part of Barbie Land. Honestly, it was mm. like I was like there are two songs that play like on repeat yeah. in like Barbie Land is Indigo Girls Closer to Fine, sure. which I also love very deeply, and and Matchbox. Uh, yeah, they, they probably just went um, to the pink suit store. Yeah, the, the the whole marketing for this was interesting, and everyone uses that one clip of Greta Gerwig with uh, it, they ignore all the other clips, like where Greta literally has a ton of references to a lot of other movies where she goes on way more passionately when talking about Barbie, and when it came to that feminist thing, she had to be prompted by Margot Robbie to say that. Oh yeah, this is a really small clip. When you hear her talk about other things like this, it's way more passionate than what she talked about feminism. Interesting. So, you got to keep in mind, no, that I just like, I haven't even seen much of the marketing for this thing. Cause like, especially when Oppenheimer and all that was coming out, my, I, my interest in movies was as low as could be. Oh, right there with you, brother. Okay. It's just, <laughs> I heard people talking about Barbie and I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to go to the theater and watch this. This is definitely an interesting discussion piece. And after watching it, I'm like, I don't understand why no one's engaging with this. Is it, no one has any background in filmography or theater? Because I was also forced into doing a, doing some scenes from uh waiting for good dough okay which was a really absurdist piece okay so i was familiar okay. with absurdism i don't think a lot of people are just familiar with hardcore absurdism or maybe i'm just insane one of the two i don't know maybe, maybe i'm reading too much into this it can be two things at the same time okay that is true 20 is like the you know push when rob thomas got the call asking for permission to use the song he was prepared that the song would be used for laughs, telling USA Today, there's a whole period during the 90s where the more successful we got, the bigger target we were. We were an easy takedown, including being a poster on the wall of Kristen Dunst's, as Rob describes him, douchey boyfriend in Bring It On. So getting the Barbie call. Ah, uh, Kristen. Yeah, no. just, just for context, Push was misunderstood uh, when it came out and got controversy then. Because it sounded like he was a, wanted He's to abuse his girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. But that was because the whole story is actually quite interesting. That a mentally abusive woman, he told the one story that she like gave all his clothes away when they were in a relationship and he had to get donations from other guys before, when they were unsuccessful, before they hit it big. So he was got clothes from other rock bands because his girlfriend gave all his clothes away. It just mm. sounds a little insane. It's like he was a very... He wish he had the gall to push her away from it. Abusive. He frames it as abusive relationship. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Who really cares? But that's the point of the song. Rob hmm. says, I did this thinking I'd be the butt of the joke. And I was fine with that. I'm pretty thick skinned. But of course, later, Rob would breathe a sigh of relief once he found out that the song is used in a more heartfelt, lovable way. Greta Gerwig has been one of my crushes forever. So just the fact that it didn't diminish my crush on Greta, that's even better. I would have loved to see Greta's reaction when she learned that Rob has a crush on her. <laughs> I hope it reinvigorates the song. Yeah, what do you think of Ken's cover of Matchbox 20's Push? I want to take you from ground down. Yeah, such a man hater. Isn't that totally her intent? Okay. Everyone's saying it's man hating and all that sort of Ingham. shit. Well, but yeah, putting it back on just as a uh, background, it, just everyone's getting this wrong. They're well, reading it's like way too much. Feminist doesn't mean man hater either. Yeah, like, well, I, they, they I degraded have some the extremely kids. feminist friends that I am still good friends with. Yeah, okay. And it's not they don't look down on me because I'm a man. They look down on me because I disagree with them. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> that's I can understand different. that perspective. But yeah, absolutely, and. No one's actually bringing up the absurdist factor, and eh, it just seems like a horrible misreading of the situation. That no one seems to have the backing to even make the argument that it's absurdist comedy. Okay, eh, it annoys hmm. me. It, it really yeah, it uh, does seem, seem like a movie. Honestly, yeah, maybe you would have a different reading. I mean, maybe. my background. I'm fine with people to scream, but the fact that people don't want to engage with it. 
focused and applicable allegory funny. that I have come to expect from this film. Well done, writers. You pushed the nail off the fucking cliff. The problem with being a woman is that men take their houses, brainwash them into doing what they want, and conspire to control the government to serve... They're just taking the limited message in. And here's planet, the... Or if they are in fact fatally infected yep, by uh, motivated reasoning. So, right Barbie there. visits Ken under the pretense of making amends. She lies to him. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the same tripe, same focus, but he, he's not one of the woke bros, okay? Allow me to be a little shallow, shallow and say Margot Robbie is gorgeous. She is, she is, okay. And so Bobby is Bobby is Gosling. a Trojan whore. And what else? And so is Ryan Gosling. Your equal opportunity uh, lover of beauty. Yeah. See, when I look at Ryan Gosling in this movie, I see Dorcas. Oh, okay. Have you seen Dork? <laughs> oh, look. No, let me not bring up too much external stuff, okay? Oh, okay. Norcus oh, okay. is probably a very beautiful man, at least on the inside. At least on the inside, jeez. Well, yeah, I, I'm going to work with that, okay? In case you at watch least. this, which you probably won't. Oh, God, why am I going so long? I want to finish this up and be yeah, done. Well, I've got a NyQuil that's going to be kicking in soon, so I will okay. make my leave eventually. Oh, well, I'm going to be making my leave probably not sooner than I need to. Because this always turns <laughs> into a mess. I'm, I just want to see if he comes back to this. Because he keeps on playing the same exact clip here. I, I don't think this film worked at all. Also required me to grapple with the idea of precisely why I'm contradicting much of what I think the into anything co and so much more. However, the film fails to tie any of this into anything coherent by the ending and winds yep. up contradicting much of what I think the film was actually going for. Dissecting precisely why I don't think... Yeah. Okay. You respect it too much. Everyone respects everything to have a message, everything to be propaganda. So you're looking at it for everywhere. So when someone purposely sort of subverts their own freaking messaging throughout the film, it confuses people. It's funny to me. I, I should be taking more uh, guilty sort of pleasure in the fact that everyone's not even considering the possibility that this is a certain piece to sort of critique everything. Okay, fuck with everyone. So I think this film worked at all. Video about this, right? Uh not a serious one. I should make a serious one. I think maybe you should, just... honestly. I think I, yeah, think I keep your doing... commentary in this space, even though like Barbie's long gone now in terms of like people have moved on from it. I feel yeah. like a re-examining of the response to Barbie would be a good one. I already did a... This is almost a re-examining, a messy one, okay? I'm mixing it in with all this other stuff, but maybe I should make just a critique, uh, just a, my argument in a really short form that no one's going to watch, but eh, sometimes Force it it's to worth it. be under 10 minutes. Probably. That probably would be a smart way. And laugh it's at the people the most who are fun that you would have with the challenge instead of just banging your head up against the wall. The, of how no one seems to be even considering this viewpoint. Yeah, probably. And yeah, yeah. I, I I do a lot of pointless stuff that doesn't make sense, like arguing on Twitter with idiots. So that begs the question: Do you see? Because I know that one of the major <laughs> critiques of this movie is that it is woke. I would assume you don't agree with that. Um, what your definition of woke? Into... If if you think woke is pushing a particular message, yeah, I would disagree with it. Okay, if it has a progress, heavy progressive element in, and both uh, pushes it as an idea and also makes fun of it at the same time, yeah. It's both woke and anti-woke at the same time. It has to be for it to work any what works absurd. well. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Sir is fiction meant to undermine its own messaging. The fact that no one is getting since everyone has the same thing, it undermines its own messaging. And that fits perfectly well with the you can hate the freaking absurdist. Okay. She said everyone wants consistency. It is not consistent. That's not. It's not 
absurdism. Required mm -hmm. me to grapple with the idea of death of the author. I typically try to focus almost entirely on what is depicted on screen when I critique a film or a show. However, that approach doesn't really work with something like Barbie, as the it various does. ways in which it attempts to be satirical or allegorical require that its audience is familiar with certain realities, or in Barbie's case, certain realities according to the writers. If an alien with no concept as to what human society is like were to watch Barbie, many of the film's problems would not be understood. So if a Barbie the were alien... to watch Barbie. <laughs> yeah, there are aliens, okay. Everyone's alien. Would not be able to comprehend what the film is trying to say. So whilst it might be an interesting exercise to try to view Barbie as an accidental parody of feminism, I decided that I would instead assume that the writers are telling the truth when they claim that the film is most certainly a feminist film, to quote Greta Gerwig. So, in conclusion... <laughs> he even went right okay. back to it. Yeah, he keeps on showing that same clip. Does he even go the whole clip? I don't even fucking know. It's sort of moot at this point. Does everyone miss the point? It really does really support the idea that, uh, yeah, they don't have a good backing as critics if they can't even identify something like this in particular. Then, yeah, I'm hiding that because I'm going to go. I, I'm just going to bring up the clip. Let's we'll see how convincing it is. All right. Um, do you want me to stay for that? Because I think if sure. I stay for that, you should probably I'll, bounce uh... out. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving off after the clip. I just, a simple question. Yeah. Does it seem, uh, Greta? I should have bloated this up, but I never planned these things out as well as I should. Because what's the fun of that? <laughs> Greta, what's the fun of having a plan? Yeah. <laughs> oh, feminist um, Barbie thing. I mean, you never expected me to say invite me, so. <laughs> no, but I didn't think you'd be interested in this. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. This is just a oh, fucking hell. This is not the clip. This is a long, drawn-out version, but I'm sure I can find it. <laughs> this is from whatever. More style. I just, wish you luck. <laughs> you should. Wish my sanity luck. That maybe someday I'll come up with a coherent uh, stream at some point. Okay, yeah, so goes point, this. Right? Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to watch the Fallout thing. Maybe that'll be more persuasive. Uh, my three body problem thing actually worked out pretty well, I think. That's good. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, feminism. Let me keyword search this. <laughs> Every day I, I'm I watching it now. Stream. It's just really long, really long. Oh, for sure. Every day I try to stream, someone comes over to my house and like decides that they're going to download a bunch of stuff. Or they'll just going to have a bunch of people over at the house. So it's like every time the internet just shits the bed. And I'm like, ah, oh, wow. Okay, this this cannot actually be it. This cannot be the <laughs> interview. Okay, I'm not finding feminism in this interview at all. It sounds like cherry picking. Okay, out of all the interviews, I don't think I even found the right one. That's the funny thing. Um, it says, uh, let me see if discussing. I okay, yeah, that, the good search study. Uh, the clip everyone's using. To support their idea that it's woke uh, feminist propaganda. Uh, yeah, I found one about ABC News. Uh, same one I'm looking at. Uh, do you, the can same you find? In there. Oh, well. Okay, let's see. Is there a approximately minute? Uh, let's see. Oh, no, that's not right. I'm seeing if someone put a put a straight up. Like timestamp on it. Feel stupid and very funny without making you feel boring and charming and enthusiastic and all these things that I thought that's just someone I want to be around. Anyway, so projects didn't work out. Shreya Mattel, The Heart, Little Women, Humanist, most replayed. I'm just gonna most replayed. 
Okay, share it with the classroom because I'm incompetent, obviously, or not looking at the right one. There we go. Share screen. Boop. Um, we're going to go here. Boop. Okay. Oh, if you found the feminism. I don't know if I've found it yet, but this is the most replayed area. Here and here are the most replayed. So I'll start over here. If we don't see it, we'll go back here. Okay. Because the, when we were when we were making it, the whole Barbie is like an icon that, as Margot was speaking to, that it's both um, it's it, it, she exists in the the both and not the either or. She's not either good or bad or you know, is that diving into the complexity of it and not running away from it, but like looking at all the thorniness and stepping into it, and also looking at all the thorniness and stepping into what what. Oh, what is the negotiation of what women need to be and okay, um, how to give them yeah. something other than a tightrope to walk on is how it feels feminist to me. I actually, when I got asked the other day, like, is Barbie a feminist? I was like, well, she's actually like the level up okay. from that. Because if you look at Barbie Very land at the beginning, like yeah. the Barbies are on top and the Kens yes. are kind of disregarded. So I was like, well, that's not equal. No, right, <laughs> so right, whatever right. the opposite of misogynist is right, actually, right. Barbie's like, so yeah. towards the end when yes. they balance yes. things out, then it might be feminist, but actually right. it's like beyond feminist. But then, <laughs> but then the power dynamic is in the favor of the Barbies to it, begin with. Exactly. Like but then not feminist. to give too much away, but yeah. then like the human character of, I will say, yes. Gloria, yeah. played by the brilliant America mm -hmm. Ferrera, also articulates some stuff about what this negotiation is. And, yeah. and yeah. It, I, think, I think really what it feels is like mm -hmm. allowing all the things to exist at once and not shoving things down because they don't fit with something. You, you've spoken about this before, this sense of the... That's a great cut right there. What do you think? Yeah. Uh it sounds rather it sounds so feminist doesn't it from that maybe i got the wrong clip i forget what exact she said that sounds I mean, a little it sounds a little weird okay beyond it feminism like it reminds me beyond me bit, <laughs> it sounds like they're trying to take the because it's very obvious that like it does have some sort of a feminist message to it be it absurdist or not like it's definitely yeah. it is it is a, it is a gynocentric film, um, like it is it is a, it is a film that's seemingly for women, uh, and specifically like women and children specifically like uh, little girls, or that's what I would assume. All the marketing definitely told me that, but the marketing, mm. like we've already said, the marketing does whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird stuff. The marketing is definitely weird stuff there. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, fair um, enough. Fair it enough. sounds like the direct the director does think it's a feminist film, and Margot Robbie is like, especially using her expression here. Let me go back a little bit. Where is it? I'm gonna, I'm using the uh, look at that expression. Let's go. The power dynamic is in the favor of the Barbies to begin with. Exactly, but let's, let's go back here a little bit. On top, and the I, look at this expression. What? That she what what oh, are you doing facial reading? What women need to be. Not like body and, um, language, but you'll see like how, how she responds to, give to them Robbie something saying other beyond. than a tightrope to walk on is how it feels feminist to me. I actually, when I got asked the other day, like, is Barbie yes. a feminist? I was like, well, huh? she's actually like the level <laughs> up from that? that. Because if you look at Barbie okay. land at the beginning, like yeah. the Barbies are on top and the Kens yes. are kind of disregarded. So I was like, well, that's not equal. No, right, <laughs> so right, whatever right. the opposite of misogynist is actually right, right. Barbie's like, so yeah. towards the end when yes. they balance yes. things out, then it might be feminist, but actually right. it's like beyond feminist. But then, <laughs> but then the power dynamic is in the favor of the Barbies to begin with. Exactly. But then not to give too much away, but yeah. then like. The and then she's like, but it is feminist though. Yeah, well, there's definitely a feminist undertone. I'm definitely. not going to deny that, okay? <laughs> That's just an extremely confusing way to really bring it up. And even Margot Robbie is like, it's beyond feminism. But when it approaches feminism at the end, it's sort of feminism. It's quite interesting. I can't help but think that expression that I was like, the huh? I think that was coming from, she was saying, it's like, oh, someone was just talking to me about this film being feminist. And she's like, 
no one's talking to you about this movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> no mm. one's talking about, about the messaging of this movie. Or that's yeah. what came to mind. Yeah. Uh, I could make my case an argument right now, but it probably is better just to fucking do it. Uh, a, like an under 10 minute thing laying out my argument real quickly about uh, I think it would be uh, it'd better it'd be really concise uh, yeah probably uh, and yeah. then we'll have to do that flame you on twitter you can be like please refer Ow. to exhibit a uh, <laughs> twitter is just a playground I don't care about it of course you should never take it seriously yeah, and I don't. So I think I oh, will end this now. Been kind of, I, I was doing so good just going through that one video, but then we got, <laughs> then I chose a really convoluted video by someone I didn't pre watch. And uh, then, then you guys came on, you made it better, but it was also worse because it couldn't be, it, it was just a flawed idea to go over that one stupid video. Again, I really wish he didn't <laughs> take it down. I would have liked to go through it. And sort of see what I think about his idea about it. Okay. Yeah. He has to sort of, uh, for every two sentences, he has to insert like a couple of paragraphs to sort of give context and either agree or disagree or blah, blah, blah. It was yeah. quite interesting. Uh, it was I'll have pretty to figure brain out. Ruddy. Yeah, but he, I wasn't be, we weren't being fair. We were just making fun of it for, the stupidity we, we oh, took him sure. out of context and uh straw man uh a homonym uh poisoned the well with all our shed nanigans or some crap like that and i think on that note peace out people in <laughs>